na ah, teka, may message si Attorney Ace. Hindi <laughs> ko na-attend na mga ano. At least walang Viber. day everyone for everyone to enjoy and effectively participate in this online activity please consider the following let us always be punctual in attending this online activity please secure a place with strong internet connectivity and conducive for your participation let us try to avoid any form of distractions please be mindful of your microphones mute it while the program or lecture is ongoing. If you want to participate, please seek permission by turning your microphones and videos on and wait for the online facilitator to recognize you. Let us be respectful of one another at all times. If you can, always turn your videos on. You can also interact with us using the chat box or comment section for this online platform. Our links for online attendance, feedback, and evaluation will be posted on the chat box and flashed on the screen before and at the end of the program. Thank you very much and we wish you a wonderful time ahead and always keep safe. Good day, everyone. For everyone to enjoy and effectively participate in this online activity, please consider the following. Let us always be punctual in attending this online activity. Please secure a place with strong internet connectivity and conducive for your participation. Let us try to avoid any form of distractions. Please be mindful of your microphones. Mute it while the program or lecture is ongoing. If you want to participate, please seek permission by turning your microphones and videos on and wait for the online facilitator to recognize you. Let us be respectful of one another at all times. If you can, always turn your videos on. 
You can also interact with us using the chat box or comment section for this online platform. Our links for online attendance, feedback, and evaluation will be posted on the chat box and flashed on the screen before and at the end of the program. Thank you very much and we wish you a wonderful time ahead and always keep safe. Good day, everyone. For everyone to enjoy and effectively participate in this online activity, please consider the following. Let us always be punctual in attending this online activity. 
Please secure a place with strong internet connectivity and conducive for your participation. Let us try to avoid any form of distractions. Please be mindful of your microphones. Mute it while the program or lecture is ongoing. If you want to participate, please seek permission by turning your microphones and videos on and wait for the online facilitator to recognize you. Let us be respectful of one another at all times. If you can, always turn your videos on. You can also interact with us using the chat box or comment section for this online platform. Our links for online attendance, feedback, and evaluation will be posted on the chat box and flashed on the screen before and at the end of the program. Thank you very much and we wish you a wonderful time ahead and always keep safe.
एम गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन वेलकम टू द तनावन सिटीज थर्ड चाइल्ड प्रोटेक्शन समिट फॉर द स्कूल ईयर 2020 2021 to join us in today's program shall we have first our prayer our makabayan song and the pledge of allegiance and the pledge of quality policy of the department of education Ama naming makapangyarihan sa lahat, bukal ng kabanalan at pagmamahal, narito po kaming inyong mga anak na nagpupuri at nagpapasalamat sa lahat ng biyayang aming tinanggap mula sa iyong kasaganaan at kabutihang walang hanggan. Ang biyaya ng buhay, kalusugan at katatagan na siyang sandata namin sa pagtaak sa buhay na nais mo para sa amin. Ama, naniniglood kami sa iyong banal na harapan at humihiling na ilukob mo sa amin ang iyong banal na espiritu upang linisin ang aming mga puso at kaluluwa na nagkasala sa iyo at sa aming kapwa. Dala ng aming mga kahinaan bilang tao. Naniniwala kami, Panginoon, na ipinadala mo sa amin ang iyong bugtong na anak upang tubusin kami sa aming mga kasalanan at maging karapat-dapat sa iyong banal na pangalan. Humingi ka at kita'y pagbibigyan, kumatok ka at kita'y pagbubuksan. Nawa, Panginoon, ang bawat salitang ito na namumutawi sa iyong bibig ay maging kaganapan sa bawat isa sa amin. Gayun din sa aming sariling pamilya at sa buong DepEd family. Ipagkaloob mo sa amin, Panginoon, ang pusong maalab magmahal at magpatawad upang lagi naming taglayin ang kababaang loob at kahinuhunan. Gawin mo kaming karapat-dapat na mga laga sa lahat ng iyong mga nilikha. Ang mga kabataang nakasalalay ang karunungan at pag-uugali sa aming mga kamay. Ang kalikasan na nagdurugtong sa aming mga buhay na bahagi ng aming pang-araw-araw na pakikibaka sa buhay. Panginoon, batid po ninyo ang nilalaman ng aming mga puso. Ngunit higit sa lahat ay ikaw ang nakakaalam kung ano ang makabubuti para sa amin. Kung kaya't, Ikaw, Panginoon, ang manguna sa bawat isa sa amin upang lahat ng aming gagawin ay laging naaayon sa iyong kalooban. Sapagkat kung wala ka, ay wala kaming magagawa. Ang lahat ng ito, Panginoon, ay aming hinihiling sa paumagitan ng iyong bugtong na anak at sarili naming tagapagligtas. Kasama ng Espiritu Santo, magpasawalang hanggan. Amen.
The Department of Education is committed to provide learners with quality basic education that is accessible, inclusive, and liberating through proactive leadership, shared governance, evidence-based policies, standards, and programs, responsive and relevant curricula, highly competent and committed officials, and teaching and non-teaching personnel, an enabling learning environment. The department upholds the highest standards of conduct and performance to fulfill stakeholders' needs and expectations by adhering to constitutional mandates, statutory and regulatory requirements, and sustains client satisfaction through continuous improvement of the quality management system. everybody and welcome to all of you. Welcome to our Tanawan City's third Child Protection Summit for the school year 2021 with our theme, Fulfilling the Rights of Children Amidst the Pandemic. Magandang magandang araw po sa ating lahat kung nasaan man tayong uh, lugar sa buong Pilipinas because we are being uh, uh, shown live here in our uh, uh, Zoom, of course, and we have our live stream. Uh, just uh, go to Tanawan City Information website. At pinanonood po tayo ng napakaraming mga magulang, mga bata, mga guro, of course, from the Tanawan City, and of course, the city of uh, government. Yan. I, and despite the experiences that we're experiencing right now, maraming mga restrictions, right? Kababa lang po ng protocols from the IATF and the DOH in providing safety to all of our, uh, you know, the population of the Philippines. We're still here, okay, despite all of those to celebrate the rights of the children. At uh, gusto po namin sabihin na dito sa Tanawan City, we acknowledge the rights of the children and we are true to our salt in making children's right the center of all our efforts, be it educational be it in public service. And for this morning to acknowledge our guests and participants, should we have in the platform, our Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, no less than Ms. Rina O. Ilagan. Shall we give her a virtual round of applause? Mom Rina. Good morning. Good morning po to each and everyone. So, magandang buhay and blessed day sa atin pong lahat. So, I just want to acknowledge all the participants here headed by our very own Schools Division Superintendent, Sir Rohel Opelensya. And syempre po, kasama natin si Yusek. Josephine Maribuho. Good morning po, ma'am. And we also have our guest, uh, Master Sergeant Ma'am Rodora L. Manaig from LSWDO, Ma'am Vicky Javier, our very own medical officer, Dr. Marian Alcover, and then from Easterway Foundation Incorporated, uh, Sir Israel Ace Deloy and Sir J.M. Matibag from Save the Children Philippines, Ms. Uh, Jerly Villanada from Education Network in the Philippines, Ma'am Flora Arellano and Ma'am Charito Pinalas from JCI Tanawan, President Billy and Attorney Anna Carrer. And then we have here the President of the Teachers Association. Sir Vince Ambalong, our Barangay Captain of Barangay Balele, Sir Jason Capasha, President of the Federated SSG, Alex Ikias, and our very own Congresswoman, Mamaytet Colliantes of the 3rd District of Batangas. And all the participants who are here in the platform, again, po, a pleasant morning, blessed day, 
Let us all be safe and napakabuti po ng Panginoon para sa atin. Ngayon pa lang po ay nagpapasalamat na kami for your time and effort to be with us today. So hoping and sure naman na magkakaroon pa tayo ng in very fruitful engagement for this activity. Again po, good morning and mabuhay po tayong lahat para sa bata, para sa bayan. Ayan, thank you very much ASDS Rina Ilagan. I like the the clap from the children and hearing all of those, you know, shouting of the children na na miss ko bilang isang guro ano for for a very long time na to interact with them. Salamat po Ma'am Rina at tama po si Ma'am Rina. Sana patnubayan tayo ng Panginoon ng kalakasan kasi kung malakas yung mga support system ng bata kagaya ng uh, sa mga teachers, sa education, ating mga leader at ating mga kapartners kagaya ng local government at yung ating uh, uh, sphere from uh, the NGOs, marami tayong maibibigay doon sa ating mga bata. So thank you very much for acknowledging all our partners and participants. At this point, uh, for all of us, I'm seeing now in the live stream that we are more than 200 and I'm seeing a lot of greetings coming from our participants. Ano, sa, sa ating live, please interact with us. At para batiin po yung ating nasa live stream at yung mga nag-share pa doon sa mga groups ng mga bata at mga iba't ibang uh, schools and organization, let's have the very energetic and inspiring ano, uh, schools division superintendent para i-welcome po tayong lahat. I, we, I am talking of no less than the father of SDO Tanawan. Shall we give a loud cheer to our SDS Rogelio F. Opolensha, sir? Hello, magandang magandang umaga po, Ma'am Lelen. Maraming salamat. Mabuhay po ang mga nandito sa loob ng Zoom at yung mga nakikinig sa atin at nanonood sa Facebook Live. Uh, welcome po dito sa ating 2021 Tanawan City Child Protection Summit. At makahulugan ito kasi ay merong, hindi ko alam kung ito ay fake news, chismis o totoo. Kayo po ang magsasabi mamaya. Bakit? Kasi ang lugar na magkakasama tayo ngayon, virtual, hindi man physical, at magkakakonekta tayo, hindi man magkakadikit, pero connected, ay merong nabubuo. May chismis, pwedeng katotohanan na tatlong bagay. So ano yon Ang tanawan po, particular ang sangay at ang lokal na pamahalaan ng tanawan ay merong tatlong pag-ibig na nabubuhay. So ano yun po yung tatlong pag-ibig na yon Unang pag-ibig, magkakasama, may pag-ibig sa bata. So lahat tayong naririto, umiibig sa bata. Love for learners. Pangalawa, love for learning. Pag-ibig sa karunungan. At pangatlo, pag-ibig na magkatagpo, magsama para pag-usapan ang kinabukasan ng mga bata na mahal natin. Ang mga pangangailangan nila ay hindi makakapaghintay. Pero tayo, yung mga pakailangan natin, maghihintay kasi kinabukasan ang nakataya. Kaya ngayon, tayo ay nagsama-sama para sa kanila. Ang sentro ng araw na ito ay para sa kinabukasan nila. Nagsama-sama tayong lahat para pag-usapan ano ang mabuti, ano ang bagay, at ano ang maitutulong natin para sa mga bata. Pero wag nating maliitin, baka may maitutulong din sila. Para sa atin. Ang sabi ko nga, ang ginagawang tama ng bata, nakakahiyang hindi sundin ng matanda. Mga kasama, welcome to Tanawan City Child Protection Summit this 2021 kung saan tuturuan tayo ng bata ng tama at nakakahiya na hindi matuto ang mga matatanda. Magandang umaga po at maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. I need, I need to hear the cheer. Ayan. 
Maraming maraming salamat po sa aming uh, uh, SDS, ang aming superintendent ng Tanawan. Sa totoong buhay, si Sir po ay napaka-humble. Ano? Pero gusto kong sabi niya may tatlong pagmamahal. Meron din na- nakikita yung mga frontliner like like me na pagmamahal doon sa ating ano city government and of course our uh, SDO Tanawan una. Uh, natutuwa na ibahagi ko sa inyo kasi hindi naman naibahagi din ni Sir no? na isa ang Tanawan City sa kauna-unahan ng mga division na nagturok hindi lamang nagdagbigay ng, ng vaccine hindi lamang sa mga teaching personnel, non-teaching at idinamay pa ng aming superintendent na isama yung lahat ng mga private school na teachers din and, and their personnel. So, yan yung unang pagmamahal na naramdaman namin that we are, when we are protected, we can protect the children. Ang pangalawa, yung pagbibigay at pagtulong sa amin ng SDO Tanawan at saka ng city government na mabigyan ng gadget at learning materials. Hindi lang ang teacher, yung lahat ng mga bata namin, learners namin. Kaya there are always a smile in the faces of the children. At ang pangatlo, Ang ganda ng sinabi ni Sir, ang, ang servant leadership ay kasama yung participation ng mga bata. Grassroot ang planning kasama talaga sa lahat ng aspects. So thank you very much, Sir, for that welcoming words and inspiration. And at this juncture, talaga naman pong tayo ay punong-puno. We're jammed right now with a lot of guests who are very supportive sa initiative ng Department of Education. And at this juncture, we will be having a keynote address. At nakita ko na siya kanina sa ating uh, uh, participants. I am truly inspired to introduce our keynote speaker for this morning. Ayan. So let me read her bio note. She will be delivering a keynote address uh, to, our, to our third child protection uh, summit with the theme fulfilling children's right amid the pandemic. Her profile includes that she is our attorney for undersecretary for legal affairs in the Department of Education. I am talking of no less than attorney Josephine G. Maribuhok, our keynote speaker for this morning. Attorney Josephine Maribuhok dedicated her career to study and practice of law and to educating our youth, showing the exemplary record of achievements and pioneering accomplishments. She graduated cum laude with a degree of Bachelor of Arts major in philosophy from the Ateneo de Manila University. Immediately after college, she served for one year as a full-time Jesuit volunteer at the San Nicolas High School in Surigao. Manifesting early in her career, her dedication to the education of the youth, she served as teacher, class advisor, and club moderator. She then continued to teach, this time in college, at the Ateneo de Manila University, while taking up law at the University of the Philippines College of Law. She graduated from the UP College of Law with the distinction of being a recipient of the Dean's Medal for Academic Excellence and joining the law firm of the Sisip Salazar, Hernandez and Gatmaitan, a premier and biggest law firm in the country. After her stint in private law practice, she moved to the Supreme Court of the Philippines and began her career in public service as court attorney with the highest rank in the office of the Senior Associate Justice and later Chief Justice Renato Puno. She handled landmark constitutional law, international law, and human rights cases of national impact and jurisprudential significance. And she also served in various positions of leadership and served in several committees of the Supreme Court including Supreme Court computerization of the national case management and other key systems of the judiciary. With her unfading calling for educating the youth, she took up a degree in Masters of Education, majoring in the school leadership 
at the De La Salle University and finished with high distinction and first in her class. She later served as associate legal counsel at the De La Salle University and as executive director of the Jesuit Volunteers Philippines Foundation Incorporated. She then took up her master's of law specializing in public law and human rights at the University College London as recipient of full-time Shivening Scholarship from the United Kingdom and graduated with merit. Upon coming home from London, she served as expert in constitutional law and human rights law at the UP College Complex and Consultant for Constitutional Law and Human Rights to retired Chief Justice Puno. She was editor of the book, Equal Dignity and Rights by Chief Retired Puno. Now, combining her background and expertise in law and education, she joined the Department of Education as the first director of the newly established legal office in 2015, then became the Assistant Secretary for Legal Affairs in 2016. OIC Undersecretary for Legal Affairs in 2018, and now our Undersecretary for Legal Affairs since 2019. As Undersecretary of Legal Affairs, Attorney Mario Buhok is not only committed to delivering quality legal service to the department through analysis of legal documents and assurance and carefully uh, the meticulous rendering of legal opinions and advice, she is also championing child rights in education in the department. She has been the leading and supervising implementations of the child protection program of the Department of Education. And through her leadership, the department has been developing and implementing programs, projects, and activities on child protection, including the development of resource materials and the implementation of capacity building activities for deaf ed personnel, as well as our parents, guardians, caregivers, and especially now during the COVID-19 pandemic. More importantly, Attorney Marie Bohok is the leading in the, is leading in the efforts of the department to develop a more comprehensive approach to child rights in education, which includes aside from the right to protection and right to development and participation. And of course, the right to survival and health. She led the drafting of DEPED Order Number no. 3, Series of 2021, dubbed as Child Rights in Education Desk or the CREDE, and Child Protection Unit, or the CPU, which was signed by the Secretary of Education in January 2021. The CREDE under the Office of the Under Secretary for Legal Affairs, or OULA, was created in pursuance of the holistic development of the child and shall be used uh, to protect the rights of the children and the legal lens to formulate policies monitor and report the implementation of the rights of the children in basic education and build awareness and advocacy to these rights. On the other hand, the Child Protection Unit under the Office of the Undersecretary for Field Operations, Palarong Pambansa Secretariat and DEPED Office Associations Coordinating Office or the OUFO was created to establish a mechanism to fully operationalize, implement, and coordinate programs, projects, and activities pertaining, of course, to child protection. She has also led in hosting the annual summit on the rights of the child in education since 2019, which, as the Otanawan, draws a lot of inspiration. It draws participation from all over the country and features speakers from international bodies and organization and the highest levels of government in the Philippines. Known for her outstanding achievements, an infectious passion for her advocacies and keen eye for detail, attorney Josephine G. Maribohok 
Under Secretary for Legal Affairs of the Department of Education is an epitome of dedication to work and strong commitment to service. Truly, kudos to you, attorney. And now I will be giving you our keynote address. No lesson. Under Secretary Attorney Josephine G. Maribuho. Uh, maraming salamat. Thank you for the kind and comprehensive introduction, Ma'am Eleanor. I thought I was applying for a job. I think that's the entirety of my uh, resume or curriculum vitae. But uh, I hope you will still have a few minutes to listen to the few words that I will uh, deliver in this uh, occasion. So good morning. Good morning to us all. Uh, before anything else, allow me to thank uh, with all my heart, the City Schools Division of Tanawan through our SDS, uh, Rogelio Opulencia, and our uh, uh, Child Protection Specialist. Now, uh, this person is somebody who is truly active in our uh, activities on child protection and child rights in the central office, none other than uh, Edgar Marshall or Butch Vinas. No? So thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, Summit. Of course, I'd like to greet also our uh, ASDS, uh, Rina Ilagan. So uh, first, uh, uh, I'd really like to congratulate the City Schools of uh, City Schools Division of Tanawan for consistently holding this summit that provides a venue for all stakeholders for children's rights in Tanawan City or even in Batangas to convene with a common goal to respect, protect and fulfill the rights of every child. This event sends a very clear message that our agency's priority is to uphold the rights of children even, even in the midst of the challenges besetting our country in this long drawn pandemic. Sana po ay hindi tayo mapagod no, sa pagkalinga sa ating mga bata kahit napakahaba na nito ang ating pandemic. The right to accessible and quality education of every child and youth does not cease during an emergency. Thus, to ensure that education continues, even in this most difficult public health emergency, the DepEd issued DepEd Order Number 12, Series of 2020, entitled Adoption of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan or the BLCP for school year 2020 to 2021 in light of the COVID-19 public health emergency. This adapted order will continue to be in effect for the upcoming school year 2021-2022. With a shift in the delivery of uh, basic education services, to multiple learning delivery modalities and platforms, such as distance learning and homeschooling under the BLCP, various technologies and online platforms like what we are using now, were utilized to ensure learning continuity. And these platforms will continue to be utilized in the upcoming school year. And so as acknowledged in the BLCP, the landscape of child protection and the rights of the child uh, will, will not be the same. It will be uh, very different from uh, what we have been used to under this new normal. Previously, we held classes in a physical school, but now we are doing school in the online world. Thus, at the moment, DepEd is endeavoring to finish an issue in time for the opening of the school year, its supplemental child protection policy to adjust the existing child protection policy under DEPED Order Number 40, Series of 2012, and address the circumstances of learning during the continuing pandemic, as well as the challenges that we have faced in the past year. DEPED will also be crafting a broader child rights policy. You know, under Philippine law, the government, the governance of basic education is vested in the DepEd. The governance begins at the national level with a national office located in Metro Manila, where we are now in lockdown. 
but it is in the regions and schools divisions which are aptly represented here today and our more than 60,000 public and private schools as well as learning centers where national policies and principles are translated into programs, projects, and activities for our 27 million learners in the basic education system, 22 million of whom are in the public education system. Philippine law mandates the DepEd to ensure that the curriculum and its implementation are learner-centered. To emphasize in all that we do in the DepEd from the national office down to the schools, each child or learner is at the center. Thus, in support of the field offices and frontliners of the department, the central office since three years ago has been downloading program support funds to the regions for use in child rights and child protection activities. Last year, even during the pandemic, when finances were difficult, DepEd issued DO number 36 series of 2020 on the program support funds for child rights or child protection activities of the regions. The funds were intended for the printing and distribution of child rights and protection materials and the conduct of various child rights and protection trainings. Among the materials to be distributed are educational brochures on cyber safety, such as the Dalir Escuela brochures on cyberbullying, online gaming, online chatting, and online pornography developed with our partner Scary Foundation and the Internet and Mobile Marketing Association of the Philippines. Ngayong taon po ng school year 2021 to 2022, tayo po ay magda-download ulit ng pondo sa ating mga region para sa mga gawain para sa child rights at child protection. Last year, DepEd in partnership with UNICEF, Stereo Foundation, and Save the Children conducted the Child Rights and Child Protection in Education webinar series as an integral part of the BELCP capacity building for teachers and school leaders. With the theme, Isulong Parapatan ng Mga Bata sa Edukasyon sa Panahon ng COVID-19, the webinar series focused on child rights in education, child protection in education in the time of COVID-19, and positive discipline in education for parents and guardians. The webinar aimed to capacitate DepEd personnel from the regions and school divisions, teachers and school personnel on child rights and child protection as part of their professional development. For the first time po, for the first time, the learning activity was accredited by the National Educators Academy of the Philippines or NAYAP a monumental step in mainstreaming child rights in DepEd. Happily, tens of thousands of our DepEd personnel were able to complete the webinars and pass the evaluation test so their participation can be granted credit units in professional development, while the webinar series garnered millions of views. The videos of the webinars remain in the DepEd Facebook page, so you can still view them for your own learning. Also, last November 2020, DepEd celebrated with the whole country the 2020 National Children's Month with the theme, Sama-samang itaguyod ang karapatan ng bawat bata sa panahon ng pandemya. This celebration sought to instill awareness on children's rights provide a platform for discourse on issues pertaining to children's rights during and after the COVID-19 pandemic and capacitate duty bearers and children themselves as rights holders in the protection and fulfillment of the rights of children. As a highlight activity of DepEd during the 2020 National Children's Month, DepEd conducted the second national summit 
on the rights of the child in education. Ito po yung naibanggit kanina, which reinforce the continuing commitment of our government and other stakeholders in upholding children's rights, particularly rights-based education or RBE during the COVID-19 pandemic. This summit was attended by children themselves as an exercise of their right to participate in matters that concern them. And so it is truly, truly, truly a joy to, to see that children and learners themselves are also participants in this Child Protection Summit that we are holding now. The DepEd, through its various policies, has emphasized child protection pursuant to the state responsibility to defend the right of children to assistance, including proper care and nutrition and special protection from all forms of neglect, abuse, cruelty, exploitation, and other conditions prejudicial to their development. Most recently, as it was also mentioned earlier, the DepEd issued DepEd Order Number 3, Series of 2021, in January 2021, creating the Child Rights in Education Desk under the Office of the Undersecretary for Legal Affairs and the Child Protection Unit under the Office of the Undersecretary for Field Operations. We hope that with the creation of CREED, uh, we will be able to ensure that all basic education schools, learning centers, and offices are child-centered and child-caring and respect, protect, promote, and fulfill the dignity and rights of the child in basic education. We need everybody to work together to ensure the safety of our children from all forms of harm and abuse. Thus, I really commend this endeavor of the City Schools Division of Tanawan to call together our partner NGOs, namely the ENET Philippines, Terry Foundation, and Save the Children Philippines, the Philippine National Police, the Local Social Welfare and Development Office, the City Health Office, and other stakeholders of child rights in providing worthwhile learning sessions on the rights of the child. We hope that this shining example of your city schools division will inspire other schools division to hold their own summits. You are a pioneer in this regard. Indeed, we need a whole of society effort to uphold the dignity of every child effectively and consistently. And the DepEd, its offices, and schools play a crucial role in this effort. The vision, and I hope this is clear to all of us, the vision is that every school will be marked with a seal that it is a rights-respecting school. Again, a rights-respecting school. A learning environment where children flourish and enjoy their rights and also uphold other children's rights. Let me reiterate and emphasize that the DepEd is fully committed to respect, protect, and fulfill the rights of the child with special focus on the rights of the child to and in education. Not mainly because it is mandated by the highest law of the land, the 1987 constitution, or other domestic laws and rules, and even international laws such as the Convention on the Rights of the Child, but primarily because every child, no matter how young or small, is not half a person, but a whole person with dignity and rights that we as a whole society should respect, protect, promote, and fulfill. Although the maturity and capacity of children are still evolving, they, like all of us, are human beings possessed 
of equal dignity and deserving of equal respect. That is what all human beings are born free and equal means. Minsan lamang po magiging bata ang ating mga bata. Sana po kalingain natin sila kahit na ngayong panahon ng pandemya na marami tayong pagsubok na kinakaharap. Maraming salamat po at muli magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Thank you. Sir, isa pa nga yan, isa pa nga yung palakpakang yan para sa ating nakaka-inspire na keynote address this morning. Thank you very much, Attorney Jo Maribohok. Jo Maribohok po namin naririnig sila sa mga conferences. And you know, si Attorney talaga, first-hand experience with Attorney when I attended uh, almost all the summit. Very inspirational. Iisa lang yung sinasabi ni Attorney. Dapat ang lahat ng bata is the center of all the efforts in the education and in the community. So thank you very much, Attorney. At uh, in behalf of our SDS po, may siguro may gustong sabihin one or two line for <laughs> Attorney Jo. <laughs> Maraming salamat po, Yusek Jo. Uh, uh, ang DepEd Tanawan po ang magiging kampyon ng mga bata. Para sa bata, para sa bayan. Maraming salamat po para riyan. At sama-sama po tayo sa gawain yan dahil kailangan talaga tayong magtulungan at magbayanihan. Thank you very much po, Atty. And makakaasa po kayo that Tanawan City will always cultivate an ecosystem where we put prime importance to the rights of the children. Maraming maraming salamat. And Aside from the inspiration and keynote address provided by Attorney Maribok, our AUSEC, uh, we will also be hearing series of support and messages later. Ano? But at this juncture, let us pave the way to provide all of our participants in the Zoom, parents, our LGUs, partners, at sa ating... Uh, sphere ano ng sa uh, Tanawan City shall we have the overview of the program to be given to us by no less than our hard working uh, specialist for child protection i am uh, referring to no less than mr edgar marshall butch brenia sir take it away hi good morning good morning to everyone uh I could, I'm very much overjoyed right now. Nobody could be ano, parang happier than I am at this uh, moment na nangyayari ito. And of course, uh, thank you very much, uh, Yusek Jo, for gracing our occasion. This, this means a lot to us. And uh, we're very, very thankful for, you, for your time and your effort to uh, come to this program. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, and uh, we uh, commit to you that uh, whatever is our... Uh, uh, objectives in the national office, uh, particularly for the welfare of children, will be very much uh, actively uh, no, uh, moving so that we continually improve our services uh, and uh, protect children and uphold uh, the rights of children in the city. Maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Attorney Jo, Yusek Jo, for coming to our occasion. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, let me just give everybody a backgrounder and keep everybody up to speed so that uh, our new uh, participants also can get can have a glimpse or uh, uh, a grasp of why we're doing this. And so first and foremost, uh, for the backgrounder, this is the third already because the first one took place uh, way back May 27 and 28 of 2018. So during that time, uh, we hold this particular summit uh, under the, the support of our late great mayor, uh, Mayor Tony Halili, and who is also a champion of uh, children in the city. And, uh, and uh, next slide, please, Sir Marlon. Thank you very much for your assistance as well. Ayan. So we started last May. And uh, just to keep everybody up to, up to speed, as I said, uh, before that, two years before, 
uh, we started the gathering, the convening of uh, stakeholders and agencies and key players uh, in child protection uh, way back 2016 when Mayor Tony uh, Halili operationalized the LCPC o yung Local Council for the Protection of Children. At doon po kami nagkakilakilala nitong mga key players natin na maririnig din natin sa araw na to at represented yung kanilang mga agencies. So yun po yung paninimula. Ano po? And uh, a year after that, we were able to hold a training uh, to capacitate people and to have everybody enlightened, especially in the sphere of education, to be enlightened on how the, the child protection response system really works. Uh, pinaintindi po natin bakit tayo nagsasama-sama. Bakit kailangan natin tutuhanin yung mantra na it takes a village to raise children. Uh, and bakit kailangan natin ng suporta ng isa't isa. At ano yung mga may bibigay ng mga services nitong mga kasama natin sa advokasya. Uh, after that training, we, we were able to capacitate school heads and uh, people around us, the sphere of the welfare of children on how the response system goes. So after a year after that, you know po, uh, two years after that to, to be exact, uh, nagkaroon na po tayo ng first Tanawan Child Protection Summit. That was 2018. Why did we hold such an event? Because we're hoping na after doing you know po, yung ating mga commitments, you know, yung at, after giving our commitments, uh, after learning the response system, it's high time for us to gather and report kung ano na nangyari. So it's one thing to have the planning stage, to have the implementation stage, and to also have the monitoring stage so that we can get to, to have a, a, a feel of the report and how is it going? Kamusta na ba? Nangyayari ba yung ating mga commitment uh, na ipinangako natin? So yun po yung nagsimula ng isang tradisyon. So 2019, we also hold uh, the same summit, but it has a different title. It was a, a youth conference. And what we are proud of on that 2019 event is that uh, the city government through the CSWD was able to own uh, to the program as well, able to own the program as well and uh, took lead of uh, engaging you know, the stakeholders into the same activity. Uh, 2020, na challenge tayo kasi nagkaroon tayo ng pandemic. But uh, then again, uh, come 2021, hindi natin hinayaan ano, na yung pandemya ay maging dahilan para hindi tayo makapag-hold ng ganitong mga uh, okasyon. Uh, to continue, yan po. Next slide please, Sir Marlon. To continue, uh, we have a lot of participants during that summit, ano, yun ng 2018. Uh, it was physical, face-to-face, -face, so we were able to convene them in just one venue. Uh, but the good thing about that, we're also attended during that time by uh, a deputy official as well from the National Office, Yusek uh, uh, Jesus Mateo, uh, which is during that time was also uh, very active in, in child protection. And then after that, uh, after celebrating the first, yeah, 2019, so next slide, Sir Marlon, just to continue. We were able to gather parents, uh, teachers, uh, learners for that matter kasi syempre in, uh, kailangan natin magkaroon ng participation ang mga bata at sila yung highlight talaga ng buong programa. So learners were all, also represented during the, the two summits. Uh, we also have civil society organizations of Tanawan joining us from all spheres, uh, NGOs, groups as well uh, were, were able to attend to us. Okay, so yun po yung naging uh, tradition na natin and we hope that uh, this third uh, Tanawan Child Protection Summit is not the last but uh, a continuing uh, program and tradition in the city as well. So gaya po nung ating laging mga ginagawa taon-taon, this year is not going to be the same. Uh, for the activities that we're going to be conducting and highlighting today, we're still going to have the reporting as one of our highlights. So the first activity for this morning is to hear the reports of the counterparts of DepEd, yung ating mga uh, agencies in the local government unit that are also concerned uh, for the welfare of children. So we're going to be hearing uh, reports coming from, of course, our uh, summit partner, uh, PNPWCPD, of course, represented by uh, Police uh, Senior Master Sergeant uh, Rodora L. Manaigna, 
from day one, kasama na po natin at siya po talaga yung taon-taon nagre-report for the WCPD sa end. Ano po? Uh, this year, ang mga kasama po natin to report for the LSWDO o kung tawagin natin uh, CSWD, ano, the City Social Welfare and Development, I know less ang head nila na si Ma'am Vicky Javier to provide us with information on the accomplishments and challenges in the uh, LSWDO na, na side. And then for DepEd, ang maririnig lang po natin sa reporting na, na part ngayong umagang ito ay coming from our uh, City Schools Division Health and Nutrition Unit of which will, is headed and represented by uh, Dr. Marian Alcubier, ano po ang ating pong medical officer ng uh, City Schools Division. Uh, bakit po health lang muna? Kasi yung iba pong reports, aantabayanan natin mamayang hapon. Ano? Kasi sa mamayang hapon, doon natin maririnig yung uh, kalahati pa, yung mga accomplishments sa larangan ng edukasyon at uh, mga serbisyo sa bata. And that would come later on. Ano po? So explain ko rin po yung mechanics noon. Uh, another, next slide please, Sir Mardon. We are also uh, very honored and privileged and very grateful uh, for the partnership that is uh, provided to us in this year's celebration. Ano po? Uh, nakakatuwa, nakakataba po ng puso na dumadami taon-taon yung ating mga nakakasama at nakakapareha. At yung mga dati, hindi po sila nawawala at patuloy pa rin po sila sumusuporta sa atin. The likes of Stairway Foundation Incorporated. Salamat po Sir Ace uh, Diloy and of course uh, Sir JM mamaya na maririnig natin uh, uh, in, a, in a few moments. Ano po? Uh, salamat po sa patuloy na pagtulong sa atin sa larangan po ng uh, training ano po? Sa, sa, mga ka, sa mga kasamahan natin sa DepEd for providing us and also in the city. At uh, Since 2016 kasama na po natin yan ang Stairway Foundation. And hopefully, ano, ma-realize din yung plano nila na to provide us with an e-learning course on child protection. Maraming maraming salamat, Stairway Foundation. Later on, they'll be giving a breakout session, learning session for that matter, uh, entitled Handling Disclosure and Child Sexual Abuse Prevention, which, which is uh, one of the demanded uh, topics for child protection in this year's uh, celebration. Ano po? So jam pack po sila, dalawang rooms po yung i-offer nila later on. We also have our partner na hindi rin po tayo pinababayaan ever since uh, at kasama natin especially nung pandemic. Ano? I'm talking about no less than Save the Children Philippines represented uh, ably by uh, Ma'am uh, Jerly Villanada, the Pro Child Protection Manager they have there in their office. Uh, Ma'am Jerly, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, they are going to be giving and uh, providing us with a positive discipline na session later on. Ano po? And uh, ang kagandahan niyan, lahat po ng attendees natin dun sa, sa breakout session nila, yung lahat na nag-register, all 140 of them would be receiving uh, a primer, ano po? Uh, a material coming from Save the Children that's a positive discipline primer. So uh, I hope that those who registered for the breakout sessions do not share their, their the session link for later kasi baka kayo yung mawalan uh, ng espasyo mamaya no? kasi limited lang po yung ating uh, slots for the session. Okay, We also have a youth forum which is uh, exemplifying and putting into the core yung ating tinatawag na child rights, uh, child participation ano po? at yung mga bata talaga ang maglili dyan. So we have a child forum that is going to be attended by adults as well, not just children. So we have education network in the Philippines Ma'am Flora Arellano, thank you very much for uh, also gracing our occasion. Salamat po, Ma'am Chat. Salamat po sa organisasyon niyo for always supporting us, not just financially with your aids and, and such, but the programs and the trainings that you are also providing uh, the City Schools Division through our partnership. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo, Dr. Flora Arellano and uh, Ma'am Chat Pinalas. Ano po. At uh, of course, JCI. Uh, Laudini Tanawan na kasakasama na po ng, ng DepEd Tanawan ever since and very much supportive of our programs. Uh, kahit ano pong programa ng DepEd, lagi natin silang kasama. Represented of course by Sir Billy Onyate, our, the, the President, and uh, Attorney Anna Kerrer. Salamat po sa inyong dalawa, sa inyong pagsuporta. Uh, they will be providing uh, a session later on which is a very nice session. Uh, sorry for the, no, I'm going to correct the, the title that is being flashed on screen. The, the title of their session is 
uh, the power of confidence, which is going to be very interesting and uh, being attended by a lot of our teachers, parents, learners as well. So yan po yung mga mangyayari sa atin na uh, mga activities later on sa breakout natin. Yan po yung mga topics. So simultaneous po siya, sabay-sabay pong mangyayari yung mga sessions na yan later on. And then we're going to be uh, indulged in the afternoon with an interactive session with the Child Protection Unit. Uh, of course, this will be represented by yours truly as the Child Protection Specialist and no less than our legal officer of the City Schools Division, no less than uh, uh, Attorney Elise uh, Pasqua Tan ano po, joining me on the fray to talk about the effective child protection implementation in schools. How do we do it? So yan po yung pag-uusapan natin later on after the simultaneous uh, sessions, ano po, learning sessions. And then to cap off this event, going to be indulged by no less than our schools division superintendent to highlight and cap off this event to join the many of our learners ano, represented by uh, Alex Ikias, the president of the SSG, for an interactive live interaction. Ano po, uh, kung saan sila po ay magpapalitan, sila po ay mag-uusap, ano, magpapalitan ng puro-puro tungkol sa mga commitments na ibinigay ni Sir SDS mula doon sa kanilang unang pag-uusap na, initi na initiated ng ating SDS, yung unang ikamustahan with learners. Ano po, so yan po ay kamustahan kung na-provide na ba ng ating SDS yung lahat ng kanyang ikinumit uh, mula doon sa mga issues and concern na ibinigay sa kanya ng ating mga kabataan, ng ating mga mag-aagal. So going back to the session's uh, objectives, it's very simple. Today's uh, event is to provide an avenue or platform for child uh, participation and child rights advocacy. So tuloy-tuloy po tayo kahit may pandemya, kahit may ECQ, tuloy-tuloy po tayo ipopromote pa rin po natin ang karapatan ng mga bata and we'll continue to advocate to engage the agency's concern and, uh, on children in an interactive online event advocating child protect, protection and child rights. And also to reinforce our uh, data gathering, our planning, and of course our implementation for continual improvement of our services in terms of child protection and upholding children's rights in the city. And of course, hopefully at the end of this uh, day, we get to appreciate the collaboration the whole approach in terms of the community in fostering child rights and the welfare of children. So with that, yan po yung mangyayari sa atin sa buong uh, uh, maghapon na ito. I hope kapit lang po tayo, kapit lang yung ating internet connection because we have a lot of uh, things in store for everybody. And uh, without further ado, I turn you over back again to our MC so that we can move uh, this, uh, uh, we can keep this uh, uh, program uh, moving. And uh, hopefully that uh, by, uh, by the end of this day, we can still hold on to one another and continue to foster a safe, uh, conducive learning environment uh, for children and eventually leading up to a very safe city wherein everybody thrives and everybody succeeds. Magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat at salamat po sa lahat ng mga uh, sumasama sa atin sa advocacy yung ito. God bless everybody and keep safe. I was waiting for the cheering of the children. <laughs> Ayan, thank Ayan na. So thank you very much, Mr. Edgar Marshall Brinias, okay, for the rundown of what we will be having for this day. Parang hitik na hitik yung mangyayari from the beginning until the, the end of the day. And I think maraming magiging takeaways yung mga tao natin. Specifically, uh, he mentioned a lot of breakout rooms na kailangan-kailangan sa panahon ng pandemia. Ano po? And to formally ask for support coming from our partners, isa-isahin po natin sila ngayong hapong ito, ah, ngayong umagang ito. Lahat po nang nabanggit kanina ng ating ASDS na si Ma'am Rina at ng ating uh, uh, child specialist na si Sir Butch. So we will be hearing messages of support coming from our partners and we will be starting with, of course, uh, one of our partners, a positive discipline. Shall we have uh, Save the Children Philippines in the person of Miss Jerly Villanada, the child protection uh, manager from 
Save the Children Philippines. Hi, Ms. Shirley! Hi, Ma'am Lelen. Good morning po sa lahat ng mga uh, naririto ngayon sa Zoom at lahat po ng nanonood sa atin sa Facebook Live. Magandang umaga po. Uh, binabati po ng Save the Children Philippines ang pamunuan ng uh, Schools Divisions Office ng Tanawan City. Uh, ang lungsod po ng Tanawan. Ang mga guro po na nakasama natin ngayon uh, dito sa Zoom at sa Facebook Live mga magulang, mga kasamahan po natin na mga NGOs na naririto ngayon at lalong-lalo na po sa mga batang babae at mga batang lalaki na kasama natin sa napakahalagang okasyon na ito na Child Protection uh, Summit ng uh, Tanawan City. So sa ngalan po ng aming Chief Executive Officer na si Attorney Alberto uh, Muyot, kami po ay nagpapaabot ng aming uh, mainit na pagbati at congratulations po sa lungsod ng Tanawan, sa SDO ng Tanawan, sa pangunguna po sa uh, pagtaguyod no, sa karapatan pambata, lalong-lalo na po sa karapatan nila na magproteksyonan sa anumang uri ng karahasan at uh, pangaabuso. Sa kabila po ng sirkomstansya na meron tayo ngayon, mahigit isang taon na tayong uh, nasa community quarantines at ang mga bata ay nananatili sa kanilang mga uh, tahanan, ang tanawan po ay patuloy na nagtataguyod no, sa uh, kanilang karapatan na maproteksyonan. Ito po ay uh, dapat bigyan natin no, ng uh, talagang Mainit na congratulations sa inyo kasi uh, ang mga mekanismo sa pagpoprotekta ng mga bata ay patuloy ninyong itinataguyod at uh, you're, you're staying with your commitment to uh, fulfill and protect uh, children's rights. Ang Save the Children Philippines po ay nakikiisa sa inyo sa uh, at sa DepEd no uh, over the years we are supporting Department of Education and uh, the division offices in program areas where we are in um, strengthening uh, child protection mechanisms in our a goal to end violence against children. So magkita-kita po tayo mamaya sa mga nagparehistro po sa ating session on positive discipline. Magkita-kita tayo uh, mamaya. At uh, for sure po, uh, hindi po ito ang una at huli no, na tayo ay uh, magkakasama-sama uh, para sa Child Protection Summit. So congratulations po ulit. Mabuhay kayong lahat. At uh, sana po tayo ay manatiling ligtas mula sa COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Jerly, ang ating partner. Napaka-fresh ni Ma'am. Kahit na ECQ yata ang Metro Manila. <laughs> ECQ. Ngayon po ang simula ng ECQ ng Metro Manila, kaya dapat fresh pa rin. <laughs> At jam tayo mamaya ma'am sa inyong session kasi there are a lot of people who registered. So thank you very much po Ms. Jerly. Uh, the second partner that we will be giving message of support this uh, morning is of course our partner from Inet Philippines. Yan, lagi natin silang kapartner sa mga programs on teacher development. Tsaka yung kalambag nila, di ba? Okay. So from Inet Philippines, we have... Uh, the president, of course, Professor Flora Arellano, is joining us to give message of support. Professor Flora, good morning. Okay. Unable to start the video, okay? Nadidinig po ako? Yes po, ma'am. Loud and clear po. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ayan. Wala lang, ano, wala lang camera. <laughs> okay. It's okay po. Okay. Um, una sa lahat, nais ko munang batiin ang uh, ating um, <clears throat> Department of Education USEC uh, Child uh, Protection um, Defender, no? Ang ating uh, attorney, Josephine Maribojo. At uh, binabati ko rin po ang ating SDS, si Dr. Rogelio Opolensya. Hindi ko po alam kung classmate tayo, sir. 
Ayan. Uh, si, si Sir Edgar Marshall Butch Brinas, ang ating Child Protection Specialist at Education Specialist ng Division. Um, Siyempre, yung ating tagapagpadalo, yun, no? si Ma'am Elinor Brinas. Ma'am Elinor, napakahusay mong facilitator. <laughs> At napakaganda. <laughs> At uh, binabati ko rin po ang mga kapwa-guru ko na naririto ngayon. Ang mga, ang mga teachers organizations within the Division of Tanawan. Ang ating mga magulang, ang PTA na naririto ngayon. At syempre ang ating mga... Um, Bata at kabataan, yung kanilang mga uh, governance structure, yung SSG, yung Federated SSG, SPG. At um, ang ating mga fellow uh, NGO, CSOs, siyempre sa pamumuno ng ating um, Save the Children Philippines, sa ating Stairway Foundation, at sa iba pa po. At siyempre, nais ko rin batiin ang Kalambag Youth ng uh, Education Network o INET Philippines. Ang ating, um, nakalimutan ko po, ang ating, at, ang ating assistant SDS na walang iba kundi si Dr. Rina Ilagan. Ang ating mga barangay captains na naririto ngayon. Ang ating local PNP. Ang ating mga taga local uh, SWDO. At siguro kung may mga nakaligtaan po ako, paumanhin po. Pero sa lahat ng mga nakikinig at nanonood sa ating live stream, sa FB Live, no? magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Um, at gusto ko, rin, gusto ko rin pong sabihin, kasama ko po ang um, contingent ng INET Philippines. Siyempre po sa pangunguna ng aming... Uh, Uh, chat o Charito Pinalas at ang ating um, national coordinator ng INET Philippines po na walang iba kundi si Miss Mirna Jimenez at ang mga kalambag youth na naririto ngayon. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Um, una po sa napakaganda ng ating um, inspirational speech, yung keynote address ni ni Yusek Maribohok. Ang dami ko pong uh, nakuhang insights na makakatulong sa ating pagsusulong ng advokasya para sa karapatan ng mga bata. Kaya ito po yung magiging tuntungan ko rin sa aking pakikipagbahagi sa inyo ng mes- mensahe ng suporta ng uh, INET Philippines. So, on behalf of INET Philippines, We convey no, our warm message of appreciation to the Tatawan School Division for its continuing advocacy in the promotion of child's rights through positive discipline in everyday teaching for a safe, supportive, and healthy environment for children and youth to grow in and a space for an inclusive, equitable, quality education especially in the present context of remote teaching and learning. Napakahirap po talaga ng sitwasyon natin ngayon. Pero uh, nabubuhayan ng loob ang bawat isa sa atin dahil hindi tayo tumitigil. We acknowledge the role of our child's rights and pedet advocates sa Tanawan Division in propagating the seeds of warmth and care for children and youth. Spreading the invitation of building school and community partnerships for a safe, secure, and supportive environment for children and youth through age-appropriate safety and protection messages, especially in the increasing cases of cyberspace bullying and online sexual exploitation and many other child abuses or violence against children, especially girl children. The role of teachers, parents, children, and students' organizations and the community stakeholders 
are crucial to make this good value a part of our everyday life as people. Sabi nga ni Yusek Maribuho, with full recognition and implementation of child's rights, yung sinasabi nating um, promote, fulfill, respect, no, and protect the rights of the child to survival, yung free from hunger, yung rights of the child to development, yung kanilang right to education na no one left behind. Yung right to protection against all forms of violence and right to participation in all decision-making processes. Hindi komo bata sila ay wala silang uh, karapatan na maging bahagi ng pagdidesisyon. At malaking bagay ito sa, maging, sa naging iniluwal ng ating pagsisikap na mapalawak ang ating child's rights sa mga bata. Kaya nga marami tayong ngayong mga SSG, SPG na functional at empowered no? na lumahok sa mga governance structures natin. Gusto ko lang um, maibahagi ito. No? Let us remember, our children and youth are the hope of the nation and nurturing them now would define our future. Napakahalaga po nito. Kaya ngayon pa lamang Patuloy nating in-nurture ang ating mga bata sa right fact. Providing them education is a foundation of nurturing and in building back better towards the new normal. Hence, it must continue. Education must continue, sabi nga ni Kaliling, Secretary Briones. And the issues and challenges delaying this must be addressed. Reclaiming the power and continuous mobilization of our children and youth can lead to the change in the community and nation. Working with young people to build resilience and support the recovery of the nation is a crucial part, especially now that we are facing another surge of a new Delta variant. In the Philippines is one with you in this noble undertaking of building a better future for our children and youth no, free from violence and nurturance towards responsible citizens of our country. Congratulations for this initiative, Tanawan Division Summit, in creating a healthy platform in sharing of ideas and opportunities for collaboration with the goal of ensuring that no learners are left behind, especially in times of pandemic. This will be a legacy that we will be able to pass on to the future generations. Kaya pagpatuloy lang po natin yung mga ganitong summit. Congratulations po at mabuhay kayong lahat. Mabuhay ang Tanawan Division. Um, ang inyong lingkod, um, Professor Flora Arellano. Thank you very much. Thank you very much po, Professor Flora. Uh, isa sa matatag nating partner talaga ang INET Philippines. Thank you very much for those beautiful words and those words are turned into action as we feel and experience them. Salamat po sa inyo. And of course, I would like to also thank Ms. Chat. Hi, Ms. Chat. Hello. Namiss ka po namin. Uh, at this juncture, we will be hearing now the message, of course, from one of our partners still, from the Stairway Foundation Incorporated in the person of their senior advocacy officer. Ito po'y kilalang kilala na ng Tanawan City from the local government, yung mga uh, maraming initiative natin, at saka sa, uh, sa, uh, sa field. Ano? Of course, I'm talking of no less than Sir Israel Ace Diloy. Sir, good morning. Hi, Sir Ace. Is Sir Ace around? Okay, siguro po uh, we will be giving the floor to uh, Stairway Foundation in a little later. Baka they need to get into the 
the platform right now. Ano? So, antay-antabayanan din po natin because there was confirmation from our dear uh, Congresswoman Maitet Colliante. She might get inside the platform maya-maya lamang. So, uh, ituloy po natin ang mga mensahe ng suporta. Of course, ngayon naman ay galing uh, sa JCI Tanawan City. Shall we have in the platform President Billy Onyate? Sir, are you here with us? Sir Billy? Hi ma'am, good morning. Good morning. Clear po ba yung audio? Okay naman. Very clear sir. Ayan po. Okay, first of all, uh, I would love to greet everyone here. Hindi ko na po may isa, -isa. Uh, A blessed and wonderful morning sa lahat ng nasa Zoom and of course sa uh, mga nasa Facebook Live natin. Uh, good morning and uh, a blessed and wonderful morning sa ating lahat. Anyway, uh, we're very thankful po ano, for the... Deped Tanawan and the uh, Division Office ng Tanawan headed by ASDS uh, Rina Ilagan and uh, SDS Rogelio Opolensia for giving us the opportunity to be one of your partners in this third uh, Tanawan City Childhood Protection Summit. Uh, ever since JCI Tanawan Laubini was established, we are already in partnership with Deped Tanawan and lots of activities and projects. And today's activity is one of my favorite. <laughs> Because uh, I believe that protecting our children means protecting the future of our society. And definitely as one of the president of our organization for this fiscal year 2021, I am very grateful that most of the time then you're allowing us to partners in, partner you in creating positive change and creating future leaders of our society. And nevertheless, uh, I rest assured that you will always have us at your back. Uh, mga ganitong projects and we will continue in supporting the activities of that De Deped Tanawan in the best way that we can. And po, uh, again, we wish you all the best and praying for a wonderful success of this uh, Child Protection Summit 2021. Hindi ko na uh, We are very thankful and uh, may we have a blessed morning, blessed day and a wonderful success ngayong uh, summit na ito. Good morning po. Thank you very much for President Billy. And I think joining President Billy right now is Attorney Anna Kerer, right in the platform from the JCI. So uh, at this juncture, meron po tayong mensahe ng suporta through a video message coming from the Stairway Foundation. I believe it will be rolled right now by our uh, uh, technical uh, in charge. The message of Sir Israel Ace Deloy from Stairway Foundation. Let's hear it. Isang mapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat. Ang Stairway Foundation ay lubos na nagpapaabot ng aming pagbati sa mga nag-organisa ng Tanawan City Child Protection Summit. Ang summit na ito ay isang malinaw na manifestasyon ng commitment ng Tanawan City Schools Division Office ukol sa proteksyon sa mga bata. Ito rin ay manifestasyon ng lokal na pamahalaan ng Tanawan City at lahat ng mga kalahok sa summit na ito sa pagtataguyod sa karapatan ng mga bata, particular sa karapatan sa proteksyon. Asahan po ninyo na ang Stairway Foundation ay magiging kaagapay at patuloy na tutulong, patuloy na magiging partner ng Tanawan City sa pagtataguyod ng karapatan ng mga bata. Muli po, isang mapagpalang araw at mabuhay po tayong lahat.
to the government president, Alex Ikias. Maraming salamat po. Salamat po, Sir JJ. At this juncture, I think uh, we will be giving uh, our participants and all of uh, the participants here at Zoom a little break. Ano? Mag-break muna po tayo. We will be declaring a break for all of you, a health break. If you wanted to hydrate, you know, go to the washroom and all of those stuff. Uh, uh, in my clock, it's 10... Uh, 29 so let's have five minutes break ano po let's be back by 10 35 kasi at 10 35 we will be having the reporting of the status of the child protection policy in the city of tanawan so enjoy your break and be back by 10 35 we will be expecting you for a lot more information and a lot more learning so we'll see you then at 10 35 
teachers with quality basic education that is accessible, inclusive, and liberating through And we're back. Yes, we're back. So I hope you are hydrated. Nakapag-snacks na tayo for uh, the continuation of the program this morning. Uh, before we start the reporting of uh, the status of child protection in our city, shall we have first uh, recognition of the efforts of our partner? We will be giving them certificate of recognition. So... Are we ready to flash them? So I would like to give certificate. Okay, I love that. Hooray. Would like to give certificate of recognition to our partners such as Save the Children Philippines from Enet Philippines, Stairway Foundation, and the JCI. So shall we have the certificate on the screen? Okay. So the Republic of the Philippines, Kagawanan ng Edukasyon, Region 4A, Calabarzon City Schools of Tanawan City, give the certificate of appreciation and it is presented to Education Network in the Philippines. 
in recognition of their valuable contribution as summit partners in the city schools division conduct of the Nawan City Child Protection Summit 2021 held on August 6, 2021 via Zoom and FB live stream given the sixth day of August 2021 signed OIC Schools Division Superintendent Rogelio F. Opolencia. Let's cheer Education Network. The same goes with Save the Children Philippines. Let's give them a cheer. I love to hear the cheer. And of course, we have JCI. Shall we have the certificate for JCI and stay away? Okay, JCI Tanawan. Thank you very much to all of you. Maraming maraming salamat po for coming today. At yung partnership natin ay hindi lang sa ganitong programa, kundi talagang their lasting programs, you know, into the grassroots, to the children, and to those who take care of the children. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. And at this juncture, let's proceed to the reporting. Yay! Yeah, let's proceed to the reporting of the status of child protection in the city. And this will be performed by no less than our child protection specialist, ang napakagwapo na si Mr. Edgar Marshall Brinias. Love your own. And of course, our dear attorney from SDO Tanawan City, Attorney Elise Pasquatan. So take it away, Sir Butch and Attorney. Ayan. Thank you very much, uh, Lelen, for really doing a good job in uh, facilitating our event for today. Good morning po again sa lahat. And of course, good morning, Attorney Elise. Hi, good morning, Sir Butch. Good morning po sa lahat. Ayan. Uh, sir, at Attorney, ready na ba tayo? Kasi ito yung taon-taon na tradition talaga natin, ano? As part of uh -oh. our program to huddle everybody, to convene everybody, to report as well, to hear the reports Nakakatuwa. coming from our Nakakatuwa, partners. Nakakatuwa, Sir Butch, no? kasi talagang nakikita natin yung joint efforts ng kahit NGO, mm -hmm. private, LGU, kung ano man yung mga sangay ng gobyerno, talagang united as one para isulong ang kapakanan ng mga kabataan sa tanawan. Ano? Uh, it takes a village to raise children, ka nga, yes. diba? ang pagkakatulong talaga tayo. So, attorney, without further ado, kasi tatlo itong mapapakinggan natin. Ano? At pagkatapos nga, ang pinaka-highlight na itong activity na ito, makakarinig tayo ng reaction coming from our learner. Diba? So, yung uh, child participation talaga is at the, the core of this uh, activity as well. Ano? Yes, so, sige, huwag na natin patagalin, Sir Butch. Pa Ipakilala na natin ang ating unang reporter our friend from the Philippine National Police Women and Children Protection Desk, ang ating kaibigan at ang ating kasangga sa pagtataguyod ng children's rights. Tawagin na po natin si Police Senior Master Sergeant Rodora L. Manai. Good morning, Ma'am Rodora. Yes, hello po. Magandang umaga po sa ating pong lahat. <laughs> Kay Sir Butch, uh, sabi nga po, Laging suke every year. Oh. <laughs> and of course po, sa amin pong kaibigan, <laughs> ang aking <Yeah>. kaibigan, <laughs> Attorney Liz Pasqua, na kakakasal lang, subalit hindi po ako na-invite. Hindi, hindi ako lang. <laughs> Wala masyadong so, na-invite. Opo, bawal po, pandemic. Yes. Okay. So, good morning po sa atin pong lahat, sa lahat po ng uh, kajoint po dito sa atin pong uh, Zoom meeting at saka po sa atin pong lahat na na nanood ng ating FB Live. So, for the report po, kanina po humingi po ako ng pasensya kay Attorney Elise. Nag-chat lang po ako kasi po ay sabi ko supposed to be ay meron po akong uh, presentation, PowerPoint presentation with regards po sa ating pong uh, accomplishments sa PNP. But sad to say po, uh, medyo mahina po kasi ang aking ano, Uh, net. Kaya po pinapicturean ko na lang po doon sa aking, kasi work from home po ako as of now. 
<laughs> Kasi ah, yun po. So, kaya po nandito po ako sa bahay. So, we are only allowed po. Tama po ba? For only 10 minutes. So, bibilisan ko na lang po. So, for for uh, PNP accomplishment po, is particularly sa WCPD or Women and Children Protection Desk, actually last year po, uh, year 2020, uh, we have handled or piled case our cases involving women and children for the total of 47 cases. For And out of that 47 cases, uh, 29 of that uh, are children, victims. So 29 po yung mga victims po natin ay children. And out of that 29 po, 14 po yung ating uh, child abuse cases. And uh, another po, out of that 29, is 15 po ang ating rape cases. Ano po? So, for the whole year po na yan ng 2020. So, actually, medyo mababa pa po yung, yung cases po natin last year. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo po, uh, during that time, talagang eh, strictly yung ating implementation ng ECQ kasi babago pa lamang po yung ating uh, nag-start yung pandemic po natin noon. So most of the time, yun pong ating ano po, ang ating family, yung mga bata nasa bahay. Ano po? But sad to say po, this year uh, from January to July, meron na po tayo agad na 37 cases. As compared po last year, 47 for the whole year. Eh ngayon po, half a year lang, meron na po tayong 37 cases. And again, sad to say, out of that uh, 37 cases po, 10 na po agad ang rape cases po natin from January to July. And out of the, that 10 cases of rape, ay 8 po ang ating children na victim. Ano po? And uh, nine po out uh, nine po this from January to July nine po yung ating child abuse cases. So kung mapapansin niyo po uh, medyo mataas po ngayon ang ating cases ng mga uh, victims po ay children. Ano po? So with regards po doon sa ating ginagawa, sabi nga po, laging partner ang PNP of course sa pag uh, so po ng ating crime. Kaya po nung nag uh, since ang mga bata po ay hindi makapag makalabas. So nag-launch po ang PNP particularly the Tanawan PNP, yung WASPD po, yung tinatawag po namin ireklamo. So ito pong ireklamo po na to ay ilagi po naming pinaplash sa aming FB page or yung amin pong FB page is Tanawan PS Police page. So lagi po naming pinaplash yan para po doon sa mga bata kasi kung mapapansin niyo naman po ang mga bata ngayon as compared before may mga kanya-kanya ng cellphone, madali rin maka-access sa internet. So kahit siguro sila victims, pwede rin po silang mag-report. So, kung ba, uh, kaya po mas i- amin po lagi yung pinopost sa FB kasi most of the time yung mga bata nag, lagi ring may FB, uh, ma, nag-FB or meron na pong FB account. Aside from that din po, meron na pong, uh, meron po kaming tinatawag na WCPD hotline. Hindi lamang po Tanawan PNP, yung mismo in particular, yung Tanawan PNP hotline, pero meron po kaming hotline ng Tanawan P, ang WCPD in particular. At yun po ay lagi rin po naming pinopost sa aming FB page. And uh, pangatlo po, meron po tayong tinatawag na infographics. So kung mapapansin po ng iba, lagi po kaming uh, nagpo-post din po ng different uh, information. Usually po yan po ay naka uh, para para maka-attract ng attention. So nandun po yung information, what about the cyberbullying, what about the sa uh, the, the child abuse cases. So yun po yung ma uh, at the same time, yung pong mga anti-child uh, pornography. So, anything about that po. So, pinopost din po namin yan sa FB. And lastly po, ito po yung aming pong kalolunch lang. Nito pong last May. 
meron po kaming yung Project Vibes. Actually, nag-launch po kami sa City High. Ito po yung pong, uh, meron po kaming uh, seminar with regards po doon sa different topics para at least yun pong ating mga estudyante, kahit po nasa bahay po sila, uh, makakarinig po sila ng um, mga different na topics para at least aware sila na kapag ka na-experience, wag naman sana ay directly silang makakapag-report din po sa amin through e-reklamo. Yun pong aming via internet. So, kala-launch lang po namin last May po yan. And continuous pa rin po yung aming Project Vibes in coordination with uh, the different schools po. So, that's all po for my accomplishment report in PNP Tanawan. Thank you very much po. Thank you very much, uh, Police Master Sergeant, Senior Master Sergeant uh, Ma'am Rodora. Ako yan, eh, bilang suki, ano, kaibigan-kaibigan <laughs> talaga yan ng DepEd ever since nag-hold tayo nito. Talagang uh, number one na supporter natin yan si Ma'am Manaig. Ano po. Uh, Tony, pag-usapan lang natin yung report ni, ano, no, ni Ma'am uh, Manaig. Mm -hmm. Siguro kaya mataas yung rate na nakakuha natin o mataas yung incidents kasi nga may awareness ano mm -hmm. may uh, mga tao where to get help kaya siguro madami yung nagre-report sa PNP natin ano at uh, congratulations kay Kinda Ma'am uh, Rodora for doing a good job in really educating and uh, keeping our people aware ano in the city na when you need help dito ka pwedeng pumunta at uh, nandoon siya online ano po Attorney how about you Oo, ang ganda nung mga programs ng PNP natin, ano, nag adjust din sa pandemic situation that we have. So parang hindi naging hindrance yung ating uh, pandemic for them to have a quality service pagdating dun sa provision ng mga protection sa kabataan natin at sa mga bata. So alam ko na napakadaming programs and activities ng ating PNP, especially with the WCPD, sa panguna ni Ma'am Rodora, talagang suking-suki at talagang every year, parang Rodora, Ma'am Rodora, tama ba ako? Nakaka-challenge din, nakaka din ba yung summit ng DepEd? Kasi syempre, you, have, you are accountable and you're responsible to report what has been PNP is doing for the past year. So parang siguro ang analysis ko, nakakatulong din naman ang ating Child Protection Summit for us to be able to be reminded ng ating mga responsibilities and liabilities. Di ba, Ma'am Rodora? Yes, Ma'am. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Kasi, actually, hindi ko po ina-expect na meron po din ganitong project yung ating DepEd. And thank you so much po, Ma'am. Kasi, actually, kababalik ko lang nito po sa schooling. And yet, noong pagbalik ko po, meron po palang ganito agad na activity wherein tama nga po sa ating ano uh, situation ngayon na hindi ko po inaexpect inaexpect ko kasi uh, siguro wala na kasi wala na tayo hindi na pwedeng lumabas or mag uh, whatsoever <laughs> maraming bawal pero meron pa rin po palang ganot ganito so thank you very much din po at nagkaroon din po kami ng chance na mai-report din po yung aming mga uh, programs sa PNP Thank you. You're very much welcome, Ma'am Rodora. And of course, kami din nagpapasalamat kasi hindi tumipigil yung ating uh, ahensya sa pagpaproteksyon pag, uh, talaga. Lalo yung pag-anticipate natin na sabi nyo kanina, no, ECQ, nag-lockdown tayo ng 2020, uh, parang preventive na tayo or ina-anticipate na natin ah, potential mangyari itong mga uh, abuses na ito. So, kaagad kumilos yung ahensya nyo. So, thank you very much po sa sa police natin and of course sa city government natin for doing a great job in supporting Dep Ed Tanawan talaga and the, the children for that matter. O yung attorney si Alex, oh, naka, ano lang yan, nakaabang lang si Alex Ikiyas, yung ating uh, president ng SSG. So mamaya-maya pinakikinggan yung reports natin and mamaya magbibigay yan ng kanyang reaksyon uh, doon sa mga reports na natanggap niya from uh, our agencies. So hang on Alex ha. Mamaya maya, tatawagin ka na namin. Okay, so attorney, shall we move? Thank you very much once yeah, again. Thank uh, you po, Ma'am Rodora. 
Ayan, mabaliin. Salamat sa iyo talaga. At uh, sana hindi ito yung huli. Ano? Kasi gusto namin lagi kang nakakasama sa mga summit na ganito. Ayan. So moving on with the reports ano to roll on with the next uh, kaya hindi pa aalis si Ma'am Rodora kasi mamaya yung bata natin makikipag-interact pa sa kanila ano So ngayon papadadaluin na natin yung ating reporting ang susunod nating tatawagin hindi na iba sa DepEd ano uh, siya talaga since nung nag, naupo din siya doon sa ahensya ay naging partner na natin at kaibigan uh, sa larangan ng Uh, response system natin ano kasi sa kanya lagi kami nagre-refer eh, ano at nagkaroon pa kami niyan nung ako ay naitalaga sa uh, Tinurik National High School bilang OIC nagkaroon pa kami ng programa niyan na nag-pilot test kami nung effective na implementation ng intervention program ano uh, lalo pagdating sa bata so hindi ko na pahabain wala ang iba kundi ang aking pakilala ko ngayon mag-report outside of the LSWDO or yung tinatawag nating City Social Welfare and Development ang ating pong kaibigan RSWD uh, RSW walang iba kundi si Ma'am Vicky Javier. Ma'am Vicky, good morning. Hello, good morning po. Ayan. Naririnig po ako? Yes po, yes po loud and clear po. Thank you so much sir Brinyas and thank you so much po sa lahat. Good morning po lalo tigit po sa ating pong ASDS kay Ma'am Rina sa ating pong SDS kay Sir Opolencia na naka ano ba tawag doon naka nakausap ko na po kanina at kami po ay nagka nagkasabihan na kung ano po ang aming mga plano. So sa umaga pong ito ay nais ko pong batiin din ang lahat po ng kasama dito po sa ating Zoom at yung pong mga naka-live stream po sa ating Facebook account. So i-share ko lang po sa inyo ang akin pong slides para po mas maintindihan po natin ano po ba yung ibabahagi ko sa umagang ito. Ang ibabahagi ko po sa inyo ay ang atin pong accomplishment report sa atin pong tanggapan. Sa ngalan po ng aming City Mayor, Angeline Spitalili, ito po yung mga programa na amin pong ibinibigay sa atin pong mga uh, sabihin po natin mga kabataan. Ano po? So, Una po, sabi nga po natin, yan, fulfilling children's rights. Okay, so ito po yung aming accomplishment from 2020 to 2021. Atin po makikita na COVID-19 has been declared a global pandemic in March 2020. So doon po nag-start ang atin pong pandemic. Ano po? And all of us are facing multiple new stress. So sa amin po tanggapan, siguro po isa po kami sa naging abala po ng mga panahong yon at na kami po yung nangangalaga sa lahat po ng ating sektor. Ano po? Including physical and psychological health risks, school and business closures, family confinement. Yan, sabi nga po natin ay na-isolate po. Uh, especially ang ating po mga children ay tumigil lang po sa loob ng ating tahanan. True Through all these times, the City Social Welfare and Development or ang amin pong tanggapan ay hindi rin po tumigil sa pagharap sa iba't iba pong uh, challenge na po para po pangalagaan at protektahan po ang karapatan po ng ating mga bata. So kami po dito po sa tanggapan ay patuloy po na gumawa ng mga bagay kung paano po natin uh, mababantayan at may tataguyod po ang karapatan po ng ating po mga bata. So next slide, please. So dire-diretso lang po kami, especially po yung ni-report po kanina ni, ng aking pong kumari, ni Ma'am Doray. Ayan. So naging bahagi din po kami, especially po kung ang biktima po ay uh, minor. Sa amin po yan lagi po mabagsak. Kapag ka po minor po ang nagiging biktima at the same time, kung ang nakakakumit po ng crime ay minor din po sa atin po iyan napapapunta through referral po and through court order. Lagi po sinasabi ni court na uh, i-under po sa CSWD dahil meron po tayong temporary shelter na, na pinaglalagyan po ang atin pong Tanawan Kanlungan Center uh, para po doon po sa mga foundling children and mga abuse uh, ng mga batang babae. At the same time po, meron din po tayong bahay pag-asa 
for our CICL or yung ating po mga children in conflict with the law, mga minor offenders po ito. Na doon po ay binibigay po natin lahat kung ano man po yung kanilang pangangailangan. Nasa naka ano din po sila, para din po silang nakatira sa kanilang bahay, yun nga lamang po ay meron pong mga limitations. Ano po? Next slide. So sa ngayon po, bigay ko po sa inyo yung figures kung ilan po yung nasa-serve natin sa ngayon. So sa atin pong under bahay pag-asa, meron po tayong 20 noon pong 2020 at mula po January to June ng 2021 ay meron po tayong na-serve na walo. Pero as of now po ay labing tatlo po ang ating naka-in-house po ngayon doon at meron po tayong mga schedule na sinusunod dyan. Sila po ay binibigyan natin ng uh, intervention at yun po tinatawag natin na treatment plan para po in, if, in case po na sila po ay lumabas na ay maayos po o talaga po narehab natin at nabigyan po natin ng values formation ng ating po mendon. And under po naman ang Kalduhan Center, we have uh, 11 in 2020 and 12 po sa ngayon ang nandun po sa ating bahay Kalduhan Center. So tayo din po ang nag-process po ng reintegration to families or relatives in barangay diversion. So yung diversion po ay ginagawa natin. Uh, noong 2020 po ay nakadivert po tayo ng 42 na minors. Ito po ay yung ibinabalik po sila kapag ka po medyo ang kanila po mga cases ay hindi po mabibigat. Pero kailangan po ang uh, pagmomonitor pa rin po. So nagkakameron po ng diversion sa atin pong mga barangay na kung saan po ay uh, binibigyan din po natin sila ng intervention. Kasama po dito ang barangay official. Kasama din po ang atin pong BAUSI. Dahil lahat po ng ating barangay sa ngayon, we have uh, 62 uh, BAUSI desk officers sa atin pong 48 barangays. And as of January to July po ay meron po tayong labing apat na naka-diversion po na monitor po yan ng ating tanggapan. Ito po ay meron silang community service na ginagawa. And for the meantime po ay meron po sumusunod po sila sa atin po tinatawag po na curfew hours. Ano po? At sila po ay binabantayan po ng ating mga barangay officials. Meron din po tayong uh, dalawa uh, this uh, 2021 na kapag ka po maganda ang pinapakita pong behavior ng bata sa bahay pag-asa Although meron na pong uh, court order, pero tayo po ay humihingi ng disposition para po naman sila po ay ma-reintegrate doon po sa kanilang mga pamilya, inihingi po natin yan sa korte na mapayagan na makabalik sapagkat ang bata po ay nagpapakita na ng maganda pong behavior at tunay po naman na, na nakikita niya or na nare-reflect na niya sa sarili niya kung ano yung mga mali na ginagawa. Then, meron po tayong tatlo this 2021 since tayo nga po ay under the pandemic. Meron po tayong AITF contract na dinadivert din po sa atin pong barangay. Ibig sabihin po, inihihingi po din natin to ng IATF resolution na sila po ay ma-reintegrate din po sa ating mga families. And sabi nga po ni Ma'am ni Ma Doray kanina, medyo tumataas po ang ating bilang. Dahil ngayong pong 2021 kami po ay January to June, meron po kaming siyam na nirescue na mga bata. Mga minors po ito na nirescue po natin, meron po dito uh, minamaltrato po ng magulang. Meron din naman po na yung kung tinatawag natin na nagiging uh, rape victim po. Ano ha? Next slide please. So under din po ng ating protective services, Uh, programa po namin yung sa pre-marriage counseling na kung saan po ay ibinibigay na po agad namin uh, through, kami po ay naka-online po sa pagbibigay po ng seminar sa atin pong mga ikinakasal na yun pong child rights ay ini-integrate na rin po natin during the seminar sinasabi na po yan, pinapaliwanag na po sa mga would-be couple para po mas maintindihan po na sila po in the future ay magiging magulang din. And then ito po yung mga karapatan ng mga bata. Then nakapag-contact din po tayo ng uh, 2021, January to June ng limang balik probinsya 
Ito po yung mga pamilya na nakaka-experience po. Uh, una po ay yung paghihiwalayan po ng mga, ng mga mag-asawa na hindi po namin masettle uh, na sila po ay nagdidesisyon na uuwi na lang po sa kanilang place of origin kasama po yung mga bata. So ina-assist po natin yan or yun pong mga nai-stranded po dito sa Tanawan City. May mga nai-stranded po dito kailan lang po ay may bit-bit pong pitong anak eh wala naman po palang pupuntahan dito sa Tanawan. Ito po ay atin pong sometimes kung malapit po ay atin pong iniahatid and uh, binibigyan po natin ng intervention. Then ito po ay nire-refer natin sa social worker kung saan po sila uh, tutuloy para po naman yung continuation po ng monitoring ay magampanan din po. Then meron po tayong tatlo. Ito po yung mga children transferred to institution. Ito po yung mga uh, cases po namin, mga special cases po namin ng mga bata na wala na po mga ngalaga sa kanila, walang relatives na iniiwan po sa ating tanggapan and ang isa po dito ay out of ano po ito out of break na nabuntis po na ayaw pong pananggapan ng ina so dinadala po natin sa mga adoption institutions po so tatlo po at meron pa po kaming dalawa ngayon na nandito po sa atin pong uh, center then ang atin hong mga minors na napapapunta po sa ating tanggapan Maging yung sa outside po ay nagbibigay po tayo ng psychological evaluation through referral din po. Uh, dinadala po natin sila sa Lipa dahil doon po natin sila pinapasike eval. And sometimes po ay meron po tayong dalawa ngayon para po naman malaman natin. Uh, ito po yung mga referral din po ng barangay minsan na nagiging pasaway po sa barangay. Kailangan din po kasi bigyan ng treatment plan. And for the anti-mendicancy operation, ito ho yung dahil nag-lockdown pero dinadala pa rin po sa labas ng mga bata. Ang uh, ginagawa po natin dito, kinakounseling po ang parents, pinapaliwanag po bakit po bawal lumabas ang mga bata, bakit po bawal dalhin kung saan saan ang mga bata. So naka 100 po tayo from January to June. At ito po ay continuous na namomonitor din natin na sa first offense po ay, ay ine-educate po natin ang parents and then kasama po ang BAUSI. Ang BAUSI po ang ating binibigyan lagi ng referral na sila po ay patuloy na mabantayan. And meron po tayong 22 na na-serve noong January to June na behavioral assessment po ng atin po mga client dito po, ng atin po mga service users na binibigay din po natin yan isa po yan sa intervention na binibigay po ng ating pong tanggapan. Next slide. Meron po tayong na-serve. Ayan. So, eto ho yung mga meron pong nadadala sa presinto. Meron naman pong hindi nadadala. Kaya medyo magkaiba po kami ni Ma'am Doray. Kasi minsan po kasi ay sa barangay pa lang po ay nasesettle na po. Pero true po sa aming monitoring dahil meron nga po tayong women's, uh, uh, meron po tayong children o yung pong ating mga bausi, violence against women and children na officer po sa bawat barangay at sila po ay obligado mag-submit ng report sa atin po dito po sa tanggapan. A monthly report po ito. So yan po yung mga bilang na naserve po namin. Ano ho, na Ang iba po dyan ay continuous pa rin po namin na minomonitor. Meron po kaming labing apat na cases po na may close monitoring po ang social worker. Ito po yung uh, regular home visit. Hindi lang po kasi yung ating pong mga minor ang ating pong inaalagaan. Even po yung mga family at yung pong mga neighborhood yan po ay atin din po binibigyan din po ng intervention para po yung uh, discrimination po ay hindi po maramdaman ng ating pong mga biktima. So makikita nyo po dyan. Okay, next please. So ito po yung ating uh, conduction of counseling sa ating po mga children at risk. Ito po yung sinasabi ko na uh, wala naman pong file case, wala din naman pong ano, pero nire-refer po ng BAUSI na nagiging pasaway po sa barangay. Ine-enroll po sila sa amin at yan po ay binibigyan natin ng treatment plan or uh, counseling session 
at meron po silang mga assignment na gagawin. Okay, next. Ito naman po yung ating nasa bahay pag-asa. Yan po yung ating mga CICL na atin po silang binibigyan din po ng intervention na kung saan po ay uh, learning, meron po tayong ALS, naka-enroll po sila sa alternative learning system, and then meron po silang schedule na sinusunod mula po sa umaga hanggang hapon. Binibigyan po natin sila at the same time ay meron din pong skills development na binibigay sa kanila. Tayo po ay nag-iimbita po ng, ng ano po, mga trainer na mga kapagturo po para ma-develop po yung kanila mga skills. Magaganda na po yung kanila mga product na ginagawa. And then, ganun din po, part din po yung kanilang spiritual, uh, the, uh, ang values formation po. Uh, katuwang po natin diyan ang Tanawan Alli Evangelical Alliance Ministry na once a week po ay nagkakameron po sila ng Bible study. Part po yun ang ating pong ginagawa. And uh, kapag ka nga po nakita natin na maganda po yung behavior natin, sila po ay na, nahihinga naman po natin sa court na maibalik po sa kanilang community at saka po sa family. So dual po yan. Hindi lang po si ICL natin ang binabantayan at kinakounseling din po natin ang family para paglabas po ng bata ay meron pong acceptance on the part of community and family. Next slide. Ito po yung ating tanong, Tanawan Kanluhan Center na kung saan po ay the same din po kung ano po ang ginagawa natin sa pag-asa, ganun din po ang ginagawa natin dito sa mga batang ito. So ito po ay drop-in center po. Nang kinikater po natin dito ay mga foundling, abuse, battered women. So yung po mga na nabibigyan po sa barangay ng mga TRO na kailangan po ay yung po mga BPO pag naisyuhan po yung binubugbog na nanay, ay sa amin po muna o sa atin po muna ng center pansamantala po na ibinibigay hanggang may process po natin na kung talaga po hindi na po magiging healthy ang pagsasama ng mag-asawa, nire-reintegrate na lang po natin sila sa relative or ibinabalik probinsya program po natin sila. So next. So isa rin po sa atin pong ginawa during pandemic ay yung pong ating uh, pagbibigay po ng mga IEC materials on the protection of children. So isinasabay po namin yan sa tuwing kami po ay pumupunta sa barangay. May mga dala na po kaming mga materials. At the same time, si Bausi po ay niyo-utilize natin. Even the daycare uh, workers po natin since wala pong face-to-face, -face, sila po yung niyo-utilize natin na mag-advocate po ng protection of children sa atin pong mga barabarangay. Sila man po ay binigyan din po natin ng assignment kung paano po babantayan at maisisiguro na ligtas po ang mga batang lalaki at batang babae sa atin pong barangay. Next please. Isa rin po sa ating binibigyan din po ay ang atin pong ayan po, daycare So for the first time po ano, in the history of our daycare uh, children and daycare centers, daycare workers, uh, ngayon lang pong 2021, kameron po tayo ng 100% accreditation po ng ating 59 child development workers na sila po ay nakapasa sa panuntunan po ng DSWD or the Regional Office po ng Social Welfare and Development na ang ating po mga Uh, daycare workers and the same time ang kanila pong daycare centers ay efficient and effective na po sa learning po ng atin po mga uh, year 3 to 4.11 years old na mga children. Ayan po. So yun po mga susunod na slides. Ito po ay ipapakita lang po namin. Ito po yung naging rating ng atin po mga child development centers and child development workers. Bali dalawa pong accreditation yan kailangan po ay makapasa po ang center at the same time makapasa din po ang mga child workers natin, child development workers. So actually po, uh, lahat po sila ay nakapasa. Meron po tayong dalawang naging outstanding. Ibig sabihin, full support po ang barangay chairperson ng barangay na yon at napakaganda po noong center. Nakapasa po over pa sa standard po na binibigay ni DSWD. And we have 20 very satisfactory 
and 37 po yung satisfactory accredited po ng DSWD. On the part naman po ng child development workers, we have 27 very competent and 32 competent CDW. Ito po ay ginanap uh, nito lang po uh, July. Ano po? June, July po ginanap po ito para po mabigyan po sila ng accreditation. And yung susunod po dito mga slides, papakita lang po namin Ayan po yung mga barangay at saka po mga ratings po ng ating pong DCC at saka po ng CDW. So ibig sabihin lahat po sila ay nakapasa. Amen. On the part naman po ng nutritional status po ng ating mga... Meron po tayo, although at tayo po ay naka... Uh, lockdown, hindi rin po tumigil ang DSWD. Patuloy po natin binibigyan ng feeding program ang ating pong mga nakaregister po sa ating pong barangay uh, daycare workers na 4.11 years old. So ito po ay nakameron po tayo for 2020 na 3,000 po na daycare children na nag-benefits po dito sa national feeding program na kung saan po ay dinadala po dito, niluluto po ang ating po mga pagkain sa ating po mga uh, daycare children. At nagkakameron po tayo, ang trabaho po ni CSWD local ay yung pong weight monitoring, dewarming po, na katayap po natin dito ang City Health Office. Ayan, so ganito po. Ayan po yung ginagawa natin. Meron muna po tayong uh, operation timbang and the warming na ginagawa po ng City Health Office bago po tayo magsimula po ng ating feeding program. And on a monthly basis po ay atin po silang uh, tinitingnan kung nag improve po ang kanila po status po, ang kanilang nutritional status po. So for this year po ay itutuloy po uli natin yan at meron po tayo na sa mahigit na 2,900 po na Enrollees po ulit ng ating pong uh, daycare children na bibigyan po ng ating supplementary feeding. Ayan po. Next. So, yun naman pong ating mga children na, na ano po ng ating pong COVID-19 patients. We have uh, 118 na nabigyan po natin ng food supplies. So, lahat po na nagpa-positive sa tanawan ay binibigyan po natin ng 25 kilos rice and assorted canned goods. So from January to July, meron po tayong 118 children. Although tayo po ay nasa 3,000 plus po na nabibigyan na po and all in all po, pati PUIs po and PUM natin, kulang-kulang na po nasa 6,000 po ang ating pong pinuprovide ng food supplies during their quarantine period. So hindi po sila pinababayaan ng ating pong gobyerno, hindi po sila pinababayaan po ng ating mga government officials. Next po. Sa atin naman pong AX, ito po yung assistance to individual in crisis situation. Meron po tayong apat na binibigyan po ng financial assistance. At ang ating pong mga children ay nakaka-avail din po nito. Yun pong ating medical. Kung meron po tayong mga children na uh, nangangailangan po ng medical na attention, uh, reseta lang po ang kailangan namin updated po na reseta and then barangay clearance po binibigyan po natin sila ng pambili po ng gamot and for burial po meron din po tayong burial na binibigay hospitalization ito po ay guarantee letter through ay guarantee letter uh, kapag ka po ang ating po mga bata ay naka-confine sa hospital ay through ay guarantee letter ng ating pong mga affiliated hospital, halos lahat po ng hospital katanawan ay affiliated po sa ating binibigyan po natin sila ng guarantee na ang city government po ang magbabayad ng hindi naman po lahat but a portion ng bill po ng ating pong mga children doon po sa ating po mga naho-hospital. And in time naman po na talagang hindi po sila makatawid at tayo po ay sila po ay namatay tayo po ay nagbibigay ng tulong hatid. Ay yung pong tinatawag nating libreng kabaong po para tulong na rin po sa pamilya na hindi na po nila kailangang bayaran ang kanila pong mga gagamitin 
dahil nga po sabi natin ang ating pong IATF resolution sa Burial po ay hanggang dalawang araw lang. So marami po ang nag-a-avail kung makikita po ninyo. Ano po? Ayan, malapit na po tayo. And for the welfare naman po ng ating special needs, ayan po yung ating children. Ito po yung mga binigay natin. May awareness, information, dissemination. Kasi one of the vulnerable group po dito sa atin ay ang ating po mga PWDs. So meron po tayong mga continuous po ang ginagawa natin. At ang pinakahuli po ay nag-showcasing po tayo ng talent po ng ating mga ano, uh, true dance video contest. Ito po ay pinadala lang sa ating tanggapan. Ito po ay proyekto po ng ating isang konsihal. Si konsihala Silin Marqueses po. So magbibideo po sila through a TikTok. Ayan. Then binibigyan po natin sila ng award. For the policies naman po, next slides. Ayan po yung mga policies na ibinibigay po natin sa mga children natin ngayon. Ito pong provision of cash gift sa ating pong mga PWDs. And ayan po, meron po tayong bio-intensive gardening ordinance. Yung pong mga naka-enroll sa ating pong supplementary PD, may counterpart po ang parents. Sila po ay magtatanim sa kanila pong mga backyard. And then yung pong ating supplementary and the Magna Carta of Our Child Development Workers. Meron din po tayong strengthening capacity development na binibigay. Yan po yung mga strengthening po na binibigay po. Hindi lang po sa ating mga uh, uh, bata, ganun din po sa mga nag-handle po ng programa ng ating bata. And on the part naman po ng Taal, volcano eruption, marami po tayong nabigyan ng tulong ng mga bata din po. May mga families po tayo, especially mga indigent families. We have 23,417 families po na nag-avail. So yan po yung mga wave. Kung makikita nyo po, iba't ibang wave po. So ano pa po yung aming mga gustong ibigay? Ito po yung ang atin nung tanggapan. Okay, yan po. Sige po. Next slide. So ito po yung challenges na nakita namin. Na po, uh, yung temporary closure po ng daycare centers, mobility restrictions, Insufficient number of social workers kasi konti lang po kami dito. And the budget constraint, insufficient, inconsistent data on children. Kaya natutuwa ako kanina no sinabi ni Sir uh, Opolesia na may ready ng listahan. Ayan, kailangan ko po yan. So hindi na po kami mahihirapan pag mga bata ang gagawin namin. Beneficiary po ng ating po mga programa. At sigurado po magiging bisita niyo po ako lagi sa inyong tanggapan, Sir Opolesia para po tayo ay mag-usap at kukuha po ako ng mga data po ninyo. So, next slide. Ayan po, siguro po ito na yung last ano po. So, meron po tayong amendment ng Children Welfare Code kasi kailangan pong i-update na natin due to pandemic. And then, yung pong ating continuous participation po ng LCPC, implementation ng local supplementary feeding, continuous monitoring po ng ating daycare workers and daycare centers. Planning po ng devolution ng children programs. Alam po natin by 2022 ay ididevolve na po lahat ni DSWD ang kanilang programa sa local government. So isa po yan sa ating pinaghahandaan yung devolution po ng children programs and the crafting of comprehensive development plan for children na uh, integrated po ito kay LCPC. Ayan po. Salamat po ng madami. Sana po naintindihan po natin yung amin po mga accomplishment. Ayan. Attorney Elise, kamusta ang report sa iyo ng ating kaibigan mula sa CSWD na hitik na hitik? Napakasiksik at liglig ng report ni Mang BC. Talagang nakaka-overwhelm na sobrang active ng ating CSWD. Thank you, Mang BC. Talagang walang pahinga sila simula nung oh. nagkaroon tayo ng mga Uh, calamities, tapos ng pandemic. Ano, at kitang-kita natin sila kasi binibisita natin sila from time to time at uh, katulong pa rin tayo ng, ano, ng CSWD sa maraming programa. So, thank you, Ma'am Vicky. Ah, pati yung ibang programa na, ano, no, na kahit hindi na tungkol sa bata, nalaman din namin dun sa report ninyo. So, maraming maraming salamat po. At uh, kita ko kanina na intently listening at nag upload din si Alex, ano, kanina habang siya'y nakikinig. So mamaya, excited talaga ako na marinig din kung ano yung mga magiging reaction ni Alex tungkol dito sa ano natin, uh, exemplifying child uh, participation in this particular reporting. Ano? So, attorney, paano? 
Uh, move na tayo sa, sa next reporter natin. No? So, yeah. salamat ulit kay Ma'am Vicky. Yeah. Thank salamat you, Ma'am Vicky. Ma'am. So, for our last reporter naman, last but not the least, ano oh, po, oh, ang ating, ating uh, medical officer 3 ng ating division office. Let's all welcome Dr. Marian H. Alcober para sa kanyang report. Go Hi, Dr. 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 Uh, good morning. Hello po, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hindi ko na po kayo iisa-isahin. Ano, maganda umaga po. Sana po ay nasa mabuti kayong kalagayan ng mga panahong ito. No? Sanay na sanay na po kayo sa akin. Ang tanong ko po, wala po bang ubo? Wala po bang sipon? <laughs> wala po bang lagnat? <laughs> Di ba? Yun po. So, ang ipipresent ko po sa inyo is more of health and safety na ating mga kabataan. Ano? So, um, pwede po bang maano na yung slides natin? Yan. So, children in health. Sabi ko nga at alam ko natin, ang i-discuss ko po sa inyo ngayon, eh, kung nasaan na ba ang ating uh, Department of Education in terms of health sa ating mga mga ba kabataan. Ano? Kasi alam po natin, ang ating uh, sitwasyon ngayon, ang ating mga kabataan, hindi po nakakalabas ng bahay. At sa amin po, sa School Health and Nutrition, Kami po ang gumagawa ng paraan. Ano po? Paano, paano po namin maipapaabot sa ating mga kabataan ang aming mga programa? Kaakibat po ng okay sa DEPE. So, next slide po, sir. Okay. So, alam naman natin ang nangyari, di ba? So, noong 2020, nagkaroon tayo ng uh, taal eruption. So, hindi natin inaasahan na tayo ay nabigla na sa kalagitnaan tayo ng ating school year Pero we have to stop our work, we have to stop schooling. And doon po pumasok yung psychological first aid na ibinigay po ng ating team. Initially sa Ambulong, ano po, nakapag-provide po tayo ng psychological first aid sa ating mga learners uh, from grade 4 to grade 6. So na-accommodate po natin ang 360 learners. Unfortunately, unfortunately, habang tayo po ay nagbibigay ng psychological first aid. Next slide po. Ito, biglang pumasok si COVID. So talagang tumigil ang mundo, ng buong mundo, pagdating ni COVID. Kasi nagkaroon tayo ng um, nawala. Nawala yung face-to-face. -face. Nawala yung kinasanayan ng ating mga kabataan na everyday naglulok forward sila sa pagpasok. Makita ang kanilang mga kaklase, makita ang kanilang mga teacher, di ba? Miss na miss na nila yung isa't isa. So, nandun. Nandun yung ating fear. Nandun yung ating adjustment. No? Kaya po dito po sa Department of Education, uh, under po ng School Health and Nutrition, may programa po kami na in-enhance. So, next slide po. Ito po yung okay sa DepEd or yung Oplan Kalusugan. So, yan po ay may anim na flagship. Iisa-isahin po natin yan ngayon. So, ang una po doon sa uh, flagship program ng okay sa DepEd is the school-based feeding program. So, nabanggit po yan ang ating CSWD. Kung sila sa community, ages hanggang, hanggang four years old tayo po school-based. No? So, doon sa ating school-based, uh, nakapagbigay po tayo sa 545 beneficiaries plus 735 may hinabol po tayo ng nutritious food pack. So ito yung bread, fruits, and root crops. Ito po ay pinigay natin doon sa mga beneficiaries or recipients natin na mga uh, wasted, severely wasted, and cinders. No po? Uh, nag karon din po tayo ng milk feeding program na naka ang nakareceive po niya ay 588 uh, sorry, 5,000 1,888 beneficiaries. No? So yun pa ay uh, dinilivered for do door to door through our schools, so our, our elementary schools. So nabigyan po natin sila ng pagkakataon na magkumain uh, ng mga masusustansang uh, uh, pagkain in the comfort of their homes. Ano po? Tapos nandyan din po yung susunod natin na slide, yung ating ARH. Sa ARH po, binigyan po natin ng pagkakataon ng ating mga secondary school learners, no? Naka makapag-interact. May mga sessions po dyan with regards po sa ating reproduct adult adolescent reproductive health. Nagkaroon po 
kaya ng series ng webinar, no? So ang umaten po dyan ay eh, ang ating mga secondary students, secondary school students, eh, no? So after nyan, ganun din po ang ating uh, youth formation, uh, depend tayo, youth formation, nagkaroon po din sila ng mga series of webinars. No? Uh, ito po yung sa Barkada Contra Droga. So kalimitan, tama ba pa uh, Alex, ang mga umaten dyan, yung mga student leaders. So nagkaroon din sila ng interaction. Nagkaroon sila ng interaction. Um tuloy-tuloy, tuloy-tuloy ang learning ng ating mga mga estudyante, no? Be it uh, elementary or secondary students, nagkakaroon po tayo ng interaction through webinars, hindi po yan matatapos. At ginagawa po ng lahat ng Department of Education na ma-educate po lahat sila, maging interactive ang ating uh, learning sa ating mga bahay, ano? Tapos po sa ating isa, uh, isa pa rin po sa flagship program natin yung School Mental Health and we are fortunate ng ating mga DRRM coordinators ay nagpo-provide po ng psychological first aid sa ating mga learners. So, so kailangan, kailangan po yan ng mga learners no, para ma-assess yung ating mga uh, mental status kasi siyempre sabi nga ng mga millennials ngayon nakakabur yung nasa bahay. So ginagawan po natin ng paraan yan ano? Uh, to talk to them, to talk to our learners through our psychological first aid para ma-assess po natin kung ano na po talaga ang status ng ating mga learners. And then, um, we are um, preparing, next slide sir, we are preparing uh, for a face-to-face -face kung sakaling mangyayari, nandyan po ang ating uh, wash, sanitation and hygiene or yung uh, winds, Ah, uh, nagche-check po tayo ng ating mga kailangan kasi sa ngayon, 'di ba? Isa sa mga important na component natin is yung hand washing facility. So we are making sure na yung mga gagamitin po ng ating mga kabataan in terms of protection from uh, for uh, from COVID-19 eh nandiyan pa rin. So tinitingnan po natin yung functionality ng mga hand washing facility na pwede po natin gamitin kung sakali po na magkakaroon tayo ng limited na face to face. Okay. So ang ano po um sa akibat po ng ating winds in school ay yung pong ating deworming no nabanggit po yan kanina sa atin po sa atin pong uh, uh, division nagkaroon po tayo ng total na 14,506 learners na deworm. Ito po ay sa pakikipagtulungan ng at, sa ating CHO Uh, sila po ang nagdeworm kasi po ang ating since hindi po makalabas ang ating mga kabataan ang nagdeworm po. ay ang ating mga um, CHO. So community-based po ang deworming na nangyari sa atin last January. Ano po? So ang last po natin na, na provision ng ating services is yung medical, dental, and nursing services. Unfortunately, hindi po tayo nakapag-deliver ng uh, dental services. Pero po ang ating school health and nutrition uh, unit ay nagkaroon po ng okay ka sa DepEd online, kamusta online kamustahan and health education. Online consultation din po ito. So binigyan po natin ng pagkakataon ang ating mga learners, ang ating mga parents, ang ating mga personnel na magtanong ukol sa kanilang mga kalusugan. Nagkaroon din po tayo ng health education with regards po sa ating COVID-19. Kung bakit po uh, COVID-19 disease, kung bakit po hindi tayo pwedeng lumabas, ano mga dapat natin gawin, at saka mga dapat po natin iwasan. No po? Tapos po, meron po tayo yung COVID-19 ARD Health Situation Report. Ang ating pong mga kaguruan through our clinic teachers ay nagkakaroon po ng weekly assessment sa kanilang mga estudyante kung ano na po ba talaga ang kalagayan ng kanilang mga kalusugan. So yun po yung inire-report sa akin at inire-report po natin sa region. May mga pagkakataon po ng ating mga teachers ay nagbibigay po sa akin ng online consultation. So may inire-refer po sila sa akin ng mga estudyante. Ang kagandahan naman po ng report na iyon, eh, nakita po natin ang ating mga estudyante ay healthy. No po? So walang masyadong nagkakasakit, wala po silang masyadong re referral, which is a good sign. Ano po? Though may mga, uh, may mga learners po tayo, as of now, we have 45 confirmed na recovered cases ng ating mga estudyante which is mo, uh, more of ano po siya, uh, exposure to relatives. So, 
So, medyo yun lang po ang downside na nakakalungkot sa parte natin dito sa ano. Pero kal- lahat po sila ay recovered na. So, that's a good sign. Ano po? So, the overall po lahat po ng ating mga um programa sa OKD ay o oh, okay sa Oakland kalusugan sa de- sa DepEd ay na ipo-provide po natin sa ating mga learners. We extend our he- our help medically uh, remotely as possible, no, sa ating mga kabataan para po magkaroon tayo ng more of interaction, no. Kasama po 'yan sa psychological first aid natin. Ang makita po natin at maalalayan po ang ating mga kabataan Kaya po naglungsad tayo ng okay ka sa DepEd online uh, kamustahan, online consultation and health education. So with that, I'm leaving you. So ganun lang po kabilis. Ano po? Uh, I'll be leaving you with a quote. Children are great imitators, so give them something great to imitate. Paulit-ulit, Anli, si Dr. Alcubert. Ngayon po ay hindi pa po tapos ang COVID-19. So ang ating mga kabataan ay na, kailangan po manatili pa rin sa bahay, no? We, um, gawin gawin uh, gawin na to ng uh, gawin ang pagka, panahon na ito to love one another, no? So si Mami, bantayan pa din. <laughs> sa lalabas, sa mga lalabas, o oh, 'di ba? Bida, wear face mask, face shield. <laughs> Paulit-ulit. Wear face mask, face shield. Ganun kasi hindi pa rin po tapos ang COVID. Hindi pa rin po tapos ang laban natin sa COVID. At yun po ang pinaka huling mensahe ko na lang po siguro. Ano? Uh, so stay safe and God bless. Thank you po. Ayan naman. Thank you very much, Doktora Alcover, our very own medical officer. Ano, masasabi natin, attorney. <laughs> Thank you, Doktora. Talagang active na active ang ating medical and dental unit sa ating division. At hindi talaga sila tumigil, ano, attorney, habang Uh-oh. pandemic. Yung pinaka-love ko doon, yung online kamustahan. Kaya nga, ano, uh, hindi kumpleto yung araw pagka hindi nangangamusta si doktora. Itama siya dyan. <laughs> okay. So, attorney, uh, nandito na tayo sa part ng reporting. Ano? So, again, let us recognize once again our uh, reporters for this summit, ano, sa activity natin ito. Starting off, attorney. Starting with a police senior master surgeon, Ma'am Rodora L. Manai. And um, from CSWDO, Ma'am Vicky. And our very own Dr. Marian Alcover. So, Thank salamat you. po sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe our MC will be awarding them with their uh, certificate. Yeah. Okay, I need to hear the cheer. Sorry, let's have the cheer to all our speakers. Ayan. So we would like to give certificate of recognition to all our partners who provided us with all information. So while, while I'm waiting for the certificate, basahin ko muna yung ilang messages no? from our Facebook Live where we have like 233 and there were like 23 shares no? from different groups. May nagsabi po rito from uh, while I'm waiting for the certificate, may mga messages dito sinasabi nila na uh, from Ribelin Cabral, thank you for the very informative discussion. God bless you all and always keep safe uh, watching from Bagumbayan Elementary School. Si Ma'am Avelina Sode said, maraming maraming salamat daw po dun sa mga initiative ng uh, SDO Tanawan in partnership with all uh, the NGOs and the, from various spheres. Ano? So I saw the certificate already, sir. Sir Marlon, let's have the certificate so I can read them. Uh, the citation. Uh, I'm having difficulty lang po ng pagbasa. Can we show it on the screen, sir? Okay, certificate of appreciation is given and presented to the Philippine National Police Tanawan, of course, through our Master Surgeon, PNP Mamrodora Manaig, in recognition of their valuable contribution as summit partners in the City Schools Division of Tanawan in the conduct of Tanawan City Child Protection Summit for 2021, held on August 6, 2021 via Zoom and Facebook Live, Given the 6th day of August 2021, signed by SDS 
Tanawan City Rogelio F. of Polencia. Also, would like to give certificate of appreciation to. Shall we have another one from the RSW unit of the, our local government, of course, headed by our uh, RSW, Ma'am Vicky Javier. Same citation goes to the Tanawan City Social Welfare and Development and definitely, of course, na, uh, not the last. Our very own SDO Tanawan Health and Nutrition Unit represented by Dr. Marian Alcobert, the ever uh, supportive po na Dr. Marian Alcobert. Yan. Thank you very much to all of you. Maraming, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat in participating and reporting the status of the child protection policy in the city of Tanawan in relation with uh, reports coming from the uh, children, of course, learners from Tanawan City. And at this point, uh, hihinga natin ng isang reaksyon uh, mula po sa student government ng Tanawan City, no less than uh, our partner din sa uh, larangan ng mga bata. We will be asking the reaction or if there are suggestions or commendations dun sa narinig niya ng mga report. Ano? Uh, shall we welcome Alex Ikias here in the platform? Hi, Alex! Good morning. Ayan, hello po. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Magandang buhay at uh, uh, thank you po sa pag invita sa akin in this program. So magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Uh, sa sobrang dami ko pong nainig na programa, sobrang dami uh, programs na in-implement ng PNP, LSWDO at ng DepEd Medical, Medical yung sa uh, in terms of health and safety. From, uh, from Ms. Rodora, from Ms. Vicky, at kay Dr. Uh, Marian. Ayan, so sobrang thank you, thank you po sa mga sinabi nyo, sa mga in-implement ng uh, inyong ahensya in, in order for us to uh, further uh, gain access to child protection at maging mabuti ang estado ng ating child protection sa ating city. So sobrang dami po, po talagang nakuha na uh, programs, na inig na programs na hindi ko po talaga gaano na masyadong maisiksik sa utak ko kasi sobrang dami po, sobrang nakakatuwang isipin na despite our situation, despite the pandemic at despite the lockdown, ay patuloy pa rin po ang pagsuporta ng ating gobyerno, ang, ng ating LGU at ng iba't ibang sektor ng ating uh, uh, ng ating bansa sa, upang masuportahan ang kabataan. It, it is very worth high praise po talaga. You have my praise for that po. So, on my commentary po on the program, sobrang uh, a lot of aspects was addressed. So, in terms of physical and mental health programs, meron po tayo niyan sa education, discipline, financial assistance, support to those who are vulnerable sa mga PWD po natin, sa mga uh, kabataan na hindi ganun ka ganda ang kanilang sitwasyon in, uh, financially speaking. Uh, in terms, meron po tayong self-expression programs and capacity building. So it's very important po para sa paglago at sa growth ng ating kabataan ngayon. Especially sa situation po natin ngayon na hindi po tayo maka-experience ng face-to-face -face learning. So as I was listening po sa mga sinasabi ng ating mga speakers ngayon sa mga nag-report na nakaka-overwhelm po talaga yung ating programa. Sobrang nakaka napaka I am just honored to be able to hear those reports because I am speechless. I am very speechless with sa mga sa mga programang implement ng ating ahe, mga ibat ibang ahe sa sa ating lug, sa ating city, sa ating lungsod. And as I was listening to them, I was wondering unto how unto what makes the youth feel safe and to how we can further make them feel safe, how we can make us youth, kasama po ako, since kabataan pa po ako, I'm 18, and bata pa po ako, uh, how we can make each, our youth feel safe. So, sobrang laking factor po ng environment, ng surrounding, at umapaligid po sa atin. And like Miss Marian has said, Dr. Doctora po pala rather, has said, uh, uh, the youth is great imitator. So, we should... Uh, have them imitate uh, good role models. Uh, so I'm sure yung mga nagsayta po natin, yung mga 
nag-report po sa atin at yung mga tao behind those programs are very are people who are great role models for us you. And I hope na panintiliin po natin yung uh, mga programang ito, dagdagan pa po natin yung ating actions at patuloy po natin i-progress. Bagamat meron po tayong mga gaps, meron po tayong pagkukulang, ay ito po ay pwede pa po nating punan. So meron pa po tayong time, marami pa po tayong time. And I hope na may ma-realize po natin na na at i-allow po natin ng kabataan na magsalita din at mag-contribute in terms of the planning, in terms of the, the development of the programs para po uh, makuha rin po natin yung kanilang insights, para makuha rin po natin yung mga bagay na hindi naman po natin minsan na nakakaligtaan na po natin minsan. So, uh, so balik po tayo sa tanong what makes the youth feel safe. So, during this pandemic po na na-stuck po kaming kabataan sa mga aming mga tahanan. And like dun sa mga uh, it says that home become home as the, as we implement the lockdown, as we implement the pandemic, uh, the homes of our children are becomes uh, risky. Sobrang nagiging hindi po siya nagiging sanctuary to protect our children since before po the pandemic is we are are used to going to schools we are used to hanging out with our friends and now hindi po natin nagagawa so ang kaibot lang po natin gawin ngayon ay itong mga virtual sessions po sa Zoom uh, which is in mga sa things on social media uh, campaigning and all of those things so sa, while they are important, hindi po siya sapat para mapunan yung mga problema ng uh, sumasa ilalim sa child protection. So, I am sure and I am, I know naman po na meron po tayong uh, risk factors in terms of health if mag-implement po tayo ng uh, on-site programs or in terms of face-to-face -face programs. Pero hopefully po, ma magawa po natin siyang possible given the situation. Kasi, hindi po sustainable ang ganitong sitwasyon. Marami po tayong kabataan na walang access sa sa uh, digital devices, wala pong access into uh, good health health information, information for regarding health. At wala rin pong access into digital yan, digital devices, digital platforms. So I hope Ay, ayun po, narinig ko naman po na marami po tayong programa on, the, on those kinds of things. Pero sana po, ispagpatuloy pa po natin siya. I comment po the PNP, LSDWDO, at ang DepEd Medical. So, uh, I, I'm sure na as time goes on, as we progress as one, nakikita ko naman po na, nakikita naman po namin mga kabataan na, na, a very united po ang ating ahensya sa ating lungsod. And I am sure na we will be able to make the what we are always saying, no, no learners left behind, no youth left behind. I am sure na magagawa po natin siyang posible. So like the SDS, like our SDS uh, has said earlier, uh, patuloy lang po natin mahalin ang ating mga learners, ang ating kabataan, patuloy po natin Mahalin ang pag-aaral at patuloy po tayong magtulungan upang ma-push ma po natin ang right ng bawat kabataan to protection, to make decisions, to express themselves, and the right to accessible and quality education. So yun lamang po para sa aking reflection and uh, uh, reaction sa mga nasabi kanina sa report. Things of ground dami po talagang programs na implement and I commend you for continuing and na despite the pandemic ay pinagpapatuloy po ninyo na suportahan kaming mga kabataan. Yun lang po maraming salamat at sana po ay diktas po tayong lahat at masaya. Yun, yun lang po. <laughs> maraming maraming salamat Alex in behalf of uh, all the youth Tanawenyos. Ano? Salamat sa iyong uh, uh, reaction doon sa ating mga presentations. And I believe I will be putting uh, Alex's word into uh, this context. No? Napaka-seamless at napaka-holistic ano? ng naging report ng ating mga kasamahan 
na lahat ay intended para sa kabutihan ng mga bata. Ano? Sabi nga ay, people support what they help build. So, kaparte natin sila, kasama natin sila sa mga binubuo. Kaya na programa, kaya sila talaga 100 yung support na binibigay sa atin. And it shows collaboration is really alive in SDO Tanawan and that all agencies are providing safety net to all our children. Ano? And it helps us catapult into developing a holistic educational system. Kung bagay parang holistic systems thinking. Yan. Bago po tayo magtapos, basahin ko lang yung napaka, hindi ko kayang palampasin yung mga uh, messages of support ng ating mga audience through Facebook Live. Ano? Sabi ni Ma'am Anita, very heartwarming daw yung naging participation ng youth and grateful sila dun sa mga report na ginawa ng SDO. Sabi naman po ni Sir, I think it's Sir Alhubino Lavin, sabi niya, protecting our children is protecting our future. Ayan. So maraming maraming salamat doon sa ating tatlong panelists at sa ating uh, representative from the youth na si Alex. So before we end this morning's program, may ilan lamang po akong paalala para sa paghahanda natin mamayang hapon. Kung ngayong umaga ay naging, naging very exciting ang ating ginawang uh, pagre-report, pagpupulong, pagbibigay ng inspiration, this afternoon ay talaga namang napakaganda ng ating mga pag-uusapan. Uh, just to give you the topics, to reiterate you the topics mentioned by Sir Butch kanina. Ano? This afternoon ay may mga breakout sessions tayo. So meron tayong uh, apat na iba't ibang session this afternoon. At alam ko, they all, uh, our uh, t, uh, PMT rito, yung ating uh, uh, committee, already sent yung sa mga email ninyo, yung mga pinili ninyo na mga session that you would want to learn and you would want to engage. Uh, uh, this afternoon, meron tayo sa Stairway Foundation, ulitin ko lang. The session will be uh, manned by Sir Ace Deloy and Mr. J.M. Matibag. At ang topic natin dyan, sa ano ay yung sa uh, uh, child sexual abuse, ano, yung ating mga gagawin na nakahusayan kung papaano ang, ang gagawin natin ng mga programs. We also have uh, this afternoon from uh, Save the Children Philippines, si Ma'am Jerly Villanada po ang ating uh, uh, facilitator dyan and they will be talking about positive discipline. Ito, jump pack ito kasi uh, I think there were like 170 who uh, who wanted to be part of this particular endeavor. We also have from Education Network Philippines will be discussed by Ma'am Chat uh, Pinalas. Ano? So napaka-exciting din yan kasi yan ay yung kalambag. And of course, we have JCI uh, with a discussion from Attorney Anna Kirer, The Power of Confidence. Yan. So tayo ay maging confidently beautiful with the heart this afternoon. So abang-abang po tayo. Tapos uh, we would want you to join us Ang amin pong pakiusap sana, we would want you to prepare and join us 10 minutes before 1 o'clock. Ano po, para maihanda nating lahat, may prepare, at kayo din, you can have like a uh, uh, pen and paper with you para mag-jot uh, down ng ilang mga information. And we would want you to interact no, with our facilitators. Ask as much question. Uh, that you would want to ask, ano, interact with them para maging lively ang ating discussion this afternoon. Ayan. So, And don't forget, Lem, uh, don't forget na pagkatapos nila dun sa uh, interactive uh, simultaneous sessions natin, ano, uh, babalik din sila dito sa uh, platform yes. natin, ano, sa yes live stream para naman ipagpatuloy yung panunood sa iba pang activities natin. So pagkatapos nung... Uh, interactive na simultaneous session, we still have learning sessions right, right after that in the live stream in Facebook. Ano po? Yes, of course. At ngayong hapon, di ba, this afternoon, pagkatapos ng ating simultaneous session, ay makikita natin kung papaano mag interact ang ating SDS with our learners, ating uh, SDS hour with the children. Yan, exciting. Marami tayo exciting na abangan this afternoon. Okay. So right now, pwede na natin munang i-declare ng uh, lunch break and health break. Ano? At uh, sana makasama namin kayo. We will be opening the link 10 minutes before the time. So i-check nyo lang po yung mga emails ninyo because 
all of the links are there in your email. Ano po? So, kagaya ng sabi ni Sir Butch kanina, sana yung mga link hindi natin ma-share doon sa ibang mga uh, hindi naman nakapagparegister. Kasi ang fear po ng ating facilitator ay baka mamaya ay uh, uh, mag-jam yung ating uh, uh, session at baka tayo yung hindi makapasok. Ano po? So, just few reminders before we start. At uh, kagaya nga ng sinabi natin, so the, the session will run from 1 to 2.30 in the afternoon. At balik po agad tayo ng 2.30 dito sa ating platform para naman sa ating uh, implementation ng child protection and the hour of the SDS with the children. Ayan. So I think that's it for this morning and see you this afternoon with new vigor and new vibrant perspective about uh, how we will protect our children ano? in, in our community as well. So we will be declaring a break for now. So let's stay safe and healthy. Ano po? So thank you very much. Sir Marlon, captured pa rin ang, ano, ang audio. them where they left them, lead the way, show them all the beauty they possess inside, give them a sense of pride to make it easier, let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be, everybody's searching for a hero, people need Someone to look up to I never found anyone who fulfilled my needs A lonely place to be And so I learned to depend on me I decided long ago Never to work in anyone's shadows If I fail, if I succeed
close to the edge With nothing to ground me The world swirls around me I'm lost in a mist of despair I need to run to the light of the sun Feel the warmth of its rays on my face and I need to walk with my feet on the rock And my heart lifted up in His grace I will stand in the light and look to the dawn as it breaks through the night. With courage and strength, I will stand in my place with the flame of my faith burning bright. I will stand in the light, hold up the truth and stand for the right. I can reach so much higher.
just one voice, but one voice can still be heard. I have made the choice to seal my witness with my word. Changed by holy fire that has burned into my soul. Filled with a new desire that calls me now to go. I am just one voice, but one voice can carry far. Rising through the noise of a world so deaf and dark, shining bright and clear to those with eyes to see. Honest hearts will hear the truth that lives in me. One, but not alone. A thousand voices say praises at the throne of our master and our king. With one voice, one voice. I am just one voice, but a voice of light and hope. Grateful I rejoice as I share the gifts I hold. I will search with all my strength for the humble and the. Praying, they'll receive the simple truth I speak. Now one, but not alone, a thousand voices sing praises at the throne of a master. With one voice, one He was just one voice, but one voice that changed the earth, teaching love and peace to a lost and weary world. I am just one voice, but one voice that will be. I have made the choice to seal my witness with my word.
Wandering and unsure of my position Drifting to an end that I can't see Drowning in a sea of indecision As the tides of fate wash over me Desperate to land on solid ground A place where purpose and peace are found A more excellent way I'm leaving the ways of the world behind me A more excellent way I'm searching for truth and letting A more excellent way Firm on this foundation, sure and steady Now my destination is so clear Filled with new direction, I am ready To walk this road without regret and fear True to my Savior, I will stand A more excellent way Leaving it all behind me Follow what's inside me With His love to trained and more aware more aim to get me there I climb this far you raise the bar you want my heart more fierce desire to stand again 
against the wind More blazing fire When dark is closing in More love inspire Change within So there's more and more of me to give More words to learn and know More etched upon my soul Some say it doesn't matter More tried, more true Less me and much more you I stretch this tall You sound the call You want my all More fierce desire To stand against the wind More blazing fire When dark is closing in More love inspire change You're calling out to me For more strength and shoulders To face the war with sin More wise and bolder To save the souls of men A more faithful soldier to the end You want more and more of me to give More and more of me to give Every step and every breath I'll 
when my best is not enough. He reaches down and lifts me up. He is my light. He is my strength. He is the anchor of the hope that I can truly change. He magnifies. I can give with every step and every breath I'll worship Him. He is the only way, and I know He lives. Every broken heart, every fear I face, when I'm in my own gifts and the name. Every weakness and temptation, he has felt it all. He is my light. He is my strength. He is the anchor of the hope that I can truly change. He magnifies what I can give with every step and every breath I'll worship Him. He is the only way and I know He lives. I know a battle raging all across the earth fought by fearless souls who know what truth is worth the Lord is gathering an army in his name to be the witnesses who bear the gospel flame and I will be ready I will be Stand unyielding with conviction in their eyes. The Lord is harvesting the noble and the strong to be the laborers who move his work along. And I will be ready. I will be ready to listen when he whispers.
will be many. Perfectly, he knows the deepest part of me and feels every burden that I'm under. Yearning heart torn apart, fighting my fear and my weakness, putting all my fear. Out he reaches in and changes my anguish to sweetness. I stand all amazed, astounded by his grace. He rescues me each time I start to fall.
It's not in the badge that will carry his name. It's not gonna grow in just three weeks of study or magically come when I get on a plane. So today I'm becoming who I'm meant to be. The worthy, unshakable witness he needs at all times, all things, all places. I will sing and shout his praises. I will tell the whole world that I know what his grace is at all times, in all things. In all places It comes as I study the words of the prophets And think about all that those words mean for me As Abraham's son I am part of the promise that all of the earth would be blessed by his seed. I know what my Savior expects me to be, the faithful, unchangeable witness he needs at all times, all things, all places. I will sing and shout his praises. I will tell. At all times, in all things, in all places, all lives, all ears, all hearts, all faces, all rich, all poor, all life, all Destruction in disguise Opportunities to compromise To make me beautiful in their eyes But I'm not gonna buy The world's little lies Cause I define myself and find my beauty in the light he gives I'm refined by his divine intentions every day doesn't matter what the world believes or what they say that beauty means. It comes. 
comes from within I want to be beautiful to him Given me his trust, so I'll be strong enough to run from a dangerous touch. I don't need that kind of love, I don't need that crutch. He's given me his trust. I define myself and find my beauty in the light. Doesn't matter what the world believes or what they say that beauty means, it comes from within. I wanna be beautiful to him. I know how to shine. My life's not really mine. It's not about a worldly climb. It's all about him. If you 
will take this heart willful as it seems and through your mercy refine me until I'm complete though I'm weak now you can make me strong till on a Again, welcome for this afternoon session. Again, this is your third Child Protection Summit for 2021. So uh, this afternoon, we will be having breakout sessions. Just to remind all of you, number one, to all our participants to please uh, do not share the link we gave you. Ano po, kasi 90 lang po yung capacity natin for each session, okay? Uh, we thank you for registering early. So we have a lot of uh, activities in store for you. Again, for those who uh, uh, failed to tune us this uh, morning in the latter part of the morning, we have uh, five session allotted for you, two of which are from uh, Stairway Foundation with our facilitators, Sir Ace Deloy and Mr. J.M. Matibag. We also have from the Save the Children Philippines, Ms. Jolie Villaneda will be your facilitator. And for Enet Philippines, Ms. Chat Pinalas, along with the Kalambag members. We also have from JCI Tanawan attorney, Anna Kirer, with the topic, The Power of Confidence. Like what we, we told you this morning, let's interact. Magtanong po tayo. Let's interact with our uh, facilitators, ano? and we will learn a lot. So... Uh, yun po yung concern namin, 90 po yung ating capacity. So uh, sana po yung nabigyan natin ng email address because they are in your email addresses. Uh, gamitin po natin yan uh, to get inside those sessions. Ano? So wag po natin siyang i-share sa iba kasi baka uh, mag-clog yung, yung sessions and you know, we will be having difficulty. At the same time, would like to acknowledge all of our partners. Kaninang umaga, 
Uh, again, we have uh, Sarah Foundation, Save the Children, Inet, JCI, and we also have from the Philippine National Police, from uh, CSWD, and uh, we have from our own SDO Health and Nutrition Unit. This initiative from uh, the Schools Division of Tanawan City, of course, is boosted by our SDO, Rohel F. Opolensha, who is really a child advocate and uh, a brainchild project. I know itong summit na to is a brainchild project of Mr. Edgar Marshall M. Brinias, who is our child protection specialist, I know? At, uh, along with Attorney Elise uh, Pasqua Tan. So before we start and give you time for your breakaway session, breakout session, we'd like to thank yung ating mga partners and uh, audience ating live stream. Uh, thank you very much po, sabi ni Ma'am Teresa Pigar Platon, uh, along with Ma'am Lucille Taberna. She watched us and she said thank you very much for inspiring us. Yan. Sana we can hear a lot of inspiring words coming from our audience ano? as uh, an attestation that they are really tuned in and they are really watching. So uh, right now it's one o'clock. Please do check your email address, uh, email that was sent to you as for the link for each session. Ano po? So yun lamang po yung ating mga reminder. And after the session that we have, uh, from 1 to 2.30 in the afternoon, balik po agad tayo dito sa ating platform for another exciting session with uh, uh, some more activities. Ano po? So uh, I believe uh, there are a lot of people who are getting in right now. I, I'm seeing a lot of messages from our FB Live. Ano po? So thank you very much. Keep those reminders and uh, we'll hope to see you again at 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, Ms. Len, let's also try to recognize the moderators. I believe, I, sir, I recognize them already, sir. Okay, thank you. Opo, salamat po. Uh, so, a newfound, ano ha, newfound the uh, zest in attending all those sessions. Thank you.
Hello once again. Good afternoon. Ayan. We finished our first session this afternoon. Yung ating pinangako sa inyo na session coming from our partners. No? I uh, would like to thank and give special acknowledgement to the following session moderators no? for this afternoon. So we have from the Stairway Foundation, pinasasalamatan po namin yung dalawang sessions na ibinigay ng Stairway with our moderators, si Ma'am Angel Kapasha, thank you very much, along with Ms. Katrina Obligar, sila yung ating session moderators for Stairway Foundation. Uh, our uh, session moderator naman for Save the Children, Philippines, is no less than Mr. J.J. Lucero. Thank you very much po from the social mobilization. And then for JCI, nandyan po ang ating EPS for Values Education na si Sir June Robles. Sir, thank you very much. And of course, from Enet Philippines, we have Ms. Riblin Merania. So maraming maraming salamat po sa session moderators natin uh, this afternoon. I came to get inside the session for Stereo Foundation na talagang napaka-interactive nung naging session nung mga kasamahan natin. There were a lot of inputs, sharing, so nakakatuwa. And, and I, I know all of those people who get inside those sessions also felt that uh, kind of feeling that I felt when I get into some of the sessions. Ano? So thank you very much po dun sa ating mga moderator. They did a very, very good job. So, kudos po sa ating lahat. Uh, Ms. Riblin Miranya posted dito sa ating live yung ating attendance for today ng third uh, Child Protection Summit. So, if you're around, you're inside already our uh, live via uh, Facebook. Pwede nyo nang makita and you can also avail. And of course, we have the session evaluation. Yan. Napaka-importante po na you're with us and you can uh, uh, lock in and key in. Yan, it's flashing on your screen right now. Yung ating attendance and uh, ang ating evaluation. And of course, uh, you know, uh, our SDS is true to his self when he said, talagang pag ang teacher nakabakasyon, but they participated in worthy endeavors like this one, and you, you gain a lot, and these are part of the development for teachers. Ang sabi ni Sir I, uh, they will be given... Uh, service credit ano, because we're on vacation. So thank you po. It's also important that you answer the session evaluation para mag-gauge natin how we can improve our next sessions, ano, future plans and future sessions. So thank you very much. A lot are watching with us. Uh, you know, Permit me to read some of uh, uh, the comments that we have here sa ating Facebook Live at Pakiramdam ko, unti-unti na silang nagbabalikan ngayon dito sa Facebook Live. I think some sessions are wrapping up already. Okay. Watching with us is Ms. Ceslin Landicho Zabate. Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon. I hope you're enjoying the session for this afternoon. Uh, and of course, Ms. Lina Leus. Good afternoon. Watching from Bernardo Lirio Memorial Central School. Ayan. Epi Marqueses Leonor says good afternoon and watching from Maugat Elementary School. So ang dami-dami nating mga bumabate at sinasabi nila that they are joining us this afternoon. So uh, before we open, mamaya yung ating uh, exciting session uh, with uh, uh, plenary sessions on how child protection implementation in school is actually done. Uh, congressman, uh, Congresswoman rather, Maitet Colliantes gave us a message. Ano po? Ang ating Batangas 3rd District representative would like to extend her congratulations and support dito sa ginagawa ng SDO Tanawa na Child Protection Summit and all our initiative. Uh, nagpapahingi lang po ng uh, kaunting uh, uh, paumanhin ng ating butihing congresswoman kasi she is uh, attending some equally important matters kasi may mga constituents po na uh, pumunta po sa kanyang opisina at alam nyo naman po sa public service talagang 
public services, sa public trust at siyempre yung mga nangangailangan ay bibigyan din po ng pansin ng ating butihing congresswoman. But nonetheless, she is extending all the support and the congratulations, ano, congratulatory message to the team of SDO Tanawan for this successful hosting of the event. Okay. So tuloy-tuloy po tayo. I think they're coming in. Dumadami na yung uh, manonood natin sa ating live Facebook. Ayan. And we're hearing a lot of good afternoons and they're watching. Thank you for watching. Sana sa bawat session natin, part of this program, may mga key takeaways tayo. Kanina umaga, ang dami-dami nating key takeaways ano? doon sa ating discussion. So would like also to say hi to Ma'am Renelita Reanio Latido. She's also watching. Ma'am Cory, sabi nila uh, they're watching from their uh, school, I think. Yan, good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Yan. Si Ma'am Fredelita Asusena is watching from Pagaspas. A lot of people are watching. Gusto namin, aside from the greetings that you're watching, baka may mga key takeaways tayo that we would like to uh, extend our uh, uh, SDO group para dun sa ating uh, staging of this uh, Child Protection Summit. Baka may mga mensahe po tayo, of course. And questions. Baka may mga tanong tayo or point of uh, clarification that you would like to uh, to be clarified with. Ano? So we're open with all of those comments. Ano? So salamat po sa inyong panonood. Uh, we have like 345 comments now in the section. 52 shares from different groups. And they are coming right now. At yung mga heart, heart, heart. We're, we're close to 300 already. Yan. Ganito natin pinabibigyan ng halaga ang ating mga bata because we're putting a lot of initiatives for them. Okay. Thank you. Love na love ko talaga yung gay na yan, yung cheer na yan. Again, would like to thank, baka po kanina hindi narinig ng ating mga session moderators, would like to thank you, a heartful thank and congratulations to Ma'am Angel Kapasha and Ma'am Katrina Obligar for Stairway Foundation. For moderating it, of course, given by Sir Ace and Sir MJ. Uh, of course, Sir JJ Lucero, ang ating moderator for Save the Children. At I think sa Save the Children, it's Ms. Jerly Villanada who provided uh, the discussion. And for JCI, si uh, uh, EPS June Robles, ano? For, uh, I think the discussion was given by Attorney uh, Kerer. And for Init Philippines, Si Ma'am Chat Pinalas and moderated by Ms. Rablin Meranya. Thank you very much to all of you. Okay. I hope uh, nagahydrate tayo ngayon as we prep or prepare for our next session this afternoon. At uh, wag niyo po kami iwanan. Tuloy-tuloy po tayo dito sa ating uh, programa sa uh, Third Child Protection Summit. Of course, uh, the good things are yet to come. Ngayong hapon, we will be having the meet of uh, the conference or the summit by recognizing yung mga and hearing the voice of the children, recognizing the rights and hearing the voice of the children. Doon ako naintriga doon sa uh, bibigyan ng mga bata ng grade ang ating SDS sa uh, performance ng ating uh, SDO Tanawan sa mga ginawang inisyatibo for the school year 2020-2021. And I know, gustong gusto nyo ring marinig yung grade na ibibigay ng mga bata. And of course, it is uh, a crude and authentic interaction that our SDS will be doing along with the, the kids. Ano? Ang mga bata natin uh, is represented by, uh, I think, the members of uh, the SSG uh, elected ano, by, the, by, uh, by their uh, peers representing uh, their group. Ayan. So right now, we're, we're gaining a lot of uh, uh, 
audience from the live feed. Ayan. Yes, Ma'am Anita Guarin, babalik na po tayo sa ating uh, live stream para sa pagpapatuloy po ng ating uh, programa. Okay. Let's go back. Ayan, may sinabi pa si Ma'am Anita Guarin. Napaka, ano sabi niya? Ganito, I'll be reading her, her message. Sir Ace is so awesome. Awesome ka daw, Sir Ace. Awesome. He's an awesome speaker. Well explained the ways on handling disclosure. Thank you po sa napakaganda niyong feedback, Ma'am Anita. Sana yung iba nating kasamahan will also be giving feedback. Ano? Ayan, yung mga nag-attend for Save the Children, for JCI, and for Inet Philippines. We would like to hear your comments, uh, how you have uh, participated in all of those sessions. Ano? So thank you very much. So right now, we're still waiting for some more participants to get in. Again, we're thanking all our partners. Hindi po sapat ang aming uh, mga pagpapasalamat at sana this will not be the last. I, I believe this will be an, an opening for all of us you know, to, to uh, uh, progress some more with uh, joint programs. You know? para paluguin at hasain ang mga guro at ang mga bata din natin. Ayan. Thank you. So si Ma'am Lorna Villanueva Matieso is also saying uh, good afternoon to all of us, even Ma'am Eva M. Makasait from Trapiche. Ang dami na nanonood sa atin from various schools. Would also like to thank all the parents who joined us. Uh, this afternoon, along with uh, uh, other public servants from the uh, local government of uh, Tanawan, sa ating Tanawan City. Thank you very much for all the support na binibigay ninyo sa ating Schools Division Office. Lalo sa mga programa na may kinalaman sa child protection, may kinalaman sa uh, how we will be educating the children. Yan. So again, dun sa mga bagong dating nating mga kasamahan, uh, siguro baka hindi pa ninyo nakikita yung post for attendance. We have the attendance link right now posted in our uh, chat along with the evaluation. Okay. So tingnan lang natin if there are new messages and if there are not, then we can proceed to our next uh, topic for this afternoon. Yeah. I think we're all set. I know I think we're all set. Yeah. Again, good afternoon to all of you. Ayan. We will be having the next part of the program for this afternoon. Ito ay uh, panghuli na pero uh, mabibigat at magagandang mga discussions, ano? At may kinalaman on how we implement child protection in schools. Kaya nga sabi kanina sa discussion ni Sir Ace, uh, saan marami yung marami na nag-aangat uh, uh, o nag-i-interact uh, sa mga bata, di ba, sa, sa paaralan. So, uh, it's, it's uh, but natural that we have to look into all the, all the possibilities on how to protect children. At ang ating discussion ngayong hapong ito, is uh, a plenary session on child protection implementations in school. And to have this afternoon session ay uh, ang dalawang batikang-batikan sa child protection, hindi na iba sa atin. They have been with us this morning uh, doon sa session natin on the reports. Ano? Uh, let's welcome in the platform again we have attorney Elise Pasquatan and of course, Sir Butch Brinias for uh, plenary sessions on the implementation of child protection in schools. Thank you very much, Pa. Hi, good afternoon once again to everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Lelen, for opening up at ang dami na palang nagme-message sa ating live stream. Ano? Uh, kamusta, attorney? Hi, Sir Butch. Good afternoon. Opo, so medyo marami na yung ano yung nagko-comment ano from from the morning sa session up to this point and hopefully ano na sana naka 
balik na rin from the different uh, rooms yung ating mga participants. Ano? Once again, kudos to our partners, JCI uh, Laubini Tanawan, uh, Save the Children Philippines uh, by Major- Ma'am Jordi uh, Villanada, uh, Sir Ace and uh, Sir JM uh, of uh, Stairway Foundation Incorporated, and of course, ang uh, Inet Philippines ano po, uh, through Ma'am Chat. Po. At ang mga naging moderators natin kanina, salamat ng marami sa inyo. Ma'am Angel Capasha, uh, Ma'am uh, Katrina Obligar, uh, Ms. Riblin uh, Miranya, and of course Sir JJ Lucero. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Ano, attorney, ready na ba tayo sa session natin ngayong hapon? Ready na, Sir Butch. Excited na ako sa mga... Uh, tutuklasin natin iba't ibang circumstances or situation na alamin natin for this afternoon. So mas maganda siguro ano attorney na uh, yung mga cases or yung mga dat- gustong i-clarify ng mga taga schools natin at taga communities natin sa kanila mismo manggaling ano. So we have different people uh, represented here in Zoom to ask us uh, different scenarios and how do we do child protection and what are the legal first and foremost what are the legal basis that they have to consider so yun yung una and then ano yung mga pwedeng best practices na gawin nila sa paaralan nila or sa community nila para ma-implement talaga na maayos yung child protection so uh, attorney kung ready ka na ready na rin naman ako tawagin na natin yung unang uh, magtatanong sa atin uh, representing the uh, teachers of uh, Tanawan City ano ang president no less than the, uh, the president of the teachers association we have Sir Vince Ambalong here with us in Zoom to ask the first uh, question pero yan papasukin muna natin si Sir Vince Sir Vince kamusta ka Hello good afternoon po Sir mabuti naman po Kamusta po, po sa <laughs> Kamusta yes, Sir Vince ang uh, association ano na yung mga na-accomplish ng mga ng ating association so far? Uh, yung association po natin ngayon, sir, is doing good. That is, part of this pandemic, we were able to deliver the assistance and support to our fellow teachers in the division. And with regards po sa accomplishment naman, uh, I am proud to say that the finalization of the CBL or the Constitution and Bylaws of the associations, yun po talaga yung ano na po doon, sir. Kasi it took five years since the crafting of the CBL and now it is a step away para ma full implement siya before the school year. Yun po yeah. sir. Oo. Kasama niya yata si Attorney Elise diyan ano, nag-consult. Yes po sir. <laughs> so, si Attorney Elise po yung ano namin sir, nag advice po with with regards po sa legality and sa mga technicality po sa constitution and bylaws. Okay. So sige sir, without further ado, uh, ayoko nang pahabain pa yung ano natin. Sige sir, uh, you may okay, ask sir. the question right now. Sige po. So it is really challenging doing the modular modality with learners during this new normal. For example, a teacher lost your cool to a learner because he is not submitting tasks on time. During online class, he does not cooperate and perform. What if the teacher scolded the learner during online class and made him as an example of what students should not be. Actually, uh, this will surely test our patience as a teacher. Can you suggest ways on how to deal with it? Thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you, Sir Vince. Ayan, maganda yung tanong ni Sir Vince, ano, Sir Butch, kasi very timely dahil tayo ay modular. We are on pandemic. Kaya gumagamit tayo ng mga means para still maging continuous yung ating education, pagpo-provide ng education sa ating mga learners. So Sir Butch, ano, mauna muna ako sa legal perspective? Yeah, by all means, uh, attorney, go ahead po. Ayan. So, orient po lang din po yung ating mga nanonood at mga nakikinig. So, um, may mga magtatanong po tayo from different uh, partners, may parents, may teachers, may mga uh, kasamahan natin na magtatanong ng situation, common situations na alam namin na makakatulong on how to handle um, circumstances. Ano po? So I will be tackling about the legal um, means or the legal perspective in a legal way. 
So kung ano po yung pwedeng gawin natin as teachers, as parents, kung ano yung dapat natin expect sa Department of Education. And Sir Butch, as the Child Protection Specialist, will be discussing on the child care perspective naman. So lagi po kaming ganyan. We are a very solid tandem pagdating sa pag-handle ng mga different circumstances when it comes to child care and child rights. Ano, so maganda yung situation na ibinigay sa atin ni Sir Vince kasi nga napapanahon siya. So disclaimer lang po, um, madami pa tayong maririnig ng mga cases or situations First and foremost, yung answers po namin will be depending on the given facts. Okay? So, kung meron po kayong, bakit dati ganon? Bakit dati iba yung approach? Kasi the answers will vary depending on the totality of the circumstances and the facts of the case. So, hindi po natin pwedeng i-compare kung paano natin um, in-intervene itong situation na ito doon sa mga naon na nating mga ginawa na intervention or implementation. Next is, this is purely according to the depth and rules, laws, and regulations. Ano po? So, may mga pahapil po akong i-discuss about criminal law, pwede ding civil, pero we will most likely discuss the administrative phase of this um, administrative grounds or administrative offenses. And uh, sunod na disclaimer, hindi po tayo laging anti-teachers. Ano po? We are uh, balancing the situation kasi po, Lagi nating sinasabi the child protection policy is also for the protection of the teachers. Ano po? And syempre para um, mabigyan natin ng karampatang protection ng ating mga kabataan at ng ating mga learners. And with that, sasagutin na po natin yung ating um, situation na binigay ni Sir Vince. Ano po? So dun po sa ating situation, number one we have to consider is pasok ba siya sa Deped Order number 40 Series 2012? Kasi po ang pinasasakupan ng ating Deped Child Protection Policy is teacher and child as defined in the DO 40 Series 2012. So ano po ba yung definition ng child sa Deped Order number 40 Series 2012? So a child is 18 years old or less than 18 or 18 years old or more with, who is unable to take care of themselves or kung more than 18 years old na naka-enroll pa rin sa ating uh, school. So kung students or learners talagang uh, regardless of the age, siya ay under ng definition ng child. So dun po sa ating situation given by servants, ano po? So pinahiya yung bata, may minura, Sabihin na natin, minura in front of the class, online class, at ginawang um, katawa-tawa, parang ganyan. Ginawang example kung ano yung dapat hindi gayanin ng mga kaklase niya or ng kapwa niya, estudyante. So number one, this is a clear case or situation of humiliation and intimidation. Ano po? Remember, as defined in DO40 Series 2012, hindi lang po physical abuse ang pwede natin i-inflict pagdating sa definition ng child abuse regarding DO40 Series 2012. Ano po, we have verbal abuse, we have psychological abuse. And um, in the number three definition of child abuse in DO40, any act by deeds or words which debases, degrades, or demeans the intrinsic worth and dignity of a child as a human being is considered child abuse. Ano po. So, medyo test po talaga ang patients nating mga guro ngayong pandemic kasi syempre sa online, kung ano man ang sabihin mo, syempre kahit face-to-face -face naman, kung ano man ang sabihin mo sa mga bata, um, ia-adapt nila yan. Parang whatever you say will have an effect on them. It's either you will encourage them to be better or you will, um, the words you will speak to them will degrade their personality. Ano po. At dito po sa situation na binigay ni Sir Vince, actually po, uh, this is a clear case of humiliation which will amount to child abuse ano po, under DO 40 Series 20, 2012. So ang dapat pong gawin natin is the intake sheet. Ano po. So alam na alam na natin ng mga teachers yan, ng intake sheet. Uh, you have to fill out the intake sheet sa pangunguna po ng ating guidance teacher or guidance counselor or kung wala man, CPP coordinator. 
and then the school head will endorse it to the proper disciplining authority, which is who is the regional director as the case may be. Ano po? So, tandaan din po natin that some things are not taken in a bad light as it could help a student to become better. So, sabi ko nga po, um, medyo in-exaggerate natin yung situation para makita natin na talagang ang intent ng teacher is to debase and to demean the intrinsic worth of the child. So, pag ganun po yung intent niya, uh, humiliation, pinahaya niya sa buong klase at talagang nagkaroon ng negative effect ito sa mga bata. So, it will result into a child abuse or verbal abuse or psychological abuse depending on the pieces of evidence which will be presented during the investigation and the hearing. So, yun po yung sa legal perspective when it comes to the first situation. Sir Butch, ikaw naman. Thank you very much, Atty. Napakalinaw nung uh, paglalatag talaga. Iba talaga pagka ang natatanong natin talaga ay yung expert ng matter. No? And uh, no less than attorney can really uh, shed light to that. Ano? So after that, uh, supplement naman natin kung ano yung dapat gawin ng school. So nasabi na ni attorney, doon sa exaggerated na ano nga natin, na case natin, ano? nasabi ni attorney na this is a violation. So in-advise na rin niya yung intake sheet. Ano? So, ang bilin naman natin sa mga schools, let's deal with the with the cases uh, with the high level of confidentiality. Ano po? So, yun yung una natin laging binipili. Hindi po dapat yan uh, pinag-uusapan kung saan-saan or kung sino pa yung mga tao na hindi involved. So, basically, the confidentiality matter should always be into consideration. Next, uh, nakita natin, ano, na may, sa, sinabi na ni attorney, or nakita natin dun sa case, may uh, clear na ano ng uh, what do you call this clear case of humiliation so basically uh, we have to consider interventions here and when we talk about interventions where the first thing that comes into mind at lagi nating ibinidilin sa marami natin na mga uh, kasamahan na school heads and guidance counselors or even teachers that uh, we have to consider yung psychosocial na uh, support ano yung psychological uh, first aid for that matter, or uh, any form of psycho, uh, psychosocial na support. So meaning to say, yung PFA debriefing sessions, yan ay makukuha natin ano? at dapat ibinibigay. So hindi dapat yung tingnan lang natin dito si biktima kasi online class nangyari. So titingnan natin, ako marami yung audience, marami yung nakakita. Maaaring marami yung natroma dun sa pangyayari. So iko-consider natin yung buong klase din. So the bystanders should also count in terms of providing or the provision of psychosocial services. So hindi natin dapat i-makalimutan yan. Ano? Not just the victim but also the bystanders. And also provide ano din naman, uh, support din dun sa teacher uh, para ano din tayo. Siyempre, sabi nga ni attorney, di ba? Uh, dapat equal lang yan ano? in terms of our uh, child protection policy. So si teacher dapat napoprovide din ng services. So kung kailangan niya rin ng counseling, dapat ma-provide din siya. But basically the highlight here is that we should provide uh, psycho psychological services or psychosocial services to the children, to the learners, ano? Not just to the victims, but also the bystanders. Next uh, kung wala tayo na qualified na tao na pwedeng gumawa, uh, of which in Tanawan is very, ano, uh, hindi, hindi likely na mangyari kasi lahat ng schools natin may DRRN coordinators that are capable of providing and were trained to provide PFA. So kung kahit yung muna yung PFA mauna, ano, makapag-provide na agad tayo ng psychological services. Ano po, kung kailangan talaga ng bata at uh, mataas yung level ng trauma or pangangailangan niya for psychological service, services, that is where we refer. Now, let me mention here that there is now a DO or DM55 series of 2021 which uh, allows schools to access or if not gain uh, services from our registered guidance counselors. And for Tanawan, we have two uh, guidance counselors who we can refer to. Ano? So meron na tayo ngayong in-house, nasa division na natin ngayon. So pwedeng dito lang umikot yung services, yung referral. At kung hindi naman sila available, yan, pumapasok na naman yung ating tie-up, yung ating partnership. Kanina narinig natin ano, from our uh, 
very good part partner na si Ma'am Vicky uh, uh, Javier, ang CSWD, ang yung local uh, uh, registered na mga social workers natin, ano? they are capable of providing as well. So dati nung wala pa si the uh, guidance counselor natin like si Ma'am Katrina Obligar, si Ma'am Tashiana, wala pa sila dito sa division. So lagi tayo nagre-refer noon. Pero ngayon, pwede na tayo na uh, mag-refer muna or mag-seek ng referral uh, for psychological services sa ating mga guidance counselors ano po, na in-house. Okay? Tapos, uh, next that we have to, to do here is that we should also uh, not, never forget to inform the parents and collaborate with the parents in terms of our intervention. So yun yung ating unang gagawin sa mga paaralan natin. Ano? To also seek uh, the support and the collaboration of the parents. Okay. Another is we, we should also consider the proximity of the teacher. Ano? Kasi baka mamaya, uh, yun nga, napahiya yung bata, may trauma na, minsan yun yung nakakalimutan na aspect na lagi namin big inire-remind ano? uh, in the uh, child care na perspective. Na baka yung teacher, pagka every time na nagkikita pa sila after the incident, na nare-retraumatize nari yung bata, nare-victimize yung bata kasi nakikita pa rin niya si teacher. So something that we also have to consider. Kung uh, pagkaya na, na assess ng ating mga uh, registered guidance counselor, we can also recommend na yun nga, ilipat muna or palitan muna ng, ng teacher uh, for that uh, particular class ano, para hindi na re victimize yung mga bata. We should also put that into consideration. And of course, DepEd tayo. So ang hindi natin dapat makalimutan dyan yung academic na interventions. Ano? So katulad niyan, ang case natin yung bata hindi nakakapasa hindi siya nagpe-perform. So, first and foremost, something that we have to consider in terms of our service provision. No? So, ang atin talagang servisyo bilang mga uh, kawani ng edukasyon ay mapatuto ang mga bata. So, something to uh, also for us to look into. Bakit kaya yung bata ay uh, ganyan yung, yung behavior at ganyan siya mag-perform? So, something that we also have to collaborate with uh, our guidance counselors. You know? So kung ano yung i-recommend sa atin, ganun natin din i-take yung approach and uh, uh, tutulungan natin yung bata na ma ma scaffold or matuto siya dun sa kanyang scenario and uh, maibalik yung interest niya sa pag-aaral. Ano po? And uh, proactive approach sana tayo. So hindi tayo yung laging parang kung kailan lang mangyayari tsaka lang tayo kikilo. So sana itong mga bagay na ito naka-lay down na sa ating mga policies, sa ating mga school uh, policies para alam natin yung gagawin tuwing may mangyayari. And last but not the least na kailangan-kailangan at best practice sa mga schools natin here in uh, the City Schools Division of Tanawan, the practice of positive discipline. So una muna yung komunikasyon. Diyan, diyan pumapasok yung POSDI approach ano, na hindi tayo tumitigil sa paghahanap at pag-uunawa kung bakit uh, ano yung pinanggagalingan ng behavior ng bata at uh, tsaka tayo magre-react, tsaka tayo mag implement ng tamang action. Ano? And we collaborate with children. So kanina, nag, uh, nagkaroon tayo ng session yan, ano dun sa mga gustong-gustong umaten that yung mga bago, uh, karamihan mga bago mga teachers natin na pumasok dun sa platform ng Save the Children at gustong-gusto nila matutunan ito. Don't worry, we will be having uh, another program for us to educate a lot of our educators in Tanawan on how to do uh, positive discipline. So, yun yung mga best practices natin. So, like POSD in insets, LACs, and uh, sana hindi mat matigil dun sa uh, trainings. Sana pagkakatapos ng training, meron din na uh, coaching and mentoring para dun sa mga teachers na magagaling na mag-practice ng POSD. Nag-guide nila at natutulungan nila yung iba pang mga kasamahan natin na teacher na nagsisimula pa lang mag-practice. So again, positive discipline is not something that is new. Meron na tayong mga practices niyan, but now that is uh, ano, it's called for and it's something that we are asking to be prevalent in uh, our approach to teaching. So sana ito na yung talagang gamitin ng 100% ng ating mga kasamahan sa DepEd being mandated by DO40 series of 2012. Ano po? So yun po yung ating maipapayo na mga sana ginagawa or best practices na meron na tayo dito sa Tanawan uh, in a lot of our schools. So thank you very much, Sir Vince, sa pag-ask uh, mo sa question na yan. Uh, okay lang ba tayo, Sir Vince? Nasagot ba yung question mo? 
Yes po sir, thank you so much po Sir Butch at saka si Kay Atorney Maraming maraming salamat po And thank you din kay Atorney for her uh, Enlightenment in the legal aspect Thank you Sir Bing Atorney, ready ka na ba sa pangalawa? <laughs> yes, game <laughs> Okay Sino naman so, magtata naman, ng Sir Butch? Uh, parang guidance counselor naman Yung susunod nating tatawagin Ay no no, let's move on first Doon sa ating ano Taga LGU naman So uh, pangalawa natin yung LGU natin uh, walang iba kundi ang uh, uh, may ano yung kakabiyak ng ating kapartner din dito no kasamahan natin dito si Ma'am Angel Kapasya ang kapitan po ng uh, Barangay Balele uh, walang iba kundi si Sir Jason uh, Kapasya Kap magandang magandang hapon po sa inyo Magandang hapon po magandang hapon po sa uh, inyong lahat <clears throat> Ayan Kap ano kamusta po kayo diyan sa Balele Kamusta po at kwentuhan nyo naman kami ng konti doon sa mga ginagawa nyong programa sa barangay ng Balele, lalo na tungkol doon sa mga kabataan natin. Uh, okay naman po kami dito sa Balele. Kahit po merong pandemic, patuloy pa rin po yung <clears throat> gatherings ng aming mga, mga health workers. Meron po kasi kaming records ng ating mga, lalo-lalo na sa mga bata, yung mga malnourished, yung mga... Meron po kaming programa diyan na feeding. Meron po kaming gulayan na yung kinikita o yung naaani po namin ay pinakakain po namin sa mga yan, sa mga kabataan po natin. May talaga may feeding pala sa Balele, ano? At uh, talaga maalaga si Cap sa kabataan natin diyan sa barangay. Ano po? Katulad ng marami pa nating barangay. Okay, Kap, uh, uh, palagay ko may question kayo. So, go ahead po. Uh, ang nangyayari po kasi ngayon, uh, tungkol dito sa mga, doon sa mga, ang tawag yun, less fortunate na mga kabataan, hindi sila masyadong, ano, uh, mas nakaka-focus doon sa pag-aaral nila. Like kahit may mga, ang modular natin, talagang mas natutulungan pa rin Kumbaga, ibig sabihin ko po ay uh, yung, yung focus nila yung uh, sa paghahanap buhay pa rin talaga po yung kanilang napupuntahan. At ito pa po naman ay parang uh, ay, uh, kumbaga, yung yun, uh, gano'n na lang po uh, yung child labor po yung nagiging problema po sa panahon ngayon kasi nga uh, kakapusan ng pinakikitaan o na makukuha ng pagkain itong ating mga kabataan at pamilya ngayon. Ayan. Uh, thank you, uh, Kap uh, Jason. Ano po, salamat, uh, Kap, sa question nyo. No, palalingin pa natin, attorney, yung question ni Kap. Ano? So, let's uh, go deeper. Uh, aside from child labor, dagdagan natin yung case na halimbawa, yung bata nag-disclose ano kay CAP o kaya sa mga teachers natin o sa sa iba pang ating mga kasamahan ano not just child labor but sila ay uh, inaabuso din physical or sexual uh, at nagsabi sila sa atin ano ang ating dapat gawin doon uh, attorney ayan po sige po attorney ayan so magandang hapon po CAP uh, magandang hapon sa inyo ni Ma'am Angel Ayan, so maganda din po yung question ni Cap. Ano, um, magkaroon lang ako ng konting discussion regarding child labor. Siguro yung gustong sabihin ni Cap, number one, is dahil nga um, may kakulangan sa finances, so wala ang focus or hindi priority yung education, pero nagtatrabaho yung mga kabataan natin or yung mga learners, which is a fact ngayon, ano po, sa panahon ngayon. And another one, gusto ko ding magkaroon tayo ng counting discussion when it comes to child exploitation. So doon na lang natin isingit yung uh, child labor. Kasi yung child labor, uh, it's the discretion of the parents kasi kung they will pursue, uh, they will let their child to pursue education or talagang pagtatrabahuhin nila or pag-aasikasuhin nila ng ibang bagay na pagkakakitaan. Pero uh, hindi po ito yung tinatawag natin na child exploitation. Ano po? So it is explicitly provided din sa Dep and Order 40 Series 2012 na kapag yung ating mga learners ay pinagtrabaho ni teacher 
or ni school head sa karampatang halaga, halimbawa, yung mga nababasa natin, Sir Butch, na mga Supreme Court decided cases dati na pinagbubunot ng uban, tapos sa halagang 5 pesos, diba? 10 pesos, bawat uban, or kaya pinaglilinis ng bahay ni principal sa halagang 20 pesos. So that's a clear case of child exploitation na para magkaroon ng um, additional income yung mga bata. Or kaya hindi man income, grades naman yung ipapabigay, ipapamigay ng mga uh, teachers or ng mga principal. So that's a clear case of child abuse under child exploitation. So it's a violation also of Dep Ed Order 40 Series 2012 which is which will be a ground uh, of an administrative offense under DO40 series 2012. Yung pangalawang situation naman, yung sinasabi ni Sir Butch na what if a child um uh, disclosed dun sa isang teacher na siya ay sexually abused by her parent or her brother-in-law at ikaw na teacher bilang nakahanap sa iyo ng comfort itong uh, studenting ito, nag-disclose siya sa'yo ng information, that very confidential information ay uh, binigay sa'yo. Ano. So, teacher, may sasabihin po ako sa inyo, wag niyo pong sasabihin sa iba, but I am uh, abused by my brother-in-law or by my father. Hindi ko po alam kung ano yung gagawin ko. So, as a teacher, ano po yung pwede nating approach or ano yung pwede nating gawin kapag tayo yung uh, nakarinig ng mga ganito. So, we are caught of the situation. So, unang-una, let us uh, be reminded that we are not trained to handle circumstances like this. Okay? So, hindi po tayo uh, guidance counselor, hindi po tayo from uh, CSWD na trained na mag-handle ng mga ganong situation. Bakit ko po nire-remind yun? Kasi baka po meron tayong malaman or meron tayong maitanong na hindi dapat natin maitanong. Okay? Na sa halip na makatulong tayo dun sa pinagdadaan ng traumatic situation ng bata, ay mas lalo pang mapalala or madipen yung wound na kanyang dinatala. So let's be careful and let's be mindful kung ano man po yung reaction at sasabihin natin when it comes to the handling of that situation. And number two po, um, siguro i-discuss din to further ni Sir Butch. Kasi sa legal aspect po, hindi po tayo pwedeng makialam when it comes to that. Ano po? Kasi po, we have the PNP, we have the uh, prosecutor's office with the coordination with the PNP. Kapag meron na silang police report or complaint, pwede din sa barangay, sa ating um, anti-bousy desk na tutulong sa ating mga victims na kagaya niya. Pero the first thing is uh, i-refer po natin siya sa ating mga partners sa government agency sa LGU, sa either PNP or um, CSWD because they are highly trained and they are expert to deal with such circumstances. Huwag na huwag po natin tatanungin na saan nangyari, kailan nangyari. Basta hayaan lang po natin na sige, mag-express yung bata tapos do not go into further details kasi baka may masabi tayo na hindi dapat dun sa sitwasyon ng bata. Ano po? And just uh, record the, uh, what I mean is document the situation, document the time, the date, kung kailan nagsabi sa inyo yung bata para lang for your protection also. So yun po yung sa legal um, perspective dun sa situation Para sa child care, Sir Butch? Ayan, thank you, Attorney, ano, for a uh, very meaty na, ano, na reply doon kay Cap. Ano, Cap, uh, maganda yung tanong ni Cap. Ano, pinagdagan lang natin yung senaryo para iisang tuhog na lang. Ano, kasi may mga kaakibat tayong questions pa dito. Eh. So nakakatuwa yung uh, child labor na aspect ni, ni Cap. Ano. So yun, uh, pare-parehas lang din naman natin. Tutuhug, tutuhugin na lang natin yun yan. Ano. Yung referral nga system, uh, we have partners who can aid the uh, children for that matter, whether it's uh, ano, a case of child labor. Kasi nung magkakasama pa nga kami during the time na ang USEC pa natin ay si uh, USEC Albert Muyot, ano, Attorney Albert of uh, SCP na ngayon, ano, the Save the Children Philippines. Uh, yun din yung, ano, yung isang bagay na very eager din ako na magkaroon ng response 
Pero ang sabi niya sa akin, let's be realistic. Ano? Ang hirap talaga niyan kasi ito yung malaking problema ng ng bansa natin na kailangan din talaga magtulong-tulong tayo. No? So it's not just under our jurisdiction. So basically, yan nga, katulad ng sinasabi ni attorney, here is where referral really matters. Ano po? So yun yun sa, sa child labor. When it comes to child sexual abuse, ano, the same thing din po ang magiging usapan natin dito. Ano? Uh, katulad ng sinasabi natin kanina, yung referral. Kaya ako natutuwa ako kanina dun sa mga partners natin. Ano? Like, PNPWCPD, ang uh, uh, LSWDO, that they have uh, platforms or they have hotlines and they are very much published elsewhere online or in uh, uh, conspicuous places so that a lot of people will be ano, parang informed. Lahat tayo may kaalaman kung saan tayo, kung kay nino tayo lalapit at kay nino tayo magre-report. So that's very important. Ano? Uh, ang school natin, uh, pinasimulan natin ito nung nagkaroon tayo ng uh, Child Protection Summit noong 2018, malakas na po yung practice natin ng referral system during that time. Kaya po tayo ay may reporting na ano po? So since 2016. Kaya ini-encourage po namin ang mga schools na talagang gawin natin uh, to the nitty-gritty yung ating response system na nakalagay nga dun sa ating uh, Child Protection Policy. So, Again, inuulit ko yung sinabi ni attorney, kaya po tayo kanina may topic on handling disclosure, it's that it's giving us as a non-practitioner, non-professional pagdating dun sa mga ganitong mga aspects ano, na nag-disclose sa atin yung bata ng mga child sexual abuse or physical abuse or they are uh, victims of rape, yung mga ganyan. So it takes some somebody na professional to handle those things. But yung immediate, Huwag naman natin tanggalin din ano yung yung ano kasi yung bata sa ating lumapit eh sa ating nagtitiwala. So hindi din natin pwedeng itaboy teka teka diyan ka namin dadalhin sa ano. Hindi rin pwedeng ganoon. So tama yung sinasabi ni attorney and I supplement that by saying ano nga makinig lang tayo. Ano makinig tayo and then uh, we were we, uh, we can be given a training on how to to handle disclosure uh, of which all all teachers would be uh, Uh, given a particular training on this ano kasi ito yung mga inilalatag natin sa susunod ano but we have to have that capacity so yung pakakinig malaking bagay na yon ano and then lagi nating bilin sa mga teachers do not go beyond ano kung ano yung uh, tinatawag sa atin ang atin po is to re uh, report and refer ano po hanggang doon lang po yung trabaho natin sa schools so yun nga wag tayong masyadong maging parang superhero mode agad na ang gagawin natin to the rescue tayo at tayo na yung mag-aano dun sa bata, magre-resolve ng problema ng bata. Hindi po. Gaya po na sinabi ni attorney, meron tayong mga professionals, meron tayong mga partners to do that. That's why we keep on emphasizing the importance of the referral system in our schools. Ano po, uh, hindi rin po natin yan, dinadala kung saan, ang direkta po natin contact diyan ay ang uh, WCPD or ang LSWD o natin, ang CSWD. Ano po, And uh, yan, kay Kapitan, ano, kahit may mga bausi tayo, yun din yung pupuntahan natin, yung training para sa mga bausi natin to uh, have a full capacity on this kind of ano. Kasi kahit kami teachers, lalo na yung mga laypersons natin, hindi tayo technical expert. So kailangan natin talaga na uh, meron tayong ano, uh, proper na, na response system when it comes to this. Uh, inuulit po namin, confidentiality of the case is very much important. Hindi natin yan pinag-uusapan kung saan-saan, lalo na ang pinag-uusapan natin ay bata o kaso ng bata. Ano po? Uh, tayo ay dapat din education yung number one na priority. So kung sino man itong mga batang ito, whether yung kay Cap na sinasabi na child labor or victims ng abuse or uh, whether it's physical or sexual, ang hindi po dapat makalimutan natin pag tumatak po na yung response system ay yung tinatawag nating academic or uh, educational na intervention. So i-ensure natin na si bata halimbawa mag-progress yung kaso, masampahan kung sino man yung ano yung perpetrator, yung bata kailangan ihiwala, yung bata kailangan ilayo, i-ensure dapat natin na education of that child still continues. Ano po? At yun po yung dapat nating mag maging guarantee uh, pakikipagtulungan sa ating mga Uh, partners like CSWD and WCPD. Now, there are no hard and fast rules for this. May iba't iba po tayong mga nitty-gritty pag-attend sa kasong ito, pero base lang po doon sa general na notion, yun lang po yung mga bagay na binibigay natin. 
Okay, best practices in the school, yung magkaroon ng school ng inset or lack or sa GAD nila, ang pag-usapan natin, ang mga training natin tungkol dito, yung child sexual abuse prevention, yung handling disclosure, mga gandang practices po yan. And they were, there were all, already a few schools who I can identify that already uh, uh, initiated this kind of uh, uh, practices ano po, or trainings. Uh, yung i-capacitate din natin yung CPC. Kasi ang CPC po natin o yung Child Protection Committee is composed of uh, different stakeholders. Parent representative, the LGU, our teacher representative, our uh, administrators, our children, ano, yung learners. Sila dapat nabibigyan natin ng capacity pag-handle ng mga gantong situation. Whether it's child labor or sexual abuse or uh, child abuse for that matter. Ano po? And I cannot emphasize this enough yung magkaroon tayo ng mga hotlines na nakapost, ano yung may information tayo where we're get, we're supposed to get help. Those are very important components of the response system. So informing everybody, ano the more informed people are, the better that they get to participate and uh, do matters, ano uh, effectively. So kailangan educated din yung ating mga kasamahan at yung ating mga kabataan where to get help. Ano po? So for this uh, particular Uh, case scenario na tanong ng ating pinakamamahal na kapitan ng Balele, Sir Jason, Cap Jason, I hope nasagot namin yung inyong katanungan. Ano po? Okay po. Okay na po. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Pasensya na kayo. Nasa biyahe lang po ako ngayon. Kaya ano, pero maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo, Sir Boots, at saka po kay Atorne. At napakaganda po ng inyong naging sagot sa aking katanungan. Sala saludo po kami sa inyo, Cap Jason. <laughs> Talaga nasa biyahe pa pala, Torni, ano? Oo oh, nga. Thank you, Cap, sa time. Apo. At Torni, ano? Kaya pa ba? Yes, Diretso kaya tayo. pa. <laughs> Diretso tayo. Kaya pa ng time natin, ano? So, uh -huh. we will proceed uh, to the next one, which is our uh, uh, guidance counselor naman. A registered guidance counselor to ask a question. Uh, kamustahin na po natin si... Ma'am Katrina Obligar uh, na isa sa ating mga kasama din sa CPU. Hi Ma'am Kat, kamusta Ma'am Casey? Hello uh, po Casey. Sir Butch, uh, attorney at sa lahat uh, na nandito kasama natin sa platform. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. So okay naman po for now or, or as of this moment. So ayan po katatapos na po ng isa nating session and then dito na po tayo sa ating session. Kamusta Ma'am Casey? Marami ba tayong mga bata na natulungan uh, noong mga panahon na nag-i-start tayo ng school year? Kamusta naman? Okay po. So as the start of our school year po last uh, 2020, ayan po. So nakita ko dito na medyo dumadami ang mga bata talaga na super stress. Yeah. Yung talagang stress nila is, is, is it because po gawa ng ating mga bakong platform sa educational platform especially ito po yung mga modular distance learning or the online distance learning and most of them yung mga hindi nakakapagpasa on time or hindi nakakapagpasa ng maayos sa kanilang ng kanilang mga modules or hindi nakaka-attend ng mga Google classes yan po so most of them po nare-refer rin po sa office ko and uh, my services include online counseling po talaga sa, kan sa mga batang ito. Kaya po, medyo mahirap din po. Uh, to be honest, medyo mahirap silang makuha or makausap. But we are all trying our best po para ma-reach out ko pa rin po ang mga batang nangangailangan ng tulong. Especially uh, kapag ang batang ito ay walang pang online. Na po. So yung pure modular or pure print out So, may mga chances rin po na nakakasama rin po ako sa mga home visit uh, para makausap yung bata. And of course, with proper health protocols po yun. At the same time po, kung walang-wala po talaga, through text messages po kami, it's either the parent or no backup po. So, to be honest, pagdating sa text messages, medyo mahirap mong may consider kung sino pa talaga yung kausap mo. No? But, So nakikita mo naman po yung responses ayon. So unti-unti mo naman po malalaman doon kung sino po talaga ang inyong nakakausap. And you can still validate it po. Okay. 
And Ako, thank you, Ma'am Kenzie. Is, yes po. At least ano, na, nakita natin maraming bata na tutulungan. So hindi ka lang naman nag-iisa dyan, ano, yung team natin ng PFA, ng, ng health unit, ano, kasama rin natin dyan, si the Nurse Bing, uh, at marami pa tayo, si the Nurse Jessa. Ano. So, yes. uh -oh. Ay, uh, balita ko, may tatanong ka sa amin, uh, Ma'am Casey. Oh, yes po. Since nakita po talaga namin na uh, sobra kamit na kamit ang ating online distance modality po talaga natin. Even though yung ating mga elementary students yan, meron pong mga cheesy or group chat messengers na tinatawag tayo. At dun po nagsisimula ang number one po talaga na nakikita namin mga um, uh, mga paglapag dun sa ating mga child protection which is the Let's say, the cyberbullying po na nangyayari sa mga cheesies ng ating mga kabataan. Kahit po sabihin natin na meron doong teacher na kasama. No po? So, hindi po talaga yung may iwasan. So, for example, we have this, uh, a learner is posting some inappropriate materials online. Ano po, yung messages, photos, or any link na hindi appropriate sa mga kabataan. And also, this learner na uh, nakita namin ay nagsa-cyberbully sa kanyang mga classmates during the online class. Okay. So, how are we going to respond on this situation din po? And uh, what should we do para po hindi na maulit ang mga ganitong situations for our next batch of learners? Okay, thank you, Ma'am Casey, for that wonderful question and very timely question. Ano? So, when it comes to cyberbullying, uh, pwede natin bisitahin yung provisions ng Dep Ed Order number 55, Series 2013, or the Implementing Rules and Regulation of Republic Act 10627, or the Anti-Bullying Act of 2013. Ano? So, doon nakalagay explicit definition of bullying which refers to any severe or repeated use by one or more students of a written, verbal, or electronic expression. So kasama yung cyberbullying na tinatawag natin which is your question. Cyberbullying is defined under um, DO55 as any bullying done through the use of technology or any electronic means. So the term shall also include any conduct resulting to harassment, intimidation, or humiliation through the use of other forms of technology such as texting, email, instant messaging, chatting. In your case or in your situation, chatting siya, ano, mga KC. So dun sa situation mo, uh, nagpo-post yung bata, yung ating learner ng mga inappropriate posts or nagsasend siya ng mga messages uh, regarding um, inappropriate na mga messages sa ating mga group chat. So, paano natin i-deal ito? So, pwede tayong mag-revisit ng ating um, school's child protection and anti-bullying policy as our basis kung ano yung ating gagawin when it comes to that. And first, wag natin kalimutan ang pag-fill out ng ating mahiwagang tantarara <laughs> intake sheet. Okay, so when it comes to child abuse cases and bullying as the case may be, dapat po laging documented ang ating intake sheet. Ano po? So dapat yun yung first step natin. Kasi it's for it's also for your protection na yun talaga yung nakalagay sa ating DepEd rules, laws, and regulations that we have to fill out the intake sheet. So after filling out the intake sheet, ano po? So pwede din natin uh, for the purpose of um, assessment and evaluation of the situation. Pwede tayong mag-gather ng mga screenshots ng mga kung ano yung mga pinupost ng learner na yon for us to um, appropriately and um, appropriately evaluate kung ano ba yung intervention na gagawin natin when it comes to that. So tatlo po kasi yung parties sa ating bullying. We have the bully or the bullied and or the victim and the bystander. So mamaya ko i-discuss ni Sir Butch kung ano yung uh, kailangan nating intervention sa tatlong parties na yan. Pero when it comes to legal perspective, so pagkatapos mo nating mag-fill um, out ng intake sheet, so i-discuss mamaya ni Sir Butch yung ating mga intervention, we can call the attention of the parents of the involved. Ano po? So kung meron siyang particular na learner na binubuli, 
or yung mga bystander parang feeling natin na apektuhan din, we can have a conference on a separate schedule of time and um, let the school head invite the parents, pwede ngayon, siguro online, kasi tayo ay may IETF protocol, we are adhering to that because of the pandemic. Basta ang mahalaga is yung notice natin is written notice. Ano, so might it be email, basta meron tayong evidence ng na-receive nila yung ating mga notices. Bakit po? Documentation is very important as regards um, handling cases of bullying kasi kapag po hindi natin siya na-handle ng ayos, we can be held liable for neglect of duty. Ano po? So yun po yung ating tatandaan na lahat po ng ating mga gagawin in handling bullying cases or even child abuse cases lagi natin i-consider yung syempre best interest of the child and of course protection din natin sa ating mga trabaho. So kailangan po may ebidensya tayo na ipapakita na talagang gumawa tayo ng paraan or intervention at sumunod tayo sa mga DepEd rules kung paano natin i-handle yung bullying cases. So kapag tatapos po nito, uh, aside from the child care which will be discussed by Sir Butch, magkakaroon po ng evaluation and assessment according to the policy of the school or if you do not have any policy, which is impossible because I know that all the schools in Tanawan have um, child protection or anti-bullying policy, pwede din po tayong mag-consult sa ating regional child protection policy and anti-bullying manual of our region for a caliber zone. So pagkatapos po nun, we will draft a decision, ano po yung ating school head as the head of the um, evaluation team or investigating team, and then kapag po hindi na satisfy yung um, parents sa decision ng ating school head, pwede po silang mag-file ng appeal sa division office. So yun po naman yung magiging role ng division office. That's why lagi ko pong sinasabi, every step of the way should be documented para po kapag nagkaroon ng appeal, ay ma-evaluate po natin. Hindi naman po ibig sabihin na inapil yung decision nyo ay mali yung decision nyo. Ano po, so meron lang mga clarificatory questions siguro na gustong ihayag yung ating parents when it comes to the decision. So when it comes to private school naman, baka may nakikinig sa atin na mga taga-private school, ang appeal po nila ay sa regional office because the regional office has the jurisdiction over the private schools. So yun po yung in a legal perspective ng pag-handle natin ng bullying or in the case given by Ma'am Casey, cyberbullying. So thank you. Ayan, ako, ang linaw nung pagkakabanggit ni attorney na yun na wala talagang upas. Anyway, uh, to continue yung sinasabi ni attorney, no, sa nasabi na niya yung mga first few steps na kailangan natin gawin. Ano? So again, let me emphasize in the school level, the practice of confidentiality in handling all these uh, particular cases. Okay. Uh, second, supplement ko na yung sinasabi ni attorney. Saluhin ko na yung kaninyang sinasabi niya na we have two ways of inter, uh, yung intervention programs. Dapat dalawa ang, ang uh, iisipin natin agad in the school level. Ano? So number one is the psychosocial na support, yung psychological na mga interventions natin, and two, the educational uh, interventions that we have to provide. So meaning to say, bata ba yung pinag-uusapan natin dito, may klase din tayo na, uh, na kailangang isa katuparan at uh, isa alang-alang. And of course, yung pagkakatuto din itong mga batang ito is something that we also have to consider. Kaya hindi dapat mawala yung educational na intervention. Okay? So going back, dun sa una, yung psychological na mga interventions, uh, sabi nga ni attorney, you know, tatlo yung tinitingnan natin dito. The bully, the victim, and the bystanders. So all of them should be provided kasi online siyang ginawa. So meaning to say, marami yung audience, nakikita ng audience kung ano yung nangyayari. At uh, pare-pareha sila na dapat merong gawin na pagpuproseso tungkol dun sa nangyari. So tama yung sinasabi ni attorney, you know, na sana pag tinawag natin yung mga parents na separately, so we can, we can discuss and collaborate with, the, with them in terms of the intervention. So iba yung, yung ibibigay kay victim na intervention, iba rin yung intervention na psychological para sa mga bystanders or pwede din pareho, depende dun sa level. So hindi, wala nga hard and fast rule for this one. Ano? And definitely iba rin yung intervention na program na ibibigay din naman kay uh, 
uh, perpetrator. So uh, si bully ano at yung mga victims din ano i-consider natin yung intervention programmatic po yan. Meaning to say it's procedural and hindi siya yung isang pagkausap mo tapos na hindi po dapat ganoon ano. When we talk about intervention programmatic siya kaya nga pag tinanong natin si Ma'am Casey uh, ang isang session sa kanya no ilang ano na yun ilang oras na pagminsan depende dun sa sa uh, inaattendan niya at ilan pang sessions yun napakaraming sessions no hindi yun natitigil sa isa so yun po yung gusto nating paalaala sa mga ano natin sa mga kasama natin sa schools na hindi po nangangahulugan na nakausap na natin yung mga bata o yung magulang ay intervention na siya hindi po kailangan may programa po na daanan tong mga bata to correct para dun sa perpetrator to correct yung yung kung anumang manifestation ng behavior na mali na nakikita natin sa kanya at yung mga victims naman po whether the bystander or the victim themselves would be provided with ano uh, parang din briefing so maproseso ng tama yung kanilang uh, experience and hopefully may balik yung kanilang uh, confidence ulit ano uh, for this matter Uh, another thing that we have to consider yan, so nasabi na natin yung pag-collaborate. Massage? Paano niyo nalaman ang massage? Hindi ko kayo nang anandu. Pag-mute ko muna. <laughs> okay. So basically, we have to also inform and collaborate the parents. Alam mo, Sira. Na kanina, ano? uh, nabanggit na rin ni attorney yung pagkampanya natin doon sa revision or kung may kailangan tayong idagdag sa code of conduct natin. Remember, bago tayo mag-online class, dapat nare-remind natin sila or bago tayo magsimula ng ating uh, school year ano dapat ang una nating ginagawa with our students is to foster or to create yung ating tinatawag na online agreement or class agreement ano at itong agreement na to kaya natin pino-promote sa kanila uh, which is part of positive discipline is that we get to collaborate with children sila yung nagbibigay uh, ng mga suggestion ng mga plano ng, ng mga dapat i-execute sa klase natin ano at kung nanggagaling sa kanila, ika nga, ano, uh, people support what they help build, build. Pagka sa kanila galing yan, the more na susuportahan nila yan. Ano? So, on a positive note, pag sa kanila, pagka tinanong natin sila o paano tayo magsasama-sama ng maayos dito, ano yung mga pwede nating uh, gawing agreements ano, na dapat natin salang-alang para sa maayos na pagpapa, mag, uh, para ng klase natin. So, pagka nag- natanong natin yung mga bata sa ganyan, they would be giving us uh, suggestions, uh, i-formalize natin yan at magkaroon tayo ng parang formal na agreement with students. So those are some best practices in the school so that we can uh, also hold the children accountable. Hindi lang lagi yung school. di ba? Kasi yung mga bata, dapat na-empower din natin sila. So if it's an agreement that they forge, ano, it's so, something that they also have to uh, perform. And then of course, yung ating uh, code of conduct it's something that we also have to uh, emphasize in this case another um, may i remind the schools to utilize marami na pong gumagamit nito pero sana may strengthen pa natin yung paggamit ng cyber safe manuals we have cyber safe this is a program this is a manual that we uh, i myself is part of it i was one of the writers we wrote together with sir ace as our mentor Uh, from Stairway Foundation and UNICEF together with DepEd ano, para i-create itong mga manuals na to para yung mga teachers natin at yung mga magulang natin ma-provide ng education papano i-handle yung proper na education ng online safety sa mga bata. Ano? At kasama rin po ang bullying sa mga topics na yan. And of course, let's still practice positive discipline in handling this kind of situation. So those are our suggestions best practices that we see in the schools and programs that we already have in the city schools division na hopefully magawa pa natin 100% in all of our schools. Ayan. O, so, Mama Casey, kamusta? Nasagot ba namin ni attorney ang question nyo? Yes po, sir. And sir po siyang attorney, thank you so much po sa inyo napakagandang sagot sa ating question. Thank you, Mama okay. Casey. Thank you, Mama Kat. Uh, so, ano, attorney? Meron pa tayong time. So, diretso na natin ano doon sa yes, Siguro panghuli na tanong na to no for uh-huh. our segment ano bago tayo pumasok doon sa segment natin na uh, pinaka-special ano. So, tatawagan ko na attorney without further ado ang isa pa natin na guidance counselor na kasama rin natin sa CPU no ang bagong bagong pasok sa sa CPU at uh, sa system natin sa response ano 
uh, walang iba kundi si Ma'am Tashiana San Jose na Registered Guidance Counselor din po siya. Ayan. Hi Ma'am Tashiana, good afternoon. Hi po sir, good afternoon po. Good afternoon po, attorney. Good afternoon ma'am. Kamusta naman kayo Ma'am Tashiana? Ano namang mga bago sa inyo? Ano yung mga nagagawa natin sa mga bata? Um, okay naman po. Kaya lang pa, uh, sa referral for counseling. Uh, usually, ang nagre-refer po is the teachers or advisors. So, since ngayong pandemic, uh, hindi naman po nakaka-interact ng mga teachers yung kanilang students. So, um, limited lang po yung kanilang uh, yung kanila pong knowledge when it comes to psychological situation po ng mga students natin. So meaning, since wala po silang idea kung ano po yung pinagdadaanan ng bata psychologically, kasi syempre more on sa academic po sila nakafocus sa mga modules. And then, um, yung mga bata po hindi po ganun ka-open para mag-share po via online or via messenger. So meaning, hindi po siya nare-refer for, for counseling. So yun po yung struggle. And then, um, Uh, binigyan ko na lang po ng instructions yung mga class advisors na sila po, sila po mismo yung makipag-coordinate sa parents para si parents po magre-refer sa kasi si parents po nakakalam kung ano real situation po ng bata. Kaya sabi ko kay advisors, makikoordinate na lang sa parents, tanongin kung uh, kumusta yung anak nila, kung meron po bang uh, behavior na kakaiba na napapansin, and then i-refer po kay advisors. Then, sa yeah, lang ako. Po, Thank you very much, Ma'am Tashiana. Marami rin pala kayong ina-attendan ngayong pandemic. Ano? Uh, sige po, may tanong po yata kayo para sa amin ni Atty. Opo, Opo sir. Ako, may question lang po. Uh, what if a junior or a senior high school develops a strong feeling in a teacher or vice versa? Or the teacher developing feelings to a student and pursue relationship po? Or uh, let's say romantic or sexual relationship po? How are we supposed to deal with them po? So yun po sir yung question ko. Thank you, Ma'am Tashana. Tony. <laughs> thank you, Ma'am Tashana. So, ang tanong ni Ma'am Tashana ay ano, nagkain laban. <laughs> Opo. <laughs> nagkain laban ang sudyante at ang teacher. Tama ba, Ma'am Tashana? Opo. Opo, Tony. So, paano po ba, meron po bang kaso ang teacher eh? kapag siya po ay nagkaroon ng romantic or sex relationship sa student po niya? Okay. So, unang-una, um, i-consider natin yung provisions ng Code of Conduct or Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. Ano? So, explicitly provided sa Article 8, Section 7 ng Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers that in a situation where mutual attraction and subsequent love develop between teachers and learners, the teacher shall exercise utmost professional discretion to avoid scandal gossip and preferential treatment of the learner. So unang-una, we have to consider that the teacher as professionals should, shall act at all times, ano po, so shall at all times be a dignified personal, personality, ano po. So at all times, a teacher shall maintain his or her integrity or dignity towards the his or her relationship sa ating mga students ano po so unang-una ang ating pong child especially yung ating mga learner is a minor ano po so tandaan natin it is not only administratively liable na magkaroon pa ng relationship lalo na ang teacher na may moral ascendancy between um her, his or her students ano po so yun yung iniiwasan natin kasi meron tayong uh, moral ascendancy when it comes to that. And syempre, pwede, pwede kasing ang isang relationship ay mag-flourish sa sexual relationship. Ano po? And kahit may consent ang isang minor, kahit may consent ang isang child, ang isang learner, at sinabi na mag-boyfriend-girlfriend kayo, ikaw na isang teacher, kahit siya ay consented sexual relationship, pwede ka pa rin maging administratively or even criminally liable under RE 7610, ang child abuse, or even anti-sexual harassment act or Republic Act 7877. Ano po? So, yun po yung mga iniiwasan natin na maging situation. 
at maging uh, administrative offense and even criminal or civil uh, liability. Because remember, as government employee, tayo pong mga public school teacher, tayo pong mga government employee, we are adhering to the threefold liability. We can be held, held liable account and accountable sa tatlong um, ground. We have administrative, we have criminal, and the civil um, liability. So sabay-sabay po pwede siyang pwede tayong makasuhan when it comes to that. So, lagi po tayong mag-adhere dun sa um, wala dapat relationship sa ating mga bata. Walang malis, di ba? Yun yung sinasabi lagi ni Sir Butch sa kanyang mga talk na we should adhere with a no-contact policy para din sa ating protection. And yun nga po, uh, tandaan natin na every relationship kasi pwede siyang mag-ripen uh, into a sexual relationship. And yun nga, kagaya ng sinasabi ko, even though the relationship or the sexual relationship is consented by a minor, still, kayo pa din ang may moral ascendancy. So, pwede pa rin kayong makasuhan when it comes to that. So, Lagi nating tandaan, according sa family code, tayo ay mga substitute parents. We are exercising under the doctrine of loco parentis. So ibig sabihin, uh, sa school premises or sa ating mga pagtrato sa ating mga estudyante, dapat tayo ay mga magulang, hindi tayo karelasyon. Ano? So tandaan natin yan when it comes to that. Kasi yun ay protection nyo din na hindi magpo-flourish into a sexual relationship and baka nga makasuhan kayo ng administrative case when it comes to situation like that. So yun, um, proper handling lang ng ating mga ganitong sitwasyon and kapag talagang nagkaroon ng complaint or allegation, huwag natin kakalimutan, syempre, ang mahiwagang intake sheet and if the a person complained of is a teaching personnel, syempre i-endorse natin siya or ang school head nagkaroon na ngayon ng authority na directly na mag-endorse uh, ng intake sheet sa ating regional director being the disciplining authority. And the rest of the provisions of De Deped Order 49 Series 2006 on how to handle administrative cases and Department of Education uh, we will follow those provisions. Magkakaroon ng investigation, magkakaroon ng formal charge, ng hearing, and yung karampatang due process naman ang isa sa, ang i-apply natin sa pag-handle ng case sa mga teachers. So, yun po ang akin sa legal perspective, Sir Butch. Ayan. Thank you, Attorney, for educating everybody once again. Ano? Kasi, uh, Mga possible na scenarios yan talaga, hindi natin may iwasan yan. Kaya importante na na-educate ulit tayo kung ano yung mga dapat natin gawin. And thank you, Ma'am Tashana, for asking this as well. Diba? So again, ang reminders naman natin sa child care na perspective, na po, ang ganda nung uh, pinag-uusapan lagi namin ni Attorney, ano? kaya nabanggit niya, yung no-contact policy is something that we always uh, try to emphasize with teachers. Ano? Yung... Uh, di ba nung face-to-face -face pa, lagi ko nang binabanggit yan sa mga trainings natin na uh, sana maiwasan natin na si teacher ay uh, parang nagsosolo sa isang room with, with a student or nagkakaroon sa kanya ng isang uh, ng, ano, super proximity, yung isang estudyante. Ano? So yung mga bagay na yun, uh, matagal na natin nire-remind sa ating mga practitioners, sa mga educators natin na iiwasan natin kasi very risky na situation na yung mga bagay na yan. Ano? So, either way, ano, whether si teacher yung mag-fall in love o yung bata ang ma-in love kasi hindi natin may iwasan din yan. Uh, uh, Attorney Orville of Cebu, who happens to be also a practicing uh, psychologist, ay uh, pinaliwanag niya yan na talagang normal na mangyayari yan lalo sa mga high school students ano, na ma-attract at magkaroon ng parang uh, uh, mataas na feelings ano, or emotions sa atin ang uh, ating mga estudyante na uh, teenager ano or teenage years ano so normal po yun kaya maganda nag-iingat talaga tayo so ngayon naman na digital yung ating approach yan nga lagi nating nire-remind na sana hindi rin tayo nakikipag messaging sa mga bata ng solo-solo uh, lang tayo no create gcs ano a group chat where you can, you want to interact and you can interact freely uh, at nakikita ng lahat ng tao doon yung ating mga interactions. Ano? Mahirap na. Uh, mas maganda na yung safe. Ano? Baka mamaya uh, 
alam niyo na ma- ma- mayroon tayong sabihin sa bata na solo tayo, gamitin yung yung mga printed na uh, yung ating mga electronic na mga messages sa kanila as evidence. So dapat 'yan talaga iniingatan natin at dapat yung mga actions na ganun maingat tayo, ano? So uh, let's better to be uh, preventive than ano than uh, reactive kumbaga, ano? So on another note, yung pagkaganoon nga na alam mo na nai-inlove yung bata sa iyo, we can have we can always re- refer the child to an expert. Ayan, katulad ni Ma'am Tashana, katulad ni Ma'am Casey kanina, yung mga registered guidance counselors natin, pwede yung kausapin at uh, pwede nilang i-divulge yung kanilang mga bagay-bagay, ano, yung mga uh, nararamdaman nila sa kanila at matutulungan sila. So, pwede tulungan din ni teacher na ipakausap dun sa mga guidance counselors natin. Itong mga bata na nagkakaroon ng parang strong, uh, romantic, na na feeling sa sa kanila bilang uh, adult or bilang teacher. So tama ang uh, and I would really agree in in uh, with attorney in saying na tayo kasi ay substitute uh, parent authority ano so lagi nating aalalahanin na tayo ay umaakto bilang magulang pa rin itong mga batang ito no. So i-guide natin sila ano at kung tayo naman yung nai-inlove na sa mga bata ay kanina nagpaliwanag ni attorney so I'm not going to go to that uh, Uh, part anymore no kasi malinaw na naipaliwanag yon so alam natin that you would commit uh, an infraction against the uh, the, the service ano so ayan uh, another na gusto kong iano natin i-emphasize natin yun nga yung counseling is uh, available so make it a point na hindi kinatatakutan yung mga guidance counselors natin <laughs> hindi po sila panakot ha hindi sila scarecrow hindi sila na office pag sila pinapupunta doon bagkos uh, Tandaan natin na dapat makita ng ating mga estudyante na serbisyo yung ipinoprovide nitong mga taong ito. Hindi sila yung mga pre-pick of discipline o yung mga ano natin ano, uh, sinaunang panahon na uh, kinatatakutan natin ng mga berdugo sa mga paaralan, ano, hindi po sila yon. So basically we can ask them services and dapat yun yung image na ma-formulate natin sa kanila. Ano? Uh, in terms of the ano, the teacher falling in love with the student. So proximity, kailangan ikat natin yun talaga. Kailangan wala nang contact dapat si teacher. Ganon din naman po, ipa-assess natin si bata na may strong feeling kay uh, teacher. Kasi hindi, hindi po pwede na parang i-withdraw natin si bata. So tandaan natin na mayroong mga psychological factors na kailangan din natin i-consider dito. Like halimbawa, talagang matindi ma- na yung kanyang... Uh, parang ano naging emotional na investment din sa teacher or uh, yung trust and confidence niya na kay teacher talaga may proximity na sila so mahirap din naman po na tanggalin baka may mangyari din yun sa bata so kailangan po talaga nating uh, katulungin dito ang technical experts natin which are the registered uh, registered guidance counselor and depende sa magiging assessment ni registered guidance counselor kung pwedeng magpatuloy na maging teacher si teacher ng bata, kung yung bata ang in love ah, doon sa, sa teacher at kung hindi naman, pwede rin na i-recommend nila yun. Ano? So, it depends on them. Kaya wala tayong hard and fast rule for this kind of uh, things. Ano? Uh, isang magandang practice na sinare sa akin, not just in Tanawan, but it also happens in uh, the SDO of uh, San Jose del Monte, Bulacan ng aking kaibigan na si Ma'am Cristina Nogoy na practitioner din ng positive discipline. Uh, she's also an EPS there. Ang sabi nila, katulad natin sa tanaw, meron din silang practice nung sinasabi kanina na teleconsultation o online kamustahan sa mga bata. So sana yun yung mangyari, ano, na maiwasan natin na uh, yung mga bata kung saan saan napunta na platform or si teacher at saka yung bata nakakapag-usap kung saan saan platform. Mas maganda yung dito, nakakamusta natin yung mga bata, nalalaman natin kung ano yung mga pinagdadaanan nila or ano yung uh, uh, state of their uh, uh, psyche for that matter ano yung mental state nila for for uh, particularly on this juncture na pandemic ano so proactive approach yung intervention programs natin sana uh, effective at nai-implement talaga at meron ano sana meron talaga ano na intervention programs tayo na naka for this kind of matters and uh, one of the intervention is to really have them referred and have the intervention programs of our uh, experts rolled out in our ano in our system as well. At yung ay, educational intervention, huwag kakalimutan. Ano? So, another nakita ko dito, isang magandang practice pa, na ginagawa rin natin sa tanawan, yung kahit na meron teacher, I, I believe, I heard this very clearly sa 
Tanawan City Integrated High School na pagka may, may online class sila, hindi isang teacher lang yung nandun sa loob ng platform. Kung halimbawa subject teacher siya, si advisor na nandun pa rin nakamonitor. So that pare-parehas kayong safe, di ba? Safe kayo kasi nagagawardyahan natin yung mga bata, jackpot ang mga bata dyan, panalong-panalo sila. And tayo, nag- nagagabayan at napoproteksyonan din natin yung bawat isa. And at the same time, di ba, pagka halimbawa sumablay yung internet connection mo, may sasalo sa iyo. So maganda yon yung parang team teaching na nasa loob tayo ng platform. So those are best practices. Ano? So again, yung cyber safe lessons, meron po yan tungkol sa grooming. Kasi syempre, baka mamaya naliligawan yung mga bata, kaya na in love, ano, uh, nasisiduce, ganyan. So Ayan, may mga may mga lessons tayo na nagbibigay ni ng mga red flags or mga indicators tungkol doon para yung mga bata may iwas natin doon sa uh, grooming na yan. Na kanina tinalakay din yan ni Sir Ace doon sa platform nila. And then campaign, campaign and campaign for our code of conduct not just for students but also for our teachers. It pays to be always reminded, it pays to be always informed kung ano yung mga dapat nating ginagawa para hindi tayo nakakalimot sa ating mga uh, duties and responsibilities and functions. So, uh, ika nga lagi nating sinasabi, no? if you protect, if you keep the children entrusted upon you safe, you are actually keeping everybody and yourself included safe. Ano? So, tatandaan po natin yan. Yan po ang mantra dapat natin in terms of uh, child protection implementation in the schools. Ano po? So, Ayan, I hope nasagot namin si Ma'am Tashana. Ma'am Tashana, okay ba? Nasagot ba namin ikaw? Yes po. Thank you very Ayan. much po. Ayan. Thank you so, po ni Attorney. Thank you din, Attorney. Nag-enjoy ako sa tandem na naman natin. <laughs> parting words, Attorney? Okay. Parting words? Ayan, so parting words. Um, wait lang, batiin ko muna yung mga lawyers ng Calabar Zone. Sir yes! Ayan, uh, yeah. <laughs> nanonood sila ngayon. Hello, Attorney Ellen and uh, uh, regional from the Regional Office Legal Unit. Attorney Ellen, Ma'am Jo, and all the lawyers from Calabar Zone, DepEd, DepEd Calabar Zone. Special mention kay Attorney Gian, Attorney Carlo, who is watching right now. At ang aking mama, oh, nanonood, Sir Butch. Oh, <laughs> Kasi ano din siya, talagang advocate din siya ng child rights. Correct. Ayan. So, parting words, lagi kong sinasabi pag nagre-lecture ako, ang Article 3 of the Civil Code of the Philippines, ignorance of the law, excuses no one from compliance therewith. So, as teachers po, kung ano man ang ating posisyon sa gobyerno, we we ought to be aware of the law the rules and the regulations para po maprotektahan din ang ating sarili and it's all right to ask kapag hindi natin alam ang gagawin meron tayong mga mas nakakaalam sila yung mga nag-aral sila yung mga eksperto sila yung mga uh, trained to handle such situations kahit ako po lagi ako nagtatanong sir but ano gagawin natin dito in a child care pers- perspective sa legal naman, ako ang tinatanong niya. Kaya, we complement each other. Everybody complements each other. Dahil hindi po natin tayong mag-isa lahat ng sitwasyon. At sa tulong po ng ating uh, pinagsama-samang kakayanan at mga credibilidad ay magagawa po natin lahat ng ating mga mikiin na maging zero case of child abuse and bullying ang ating DepEd Tanawan. Ano po? So with that, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig at magkikita-kita pa po ulit tayo mamaya. Sir Butch, thank Ayan. you. Ako, nakakatuwa naman, Atty. 100% agree with you. At uh, kaya nga lumalaki na rin yung pamilya ng Child Protection Unit natin. Ano? Hindi na tayo dadalawa. Ang dami na natin ngayon. Ano? And uh, thank these people wholeheartedly because they are taking part of our advocacies as well one day at a time. And uh, for me, Uh, last words probably for, for this session is that uh, I hope that there's a return of investment after listening to this kind of engagement for this whole day. Marami tayong napulot. Sana may return of investment. Sana may apply po natin. Ano? And uh, everything is a matter of choice. And uh, just a reminder, let us always choose 
to be the best version of ourselves every single day for the children that are entrusted upon us at sa ating mga uh, malalapit na mga bata sa ating puso, mga anak natin, mga estudyante natin. Let's always be the best version of ourselves in dealing with them. Maraming maraming salamat po sa, sa mga nakinig sa atin ngayon. Maraming maraming po salamat sa ating team. At God bless everybody. Always keep safe. Mabuhay po tayo. And uh, everybody, I love you all for joining us. Thank you very much. Ayan. Again, good afternoon and thank you sa ating attorney, si attorney Elise and of course, Sir Butch Brinyas. Sir Butch, batiin mo rin ang mama mo. She's watching right now. It's a live stream. Oh, mami, kamusta po dyan? Sa mami is uh, actually yes. saying hi to you. Uh, uh, all the way. At saka yung ano, mga, mga relatives natin from uh, the USA right now, uh, they're also watching kahit madaling araw na. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I would like to greet Shakora. She's in uh, US. Yan. At uh, bago po tayo magpatuloy sa susunod natin na segment, no, I would uh, like to, uh, to read lang yung isang uh, message ni Ma'am Marita Simiranda. Talagang nakikinig si Ma'am Tessa atin. And she said, thanks po, attorney, for your clear discussion on the concerns about relationship between teachers and learners. Yan. Salamat daw po nalinawan po ang ating principal. And there are a lot of congratulatory uh, messages here from Ma'am Irma, from Ma'am uh, Nemesha Maralit, at marami pa po sila. So thank you po for watching. No? Salamat po. So bago po tayo pumunta sa most awaited na event natin for this afternoon, uh, we'd like to uh, pave the way in listening and watching the message, of course, of our regional director. Hindi po tayo nalimutan ng ating R.D. Panchet uh, bring us. And he will be giving us, uh, delivering us a video message to all the Tanawenos, to all our students, and to all our partners. So, Sir Marlon, let's roll the video. Isang nagmamahal na araw sa inyong lahat, aking mga kababayan sa Tanawan City. Exciting po ang inyong activity because it is for the children. At hindi lang isa, pag-una, pangalawa, kung hindi third, Tanawan City Child Protection Summit. It is a very heartful activity, a very heartful event for the children. And for us, it's a big check. Diba? Kasi po, tunay naman na kahit ano na ikabubuti ng mga bata ay tunay namang nakakalugod sa ating lahat at lalo na sa ating Panginoon. We know for a fact that these children would be the next citizens of the, this country and the world. And what you're doing right now would prepare them for the life that they will have in the future. And you would also prepare them to become the best versions of themselves in the future. And in behalf of our regional director, Francis Cesar B. Bringas, we are congratulating the people behind this activity because you are exactly the right person who would take care of our children. At tunay naman sa Tanawan City, kinakalinga ang lahat ng bata. At yung pagkalinga na yon at pagmamahal na yon tunay naman po, nakakapagpangiti ng wagas na wagas. Kaya po, sa ating mga live viewers, kasi tingin ko po, live streaming po ito, sa ating mga live viewers, kayo naman po ay mag-like react, mag-heart react. At syempre po, kung hindi naman nakaka- nakakadagdag ng inyong gagawin ay mag-encode naman po tayo ng positive comments para sa activity na to, lalo na po para sa mga bata. Dahil alam natin, ang mga bata kailangan ng push mula sa ating mga mas nakakatanda. And if we will keep on believing in their dreams, I'm very sure that they will keep on holding on and fighting for their dreams as well. Sa panahon ngayon na medyo madilim dahil sa pandemya, tayo ang liwanag na magbibigay sa kanila ng, ng uh, kasiguraduhan, ng, ng kalakasan ng loob, 
at syempre po ng pagmamahal. Kailangan nila ito sa panahon ngayon. Hindi nakakalabas ang mga bata, kaya kailangan sa kanika nilang mga bahay, makita nila ang pagiging mabuting tao sa pamamagitan nating lahat. Kaya binabati ko po ulit kayong lahat at sana po, hindi lang po ito maging third, maging fourth pa, hanggang maging 100 ano na po, uh, summit na po ng Tanawan City. Dahil alam ko that this activity will definitely impact generations and upon generations of the people here in Tanawan City. Thank you sa inyong lahat. Ako po ang yung teacher Che, nagmamahal sa mga taga Tanawan City. Pumakalinga 24-7 sa lahat ng mga bata. At masaya, matalino, laging nagmamaganda at mapusong naglilingkod para sa batang kalabarzon, para sa ating bayan at para din po sa ating Panginoon. At syempre kasama po sa batang kalabarzon ang batang tagatanawan. Salamat po sa inyong lahat and God bless everyone. Medyo lang. Ah, medyo lang. Medyo, medyo lang. <laughs> How about uh, Shello Galindez? Is Shello here with us? Hi, Shello. Are you here? So included in our list for students who will be interacting with SES is uh, Marielle May Saguan. Nakita ko si Marielle kanina. She's in the platform. Say hi, Marielle. Okay. And of course, definitely, the last but not the least, yung kasama-kasama natin mula kanina pang umaga at uh, katulong natin sa mga programa, ano, si Alex Ekias. Hi, Alex. Hello Welcome. Po. Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. At dahil na-introduce ko na kayo, alam ko yung mga schools ninyo, ang school head ninyo at ang mga teachers ninyo ay proud na proud sa inyo. And we're so proud of you for coming here and interacting with us. Ayan. At nag-open na po ng CAM ang ating SDS, sir. Hi, good afternoon. Excited na excited si sir eh. <laughs> Namumutla na ako dito. <laughs> <laughs> Namumutla na daw si sir, but you look really bright and, and you know, beaming with, with happiness. Yan. So this afternoon, we will have the SDS hour at ito yung pag-uulat na tinatawag. So Alex, I will be giving you the floor, right? Opo, yes. Ayan. So take it away, Alex. Take it away, SDS Rohel. Ayan. So hello po, sir. Hello, Alex. Please be gentle, ha? Please be gentle, Alex. <laughs> I will be. I will be gentle. <laughs> so, um, so, you can focus your group. And so, two months ago po, nagkaroon po tayo ng ikamustahan. Ano po? So, sinamarize ko na lang po yung mga concerns namin na kabataan. At gumawa po ko ng presentation. So, allow me to present my presentation ngayon para i-inquire po sa inyo yung mga concerns namin. Uh, so, and so, pwede po bang mag-share sa akin ako? Yes, go ahead, Alex. And so... Sure, sure, sure. po ba? Ay, nakikita na agad yung pan. Wala nang surprise. <laughs> nakikita po ba? Hmm. Okay na. Kita na. Ayan. So, for the first concerns po in case of the youth, so, Uh, Unang-una po isang kalagayan ng student government this upcoming school year. So, uh, ngayon, nung previous session year po is sobrang nahirapan po talaga in terms of election. So, I'm sure na ngayon po, mahirapan din po. So, ano po maiging uh, situation or paano po namin ito i-implement at ano po yung maiging uh, forms of support na ginagawa or naiisip or currently ini-implement ng ating SDS po. Ito po, sir. Ayan po. Ah, ah, isa-isa muna, Alex, ano, sa, sa election, doon sa election na iniisip mo. Actually, ay ah, kuunahan natin ng COMELEC. Dapat pala inimbita natin yung COMELEC dito. <laughs> Bakit? Ah, actually, meron akong isang ah, training na ah, intended para sa inyo. Kaya lang baka hindi na umabot. Ano? Ang tawag ay kids voting. Kids voting. Uh, ito ay online, tapos pwedeng simultaneous, sabay-sabay lahat ng schools. Sabay-sabay na magbubukas yung uh, platform para sa eleksyon. Nandun na yung mga candidate, nandun na yung... Uh, kaya lang ay kulang yung panahon kasi ay mas maraming inuna. Pero baka, baka hindi nyo na abutin. Titingnan ko dun sa timeline. So yun yung isa. Uh, paraan lang sa eleksyon na sa election pero hindi yun hindi yun yung summation ng influence ng student government sa inyo kundi yung pagtatatag ng standard pag-establish ng standard sino ba yung dapat ilagay na kandidato at ano ba yung mga qualities ng kandidato na dapat maging standard ng mga estudyante anong meron sila so i-standardize natin yun ano yung mga katangian? At yun yung tatak ni DepEd Tanawan. Pag sinabing DepEd Tanawan, leader ka, anong meron ka? At kayo lang yung meron nun. But for now, uh, kailangan ng mahabang meeting dyan, Alex. At syempre, uh, kayo yung mag organize Tapos ay mag invite tayo ng mga uh, spokesperson na mas bihasa. Sabi nga ni Sir Butch kanina, yung mga talented and uh, expert diyan sa bagay na yan at uh, sa kanila tayo kukuha ng idea pero ang maganda uh, ito yung nagbigay sa atin ng option to think another way kung paano may exercise ng mga estudyante yung kanilang basic right to choose nung kanilang mga leader at ngayon napaka-influential Uh, hindi na ito pa pogian o pa pahusayan, patalinuhan hindi. Sa pagkatang pagkuhan ng impluwensya at simpatya, 
marami ng paraan nang hindi kayo nakikita. At ito yung hamon o challenge sa lahat ng ating mga student leaders, paano ang gagawin? Ano ang mga paraan na pwede nilang gamitin para maimpluensyahan ang kanilang mga kasama, mga kaklase na hindi nila nakikita for one year tapos ay ipipersuade nila o kukumbinsihin na magtiwala sa kanila. At tatanungin, syempre, ang question sa mga leader ngayon, eh, ano ba magagawa mo? Sa panahon na pare-pareho tayong estudyante, na pare-pareho tayong may restriction, ano ba ang magagawa mo? At Mamaya, Alex, bago tayo matapos, papakita ko kung ano ang kapangyarihan ng mga estudyante sa panahon ngayon. No. So for the meantime, ganun na tayo moving forward. Tanawan is a city of innovation. So anong innovation? Digitization of election. So paano? Hanapin na uh, ang mga bata ngayon, uh, mga digital natives. So ngayon pa lang naglalaro na sa isip nyo, paano gagawin yon? Baka nga pagkatapos ng ating discussion ngayon, meron ng mag-o-offer sa iyo. Paano yung automatic election at digital election? So yun, pag-iisipan ng SSG at ng mga uh, te technology savvy na mga estudyante at kung ano yung hindi kaya, so nandyan ng mga advisors at ang ating ICT para tulungan kayo. So hopefully, kailan ang eleksyon nyo? Ang alam ko po is this upcoming August po. Uh, this August uh, na po pala. August. Po. Malapit na kasi. Pero, so medyo ano, uh, by Monday part siya. Ito yun, uh, announcement na. By Monday part siya ng uh, meeting ng uh, top management ni DepEd Tanawan. At uh, yung concern ng ating uh, number one concern, ang galing. <laughs> Parang uh, nakukuha mo yung plano ko na sasabihin ko pa lang sa lunes sa ating mga top uh, officials ng uh, DepEd Tanawan, Actu actually, na-anticipate mo na, tinanong mo na agad. <laughs> Ang galing. Ibig sabihin ay advance ka mag-isip at uh, no, intuitively proactive yung iniisip mo. Maraming salamat. But for now, so, uh, okay na ba sa'yo yung sabot ko? Uh, moving to digitization, tapos Meron kayong training ang tawag kids voting. Ah, bakit? Kasi mamumuhunan tayo sa inyo. It's an investment activity. Sabi nga ni ARD Che, hindi ito isang ordinary na nagsamit tayo, kundi ano yung mga magiging programa moving forward na resulta nitong summit na ito. At una na yon. Paano natin tuturuan na maging matalinong botante ang ating mga estudyante? Kasi sooner or later, kayo na yung pipili ng mga magiging leader. At ramdam natin ngayon sa panahon ng pandemic, it takes a good it takes a one good leader to decide para malaman at habilinan kung ano ang magiging kinabukasan ng mga tao. Kaya mahalaga yung pagpili at nasa mga kamay natin 'yan. Ngayon, magiging nasa kamay na ng ating mga estudyante. In terms of numbers, 30 million kayo sa buong Pilipinas. After 5 years, butante kayo. 25% yan ng total voting populace. Ganyan kayo ka-influential. So, umpisahan na natin sa tanawan. Magiging matalino para 5 years from now, Sigurado, mahuhusay ang mga mapipili nating leader. Ayun, so thank you for that for Sir Rogelio, no? Uh, actually, uh, most sa amin na mga kabataan ngayon, ako po is uh, legible na po to, to vote. Ta si Marian po, I think pwede na rin po siyang bumoto since baby na rin po siya. So sana po is in the long run magkaroon uh, ipag magkaroon rin po tayo ng uh, program encouraging the youth. Uh, ayun, like you said po na that would teach them how to properly vote and how to to navigate themselves around the yung sa COMELEC po sa system ng COMELEC kasi po hindi po talaga siya natuturo currently sa ating education wala system. siya sa ano, tama ka wala siya sa curriculum at yun yung laman ng kids voting ah. yung electoral process ng ng COMELEC at tapos uh, actual uh, actually sayang lang sana maabutan mo siya Uh, uh, by Monday, ma malalaman namin kung ano yung date. 
kung ka- kailan siya imimit. So nakabakasyon kayo ngayon. So siguro mag mag-spend tayo ng one day, magsa-sacrifice tayo para pag-usapan yung tinatawag ko na kids voting. Ayun po. Salamat for that. So uh, ma-address na po yung aming concern on sa student government. So sunod pong concern namin is yung learning resources and support. So marami pong estudyante sa amin sa especially sa sa amin ngayon na nahihirapan po to na matisabay sa current sa new normal po. Yung iba is doesn't really have the money to buy school supplies. Miss 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 to lang papel po, hindi po siya nakakabili. So yung iba po is nagsusulat na sa scratch papers, yung may gulo, may madumi ganun. And yung iba po, wala po silang access on uh, digital devices like tablets and all that. I'm sure naman po na may programa ang ating uh, division, uh, schools divisions on to address that. Pero isa lang po sa concern na ano po ba ang situation? Uh, parang na natatandaan ko si Ian yung nagtanong sa akin yan last meeting natin. Ano? <laughs> <laughs> Kailan po ba kami mabibigyan ng tablet? Kasi yung iba nabigyan na. No? Uh, actually, humingi ako ng tulong. Uh, kasama din natin si Ma'am Rina. Ma'am Rina, paano natin sasagutin yung sa learning resources? Uh, ano ba yung nakalagay doon sa plano at ano na yung na-accomplish natin? Ma'am Rina? Yes po, sir. O, oh, yan na. Kasama, namin, kasama natin, Dri, ano, Alex. Kasi hindi ko kayang mag-isa, ha? Apo, sir. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, ah, si Ma'am, si Ma'am. Uh, uh, Sige, sir. Yung munang ating naka-plan. Uh, actually, Um, Alex, di ba meron ng tablets yung ating grade 7 to 12? Ano? Meron na silang ginagamit. Then yung grade 7, medyo kulang pero on process na. Mabibigyan na sila ng 100%. And then meron na din sila yung grade 4 to grade 6. Magkakaroon na rin. Then hindi naman problem gaano yung internet connection kasi... Uh, ongoing din ang distribution natin ng OTG USB. So doon na ilalagay yung mga learning package ano para hindi na kailangan yung internet and para hindi naghahang yung tablet ano para hindi napupuno yung tablet. So sa USB na lang ilalagay yung mga learning package. So yun yung uh, mga support na ating ibibigay. Pagdating naman doon sa mga writing materials, meron naman tayong mga partners na willing magbigay sa ating mga schools ng mga ball pens, papers na kailangan, kailangan pa rin. Siyempre kahit digitize naman tayo, magsusulat pa rin kayo. And meron pang mga surprise na ibibigay. Sir, i-reveal ko ba o kayo na? Or hindi na. Sige, sige, ikaw na. Sige. So, uh, Alex, magugulat tayo pagdating natin ng next school year. Merong surprise ang ating city government. Ano? Meron tayong dalawang bus. Yung bus, iikot sa bawat barangay. And then, doon sa bus, nahahati yun sa dalawa. Yung isa, uh, parang classroom type siya. Meron siyang malaking TV. May teacher, pero siyempre may social distancing. Only five learners ang aakit nung sa bus. Uh, meron doon teacher na magpapacilitate para sa mga activity. ano And yun ay digitized din kasi sa monitor, sa malaking TV, doon makikita yung mga activities, yung lessons. And meron pang kasama. Sabi ko, dalawa yung partition ng bus. Yung isa, ay parang 3D chatter. Gusto nyo ba yun? Ma- so mararamdaman nyo na parang nasa galaxy talaga kayo. Mafipil nyo na kayo ay nasa different planets. Then mapipil nyo rin yung parang tunay na nagkakaroon ng earthquake para malaman nyo kung ano yung dapat gawin. So meron siyang materials for disaster risk reduction and meron siya for the learning para sa inyong mga lessons. Okay ba yon, Alex? Okay na okay po. Ayun po, sir. At, at hindi lang yon. Wait, there's more. <laughs> so, uh, ngayon ay 1,000 plus na yung mga uh, videos na ginawa ng mga teacher na nagdi-discuss ng lessons. So, pagdating ng, ng opening ng klase, ko consolidate namin yon para kahit bibigay yun sa inyo 
let's say uh, ikaw Alex, anong paborito mong subject? Paboritong subject po is English. Anong pinakaayaw mo? Math. <laughs> math. Oh, kung merong sampung teacher ng math, ang DepEd Tanawan, lahat ng lessons na ginawa nila ilalagay doon. Para kung nahihirapan ka doon sa isang teacher, yung sampung teacher pwede mong i-access. Para maintindihan mo siyang mabuti, para hindi ka mahirapan. So ilalagay namin ang lahat ng learning resources na nasa inyo. Tapos yung school, yung sinasabi ni Ma'am Rina na bus, ay dadalhin namin sa inyo. Ilalapit namin. Ang school ang lalapit sa inyo. Hindi nyo kailangang pumunta sa school. So yun yung mga nakahanda ngayon. Yan yung tinatawag nating moving forward to digitization. At yung mga papel, sobra-sobra. Uh, For now ay uh, may mga darating sa mga teachers. At yung mga papel na yon pag binigay sa bata, doon na kayo magsasagot para hindi nyo nakailangan. Para at least ay mamiminimize yung requirement doon sa papel. At the same time, mamiminimize yung cost kung paano yung paggawa ng mga activity sheets, pagsasagot doon sa mga activity sheets. At meron pang darating pero siguro ay uh, hindi na namin sasabihin. Ayan na lang namin kayong ma-surprise kasi by bawat level may, may iba't ibang surprise. Para ma-excite, para lahat kayo excited sa opening ng school year. Yan, ang, so yan ang learning resources. At uh, wag namang itataba ng puso at itatangos ng ilong. Huwag niyong hahanapin ito sa iba. Dahil ang lahat ng ito sa tanawan lang meron. Wow. Uh, I-reiterate ko lang po dun sa kunyari po, magbigay ko kayo ng uh, digital, digital devices, tablets, all that stuff. What, on the occasion po na masira yung tablet, ano po yung uh, course of action ng bata? Uh, kasama uh, kasama doon sa uh, contract para doon sa procurement ng tablet yung support technical support. So pag nasira babalik lang siya, sabihin lang kay teacher tapos sabihin sa amin kukunin namin kung mapapalitan edi eh, papalitan. Kung hindi naman uh, i-repair. -re so yun yung yun yung mga ano inaayos namin yung kontrata para at least hindi niyo na siya problema. Para hindi nyo na siya iisipin. Pero kailangan pa rin ingatan. Siyempre, may mga kasunduan din na iingatan. Siyempre. At saka sa pag-aaral lang gagamitin. Ayun. So, Ayun. thank you po. Nasagot niyo po yung sa learning sa concern natin. Sa learning resources and support. Sobrang, sobrang hitik po talaga yung programa. Ayan. So, on the third concern naman po is how do establishing a supportive and accepting community in the school. So, ngayon po, pandemya, hindi po tayo nakikita-kita ng yung, yung physical po. So, iba pa yun naman po talaga pag face-to-face -face talaga. So, how do we ensure na magiging supportive at accepting at uh, heart uh, 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 at maganda yung kalalabasan ng komunidad within the school? Paano po siya mangyayay? How do we establish that? Ayan po. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, uh, actually ay ano nag nag, nag, nag ginagawa na namin na mag-link, kumonekta sa kanila. Uh, kaming dalawa ni Ma'am Rina, uh, busy kami sa pagpunta sa iba't ibang agency. Mapapansin nyo, ang partner natin ngayon nakasama natin, uh, DSWD, PNP, uh, Stairway Foundation, uh, Save the Children. Ito yung mga kasama natin na yung kung anong meron sila, dadalhin natin sa inyo. At yung community magsisimula sa pamilya. Tapos mula sa pamilya, magagawa tayo ng bubble kasi may, may restriction nga eh para maka-prevent yung pagkalat. So mula sa pamilya, sa barangay, kung anong meron dun sa barangay, dun muna iikot. Pati teachers, dun muna. Tapos kung may mga activity, Uh, magte-test tayo kaya nga merong bus yung na, na nando sa learning support. So una muna isang pamilya, dalawang pamilya yung sasakay sa bus. Habang tumatagal, parami nang parami. So kasama niyo yung mag-anak niyo, kayo lang yung manonood doon para at least alam natin kung mag, kung meron mang infection, madaling ma-trace, ano. At uh, may may ano, may connection yan doon sa gagawin natin mamaya. So tapos paano sila makaka-support? 
O na, napakinggan mo si Cap Jason kanina. So, hindi mo hindi mo napansin na ang bumubuo, ang ang grupo na nandito ngayon ay iba't iba. At bahagi ng community. Palaki ng palaki hanggang sa may pandemya, may restriction, pero hindi ka ba nagugulat na ang buong community, hindi lang ng Region 4, kundi ng buong Pilipinas, nasa DepEd Tanawan ngayon? So is, isang, isang uh, classic example yan kung paano natin dadalhin ng komunidad sa bawat mga bahay, sa bawat mga barangay para magtulong-tulong at ang importansya ng kabataan ay ibibigay kung ano yung inyong mga kailangan. So uh, mahirap kasing sabihin na sa absolute o tangible way kung paano natin pagsasama-samahin yung community. Uh, mahirap i-verbalize pero mararamdaman nyo yung, yung pagsasama-sama ng buong komunidad, pagtutulong-tulong ng buong komunidad para siguruhin na ang lahat ng mga estudyante sa uh, Division of Tanawan ay maidadalan natin sa isang magandang kinabukasan. And po, thank you. Uh, Reiterate ko lang po kasi, for the incoming students na hindi pa talaga nakakapasok sa school, hindi pa nila na-meet yung kanya mga uh, kaklase, hindi rin pa, pa rin po nila nakakasama yung mga teachers po nila. So, yung sila po is, is stuck in a box, nakastuck po sila sa kanilang bahay, and hindi, at hindi, hindi po siya nabibigyan ng opportunity to make uh, social interactions, make friends, Although meron na po silang preceding, predecessing friends from their previous schools, pero sa pupuntahan po nilang school, wala po silang masyadong makikilala since hindi po siya magkakami. So, if possible po sana, if I can recommend na magkaroon po tayo ng, magkaroon po ang division ng tanawan ng programs uh, which urge, uh, which uh, like social interactions po, between the students para po maging kahit pa paano masabi natin na nagkaroon sila ng uh, parang interaction with one another to be able to become friends. Ayun po. Kasi sa ang education ang, ang point naman po ng schooling hindi lang po sa education and it is also to socialize like nasabi po kanina. And ayun po. <laughs> uh, oh. po for my so question. since naisip mo siya that The power is in your hand. So kung gusto mo, naisip mo, gawin mo. Tapos kung gagawin mo siya, approve without thinking. Thank you po. So mas naiisip nyo kung ano yung kailangan nyo, i-propose. Tapos uh, lahat ng inyong proposal ay considered as my command. Your wish is my command. Ayun. Dahil yan ang preference nyo. <laughs> Thank you po. So para sa mga upcoming youth leaders na kasama po ngayon, alam nyo na ang gagawin ninyo. So ipropose uh -huh. lang po natin. So, so ano, thing, ang ano ko lang, request ko lang, ano Alex, kasi may timetable eh. So siguro i-gather nyo lahat ng activities para hmm. tapos per ano, kung, kung ilang activities yan, don't worry. Kasi gagawin natin siyang part ng learning experience ninyo. Tapos, uh, it's a new way of learning. ba? Diba? Kahit may restriction tayo, sa dami ng iniisip nyo, alam ko, magsasawa tayo doon sa mga gagawin at naiisip nyo. Pero, syempre, ililimit natin kung ano yung available time para sa atin. Para at least, uh, in, in terms of proposal, para ilagay nyo lang kung ano yung prioritization. Priority 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Para at least kung meron tayong aalisin dahil kulang na yung panahon, alam natin kung ano yung para sa next year at ano yung para sa within this year. Ano? Okay po. Okay. Thank you for Sige. that po. <laughs> so we'll consider that po. Um, for the fourth uh, concerns naman po is efficacy of distance learning sample uh, sa modules and this and <laughs> I, kung ano po i- Ignore nyo lang po sa face-to-face. -face. Pero yung concern lang po on distance learning, how, what are the programs or ano po yung mga ginagawa ng uh, uh, people behind the DepEd uh, Tanawan to ensure na ang gumagawa po talaga ng modules ay yung bata. 
and how can we ensure na sila po talaga ay natututo. Most of the time po kasi yung magulang na nagbumagawa. And most of the time yung bata nag nag nagkokopyahan na ni sa chat chat, chat ganun ganun. And and ayun po, ano po ba yung assurance natin na effective po talaga siya? So I'm sure, alam alam ko naman po na on the side of safety, ito po yung pinaka uh, ideal natin ngayon since may may pandemic po tayo at may virus na kumakalat sa hangin. Pero what are the things that we can do to further improve yung efficacy ng distance learning? Yun po. Ah, actually, ang tumanim sa isip ko nung tinanong, hindi ko alam kung sino yung nagtanong, si Michelle yata. Last, ano yung last meeting natin. Ang tinanong, sino po ba ang gumagawa ng module? Tapos, ba't hindi po namin maintindihan yung module? <laughs> Tapos, Uh, paano po yung ang mga magulang yung gumagawa? Nagkaroon din ako ng engagement sa ating mga magulang. Uh, kwento ko yung una. Uh, bakit gumagawa yung mga magulang? So alam mo nung after ng, ng discussion natin, tinatawag ko ang lahat ng education program supervisors, yung, yung mga division supervisors, sila yung mga curriculum expert. Tapos pinatingnan ko, ano ang dahilan? Bakit ginagawa ng magulang? So alam mo yung findings, lahat ng subject area, lahat ng subject area na binilang nila yung number of competencies, uh, lumalabas na mas marami yung number of competencies kaysa sa number of school days. So kagaya ng last 2020-2021, 213 school days. Pero yung competencies na kailangang i-develop ay... 300 and more. Isipin mo kung bawat isang subject ay merong dalawang competency na gagawing activity. Kung meron kang siyam na subject, ibig sabihin, labing walong activity yung gagawin mo. Anong sagot ng mga parents nyo? Sir, kesa naman makita namin yung anak namin na may sakit kasi hindi na natutulog, kami na lang po ang gagawa. So in a way, para akong kinurot doon. Kasi ibig sabihin, hindi sensitive si DepEd doon sa ganong sitwasyon. Kaya anong ginawa? Siguro mapapansin nyo nung second quarter, nabawasan yung activities. ba diba? Nabawasan yung activities. Tapos hanggat maaari, may family time. Para may mga activities na may family time. Tapos may mga activities na ang assessment, dalawa o tatlong subjects yung nagbibigay ng parehong assessment para hindi siya mahirapan. So, ano yon Efficacy. Natuto kami dahil dun sa inyong karanasan. Kayo may sabi nun eh. At uh, nag-isip ako ng paraan, paano ko matutuklasan? Bakit kaya ganun yung nararamdaman ng mga bata? Only to find out na yun palang most essential learning competencies ng DepEd ay more than the total number of school days. Na kahit araw-araw, kahit gano'ng kasipag yung bata, hindi niya kayang gawin yun. Kung labawat isang teacher magtuturo individually. So ang ginawa ko ay tinawag ang supervisors, nag-develop sila ng mga lessons na magkakasama sila para at least ma-minimize. Kaya nung second and third quarter, tingin ko meron, medyo naka-adjust na tayo. And hopefully this school year, Uh, ano na uh, at least meron ng mababawasan na yung mga activities na yon magiging mga meaningful activities na talaga para sa inyo tapos paano masisiguro na natuto uh, for sure na natuto bakit kasi sa ngayon ay meron nang na-develop ang ating mga supervisors na assessment tool ano yung assessment tool para malaman kung kayo ay natuto so sample sa sample ko lang sa iyo Recitation. Sa recitation, ginagamit na ngayon yung GC. So kung sino yung mga nagtan... At, at, at ang pag-grade ay yung quality ng tanong, hindi yung quality ng sagot. So halimbawa, nagta, nagtanong, pero yung, yung tanong niya ay high le, uh, low level of question. So med medyo mababa yun. Pero kung ma mahirap ang tanong, So ibig sabihin, mas malalim yung pagkatuto ng bata. So C, 
ang isang reflection doon, bago na ngayon ang paraan ng pagkatuto. The measure of learning is not about giving the right answer, but giving the high quality question that involve critical thinking para sa teacher. Instead na ang bata ang sumasagot, si teacher ngayon ang nag-iisip ng sagot. At kanino namin natutunan yon Sa inyo. Dahil kayo yung... Kaya confident kami na natuto kayo. At uh, ito, bragging. Pagyayabang. Uh, hindi hindi nyo nakikita. Pero alam nyo ba, kinumpare namin yung learning base sa grades. Yung grades nung 2018-2019, 2019-2020, at saka ngayong 2020-2021. So sa elementary ay tumaas tayo ng plus 10 ten point something percent sa junior high school and senior as junior high school ay eight uh, percent eight something percent so anong ibig sabihin yung margin of increment is a clear indication na there is learning dun sa ating mga bata dahil for now ang means to verify yung academic achievement ay yun lang academic di ba pero alam namin na yung 10% and 8% increment doon sa grade, hindi lang yun yung natutunan ninyo. Kasi mas marami pa na hindi kayang i-capture ng assessment measure na ginagamit ni DepEd. Kaya uh, ngayon, yung ating mga teachers, uh, nag nagdi-develop sila ng mga iba't ibang uri ng assessment tool na who knows, baka yun yung maging president na kung paano i-access ang mga estudyante. Hindi natin alam. Kasi wala namang nakakasiguro dahil first time na naranasan natin ito. At uh, uh, lahat tayo ay call learners. Habang kayo ay natututo, nag adjust kami rin natututo at nag adjust And uh, thank you for the opportunity na ma-engage sa ganitong sitwasyon kasi ang dami naming natututunan mula sa inyo. So, ayun. Ayun po, thank you for that po ang efficacy and this on distance learning. So, sana po is as we go on sa school year, although hindi na po ako magiging part ng ating uh, sa senior high school, sana po is maging mabuti pa rin po ang kalagayan ng kapo ko uh, tanawin. So, on the last but not the least, I uh, on the quality and accessible accessibility of education. So, paano po na ensure or paano po natin na na adjust yung mga kasi po uh, ang alam ko po is bumagsak po yung uh, numbers of learners po ang pagkakalam ko po natin on that end. And ayun po how are we uh, assessing that or how are we making education more accessible to people or to students na hindi naman ganun ka ganda yung situation nila, especially in their finances and yung mga students na nagpupukus na lang on sa kanilang pagpabuhay and how to survive day by day As dahil nga pandemya at mahirap, uh, mahirap magkayod ngayong pandemya po. So, how are we bringing quality and accessible education sa ating kap, sa amin pong kabataan? Ayun po. Uh, uh, thank you, Alex. Ang hirap ng tanong mo. <laughs> so, uh, Ma'am Rina, pakitingan nga yung enrollment natin. Uh, uh, ayaw ko kasing uh, sumagot base doon sa assumption mo na bumagsak. Pag tinignan natin sa national level, Uh, 27 million before pandemic yung enrollment. Pero ngayon ay 22 million. Tapos malaking bahagi ng nawala ay yung enrollment ng private school. Pero sa DepEd Tanawan, Ma'am Rina, paki-check ako ha. Uh, sa DepEd Tanawan, instead na bumaba, nag-increase tayo. Hindi ko lang ala, hindi ko masabi yung eksakto na increase. Yes po, sir. Uh, nag-increase. Uh, Ma'am Rina, ano po yung eksaktong data? Uh, sir, ang atin kung total enrollment is uh, for 55,055 po kasama na po yung public and private po. So from, dati ano siya? Uh, from 38,000 sir. From 38,000 to 55,000. Naging 55,000. See? 
Ah, nakita mo kung gaano ka extraordinary ang tanawan sa sa national level ay bumaba siya. From 27 million naging 22 million. Pero sa tanawan from uh, 38,000 naging 55,000 yung total enrollment. So yes. hindi bum- hindi bumaba, ano? At so, yung pagtaas, may paliwanag din doon. Kasi ay mara- may mga private school tayo na uh, hindi maganda na nagkaroon ng pagsasara. So kinapture, kinapture 'yon ng ating uh, mga public school. Tapos para masiguro na accessible, hinana pa natin yung hindi naka-enroll. Sa katunayan, Mamrina, gaano karami yung naka-enroll sa ALS? So dito po, uh, meron tayong uh, 100 um ano ba yun? Nasa 800 nine, plus na naka-enroll po sa oh, ALS. Nasa 900 na yan. Oh, Tapos po, nasa 900 na. Oh. Then meron po tayong almost 200 po sa ELSEN, doon po sa SPED natin. Tapos meron pa tayong madrasa. Yes po. Uh, 388 po yung madrasa. Oh, ayan Alex, ha? puro number, exact numbers yan. Tapos alam mo ba na yung, yung mga... Uh, student or and pupil at risk of dropping out na kadalasan nandun sa four piece yung, yung galing sa mga families ng four piece pero magugulat ka tayo sa tanaw naka kapag enroll tayo ng 5000 plus na mga four piece na mga student lahat yon nakatapos ng school year na to actually yun yung totoong measure eh, ng success yung marami yung nakatapos marami yung naka-access sa education tapos ang ang sinosolve natin ngayon sa DepEd Tanawan, wala tayong choice eh. Na restricted yung movement, restricted yung face-to-face. Tapos digital na yung means of instruction. So kung wala kang gadget, merong digital divide. So ngayon binabalansin natin siya. Lahat ay binibigyan na para at least uh, ma Totoo tayo doon sa kasabihan na education is the greatest equalizer. Wala nang nakakalamang sa DepEd Tanawan kasi kung anong meron ng isa, meron ng lahat. At tapos, uh, Alex, bilangin mo ilan ang libro mo na nasa bahay. Madami po. <laughs> so, lahat ng kailangan mo para na matuto, nasa tabi mo na. At hindi ah, lang ikaw... Hindi lang ikaw yan. <laughs> Hindi lang ikaw. Lahat ng estudyante ganyan ang sitwasyon. So, kaya ako, confident ako. Dahil lahat ng kailangan para matuto, nandun na. It's call nyo ng mga student leaders. Bakit? Yung kung gano'ng karami ang matututunan, it's your choice. Ngayon, kung ang oras ay gugugulin para sa pag-aaral, nasa iyo na lahat. Pero pag pinili mo pa rin ang magloko, kahit nasa bahay ka, eh hindi na natin problema yun. Problema nyo na yun ng mga estudyante. Bakit? Leadership is influence. Kung hindi nyo na-influensyahan yung mga kapwa nyo estudyante, may question yun doon sa ating leadership. O, eto yung sample. Alam mo ba na meron tayong school na 100% yung progression 100% ang attendance walang late simula nung magpasukan oo at yon ay alternative learning system sa jail yung mga estudyante natin na nakakulong na gustong mag-aral <laughs> pinapasok pa rin natin yung mga estudyante natin na nasa iba-ibang lugar pinupuntahan niyo ng ating mga mobile teachers pinapasok yung mga kaliblib na lugar ng tanawan para turuan sila sa pamamagitan ng alternative learning system natin. Kaya sabi mo yung tanong mo na accessible ba? Uh, confident ako si Alex na pagsasabi sa iyo na sa DepEd Tanawan, everybody who wish to finish yung kanyang basic education accessible sa DepEd Tanawan. And proof, hindi lang mga taga-tanawan Maraming bayan sa Batangas nandito sa DepEd Tanawa. Ayun, so thank you po for that sir value sa uh, into proving na may kalidad at accessible talaga ang edukasyon sa DepEd Tanawa. So, yun lang po yung concerns na na 
uh, na i-summarize ko sa ating napakahabang session sa ikamustahan kasama po kami mga SSG at SPG leaders. Masyadong na. Uh, Alex, mas sinanitize mo naman. Sinanitize <laughs> mo. Kasi si Sir Butch at saka si Attorney ay yung stress dun sa child protection. Pero merong nagsabi sa inyo na ang sungit po ng teacher namin. Ay, opo, actually, may I think may pahabol po si Mariel na tanong eh. Mariel. Oh, 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 Mariel, ikaw nga. Sige. Hello po. Ah, sige, Mariel. Hello po. Ang tanong ko po is, ano po, yung about po sa mga teachers na sometimes po is hindi po nagbibigay ng consideration sa mga students po na late po magpasa ng uh, modules kasi po, for example, um, working student po. Ganun. Uh, yun, yun. Actually, may nakausap na ako na ganun din yung sitwasyon. Isa lang ang sagot ko. Isa lang ang sagot ko. <laughs> <laughs> ang sagot ko sa kanila ay sa panahon ngayon na mahirap ang buhay natin, kung hindi ka makakatulong, huwag ka na lang sanang makapaminsala. At umiyak yung teacher kasi na-realize niya ang hirap ng pinagdadaanan natin lahat ay nag adjust Kung hindi natin matulungan ng isa't isa, eh wag na lang na, wag, wag, na, wag na lang tayong maging instrumento para mapinsala ang isa. Bakit? Kasi ang hawak nyo ay kinabukasan. Alam nyo yung ano, bibigay ko na ha para, para lalo na sa mga teachers na nakikinig ngayon. Uh, Upcat, yung uh, University of the Philippines admission test. Wala na siya, di ba? Walang admission test. Pero, ang ginamit nila para sa pag assess ay yung grades ng mga bata. Assuming na yun yung grade. Yung grade nyo ng grade 11, grade 12, paano kung mababa yung binigay na grade ng bata? Yung binigay ng teacher. So, ibig sabihin, gusto nyong pumasok sa UP, pero wala na kayong chance. Dahil na-deprive na kayo ng pagkakataon dahil dun sa grade na mababa na binigay ng teacher nyo. Isang sample yan na sana, sina, sana, sinasabi ko sa kanila. Kung hindi kayo makakatulong, wag na lang kayong makapinsala. At ganyan ka-critical yung desisyon ng teacher. Ganyan ka halaga sa akin na tama na magdesisyon ng teacher. Kaya ina-advocate, uh, mapalad ang Dependent Awan kasi nasa atin yung mga advocate ng child protection. At si, si Sir Butch at saka si Attorney, uh, halos hindi na sila nagpapahinga para at paalahanan yung ating mga teachers. Dahil ang, ang, pag may nabalitaan ako na teachers na nagparanas ng hindi maganda sa mga bata, isa lang ang tanong ko. Kung yan ba ay naranasan ninyo sa akin? Sa halip na pressure, sa halip na pahirap, mas magandang mag-ipon tayo ng magagandang karanasan. Sapagkat uh, learning is fun. Ang totoo, school is not a 7 by 9 na building. Ang tunay na kahulugan ng school is a place for leisure. Lugar kung saan tayo nalilibang. Dahil kapag nalilibang tayo, natututo tayo. At mas natatandaan natin yon. Kung hindi kayang ibigay ng teacher yan, baka hindi ang mundo ng pagtuturo ang para sa kanya. At marami akong... Im- kakilala, baka tulungan ko na siya na magbago ng profesyon <laughs> dahil hindi siya para doon sa paghubog ng kinabukasan ng ating mga bata. So ganyan ako kaseryoso para sa ating mga teachers. At para sa mga teachers na nandito ngayon, so yun yung warning. Ano? Huwag nating sasaktan ng bata kasi sila ang dahilan kaya tayo nandito. At ang pinakamagandang gawin ng isang guro, loko parenti, maging magulang. 
At ang magulang hindi siya nag-iisip ng masama para sa kanyang anak. Sa lahat ng oras at sa lahat ng pagkakataon. So, yung paano ko may masungit na teacher? Papagalitan ko. Dahil sa panahon ngayon, ang pagiging masungit ay palatandaan na hindi mo alam ang ginagawa mo. At ang palaging galit ay palatandaan na hindi mo kaya ang ginagawa mo. Kung yung dalawang yan na lang ang kaya mong gawin, hindi ito ang mundo para sa iyo. Maghanap ka na ng iba. Dahil ang pagtuturo para sa mga taong dedicated, mapagmahal, at nagpapahalaga sa ating mga bata. Kaya tulong kung meron kayong maranasan, huwag mahihiyang mag-text o mag-message. Uh, Alex, bibigay ko sa iyo yung number sa mga officers. Mamaya may gagawin tayo. Ano? Sige. Okay na? Mayan, okay na ba? Okay na po. Thank you po. I think nagtaas po lang kamay si, si Press Ian. <laughs> oh, si Ian ulit. Natatakot ako pagka si Ian na magtatanong. <laughs> Hello po, sir. Good afternoon po. Uh, good afternoon, Ian. Sir, you. gusto ko lang pong linawin yung opinion niyo po regarding sa efficacy of... Ian, nawala ka. Hello po. Ah, uh, Ian. Sige, go ahead. So, gusto ko lang pong magkawin ng clarification regarding po dun sa sinabi niyo mga pananaw about sa efficacy of distance learning. Because I don't think po Allow me to disagree po kasi I don't think um, yung tool po na ginagawa nyo is enough to assess the learnings of our students. Because for me, there is no better way of assessing students' learning learnings than being evaluated by the teachers during online classes. Kaya po lagi ang perspective ko during this whole time is always focus on online classes. Kasi we were given by the local government units ng mga learning tablets and the only problem lang po natin is yung mga load. So, in fact po, ang aming school po ay nag-launch uh, ng isang programa na Load Mo Bukas Ko, Tulong Dunong Scholarship Program, which aims to um, gather donations, gather a lot of help from various sectors para matugunan po yung problema sa load ng mga bata. Dahil for me po, mas effective po talaga na mas marami yung time natin sa online classes than modules. Let's say for example, 70% po ay more on online classes.